welcome again to this particular session. So while leaving the last one, I had asked you to try to give a give an attempt as far as 3.3 is concerned. I do not know how many of you have attempted this particular question or not. But still, we are going to take this particular question. Quick recap, as far as balance sheet of Darwaja Limited is given to you in this particular case, very horrendous sort of name it is. Anyway, so balance sheet of Darwaja Limited is here. And it has got preference share capital. Now, vendor companies having preference share capital, you need to keep that into your account. And equity share capital is also there. Besides that, we have got capital reserves, workmen compensation fund. In the last session also, I told you about this particular fact that out of 8,000, there is estimated liability of 5,000. So that will liability portion out of 8,000 is 5,000 and 3,000 will be considered as free and it will be taken to equity shareholders account while work and compensation fund liability portion will be transferred to realization account credit side. Then we have got in this case profit or loss account surplus and then besides that we have got two liability 12% debentures and in this particular case uh, interest accrued and creditors. Besides these three liability, I already told you one more liability that is 5000 in the form of work and compensation fund liability portion. Correct. As far as assets are concerned, we have land and building, plant and machinery, patents, goodwill. And as you know, underwriting commission is valueless asset. It will be transferred to the debit side of equity shareholders account. Then we have got a stock, debtors and cash at bank. Let us say what is written below. On this date, Darwaja Limited was absorbed by Khidki Limited. So Darwaja Limited has been absorbed by Khidki Limited. Very ironical. Anyway, Khidki Limited to take over all assets and liabilities. So all assets have been taken over. Of course, underwriting commission is not an asset. And besides that, whatever assets are there, all those assets have been taken over and even liability, except interest due on debenture. So out of four liability interest on debenture haven't been taken over, quite obviously you are going to pay them off later on. Now, as far as these three informations are concerned, for each preference share in Darwaja Limited, rupees 10 in cash, we discussed that particular point in the last question also and one nine percent preference shares of 100 in Khirki Limited. So each preference shareholder will be given rupees 10 in cash and each preference shareholder will be given one preference share of 100 each and for each equity share in Darwaja Limited rupees 20 in cash will be delivered and one equity share in Khirki Limited of 100 each having a market value of 140. There are 8,000 equity shareholder. Each shareholder will get at the rate of 20 cash payment and each shareholder will also get one equity share Although the face value of the share is 100, but it will be multiplied with what we call 140 because the market value of the share happens to be 140. Cost of liquidation amounted to 15,000, but reimbursed to the extent of 10,000. That means out of 15,000, 10,000 have been reimbursed. Indirectly, it means purchasing company bond 10,000 rupees and 5,000 have been bought by vendor company. So this is the question. Although it is given in a solved manner, still I will solve it for you. Correct? So quickly, I will try to solve this particular question. Although I had asked you to try to give in, try to this particular question. But anyway, if you have tried, that's very fine. And if you haven't, then also no problem. Just have a look over here. So first of all, as usual, books of vendor company. But before that, we will start as usual by Calculating purchase consideration. So calculation of purchase consideration. This is the first point. Calculation of purchase consideration. We have already gone through this particular question. Especially line number two. Pay attention to the question sheet. Keep the sheet in front of you. In point number two, it was written that for each preference share in Darwaja Limited. So that means this payment is being received by the preference shareholder. Now as far as preference shareholders are concerned, 13% preference shares. 13% preference shareholders are receiving this payment and we have already seen if we look into the balance sheet in the question sheet I have kept in front of me now 4 lakh divided by 100 total number of shares is equal to 4000 so I will write here 4000 and it is clearly written that each preference share will get rupees 10 in cash so into 10 so that means 40,000 rupees are being received by or rupees 40,000 is being received by preference shareholder and of course this payment is received by them in cash correct similarly besides this preference shareholder are also receiving 
there are 4000 preference shareholder and each shareholder is getting one share one share of 100 each into 100 so that means 4 lakh so all in all as we have seen that preference shareholders are receiving how much payment that is 4 lakh 40000 this payment is being received by in by the vendor company through 9% preference shares so obviously you are going to write here preference share 9% preference shares correct so 9% preference shares now next payment is being received by equity shareholder i will write equity shares there are 8000 equity shares each equity shareholder is getting rupees 20 in cash so that means 160000 payment is being received in the form of cash i will write here cash is it clear to you besides that each equity shareholder is also receiving one equity share of course share is of 100 each but the market value of the share of purchasing company in this particular case is 140 so quite obviously we will multiply it with the market value so 11 lakh 20 thousand happens to be the amount and this particular amount is being received by way of equity share now if I am going to add all these payments 40 plus 4 lakh, 4 lakh, 40 plus 1 lakh, 60 plus 11 lakh, 20 that will deliver you 17 lakh, 20 thousand as the amount of purchase consideration. Now you must note that this time out of 17 lakh, 20 thousand 40 plus 162 lakhs are being received by way of cash while 4 lakh by way of preference share 11 lakh, 20 by way of equity shares. Once we are done up with the calculation of the purchase consideration, the next point here is books of vendor company. Books of vendor company. Vendor company is Darwaja Limited. Very scary name. Vendor company. In the books of vendor company, as usual, first of all, I am going to prepare purchasing company account. One, I am going to prepare purchasing company account. Correct. That is Khidki Limited. This is one account which we are supposed to prepare, which I will prepare now. Correct. After the purchasing company account, I will also prepare in this particular case because vendor company is having preference share. If vendor company is having preference share, you are bound to prepare preference shareholder account also. And it is always better to put the preference shareholder account at second place, preference shareholder account. Because vendor company is having preference shares so preference shareholder account will be prepared only if the vendor company is having preference shares correct after these accounts after this account we are going to prepare realization account as usual this is our realization account correct after the realization account then we will prepare our cash account and bank account. I will prepare it here itself. This is our cash bank account. And then I will also prepare equity shareholders account. Equity shareholders account. So these are the accounts which we have prepared. Now, first of all, we will look into the balance sheet in the question. And towards the liability side, if you are going to look at, please look at, look at your notes or books, whatever it is. First item is preference share capital. I need not require to tell you where I am going to post it. In the preference shareholder account, I will write here 13% pref preference share capital. So that is equal to 4 lakh. The next item happens to be equity share capital. Quite obviously, I am going to take equity share capital to the equity shareholder account. So equity share capital there happens to be 8 lakh then we have in this case some reserves and surplus remember one thing equity shareholders are considered as the real owners of the business and that's the reason actually all the reserves and surplus will be posted to the credit side of equity shareholders account the capital reserve in this particular case happens to be 1 lakh besides the capital reserve we have in this case work plan compensation fund here you have to exercise a bit of caution out of 8000 5,000 is liability and 3,000 is free. So only free portion will be posted here. And in the realization account, I will write the liability portion. Workman compensation fund liability portion. That is equal to 5,000. And then we have profit and loss account. So I am going to write PNL. Profit and loss account happens to be 50,000. So I will write here 50,000. 
And then the next item is 12% debenture. Needless to add that all the liabilities are posted to the credit side of realization account. Now that is equal to 2 lakh. And then we have interest. Even though interest accrued hasn't been taken over, interest accrued on debentures, that happens to be 12,000. But still we are going to post it to the credit side of realization account. Then we have creditors in this case. Next item. We have to move item wise. Creditors is equal to 1 lakh 20. I will also post creditors over here. So as far as our liability side is concerned, things are over. We move over to the asset side. In the asset side, first item happens to be land and building. I will write land and building that is equal to 4 lakh 50,000. After writing land and building, we have got in this particular case plant and machinery. So I shall write now plant and machinery that is equal to 6 lakh. After plant and machinery, we have got patents. Patents are intangible assets and intangible assets are also considered as assets having value. That's the reason we are going to post it over here, 50,000. Even goodwill will be posted over there. Goodwill, that is equal to 2 lakh. However, underwriting commission is your valueless item. So underwriting commission, U oblique C, I have written in short form. It is a valueless item that is a sort of loss. It will be posted to the debit of equity shareholders account. Then we have got three more items. Stock, 1,50,000. Next item, as you can see in, in the balance sheet, that is equal to data. So you are going to write data. So amount of data happens to be 180. And in this case, all assets have been taken over. Even cash has been taken over. So cash bank also will be posted to the debit side of realization account that is 20,000. So with that, our asset side is also closed. Once we are done up with the closure of the liability side and the asset side, the next task in our hand is to take care of purchase consideration. Entry will be purchasing company account debit to realization account. On the credit side, I will write by purchasing company. Purchase consideration as we computed was equal to 17,20,000. Immediately, I am going to cross it to the debit side of purchasing company account. On the debit side, I am going to write two realizations, 17,20,000. Now, we are receiving the payment. We are receiving payment in three forms this time, in cash and in 9% preference shares and also in equity shares. Total cash received is 40,000 plus 160, that is equal to 2 lakh. So I'm going to write here 2 lakh. Then preference share worth 4 lakh have been received. And equity share worth 11 lakh 20 thousand. So that is how we are going to receive the payment. The moment we are going to receive the payment, the purchasing company account now will stand closed. Whatever cash you have received, obviously you are going to transfer the cash to the cash account because whatever cash you will receive, since you are preparing your cash account, so obviously you are going to write it over here. And here you are going to write to purchasing company account. And amount which you have received is equal to 2 lakh, number one. Second, we have received 9% preference share. But this time 9% preference share have been received by the preference shareholders. So that is the reason. 9% preference share will be posted to the debits of preference shareholder account. So I'm going to write here 9% preference share in purchasing company. You must also write, but because of space constraining factor, I'm not able to write in purchasing company. You must write 9% preference share in purchasing company. That is 4 lakh. And now equity shares as far as is concerned, equity share, equity shares have been received or are being given to equity shareholder. So, towards the debit side of equity shareholder account, I will write equity shares in purchasing company. Amount happens to be 11,20,000. 11,20,000. Is it clear to you? Now, two points are very important. Whenever preference shareholder would receive any payment, please pay attention. Total payment we have received 17,20,000. 20,000 liquidator or vendor company have received the payment from the purchasing purchasing company total payment they have received 11,20,000 now it is the duty of the liquidator of the vendor company 
to make the payment to the respective parties, equity shares, preference shares. It is important that whatever payment is being received by preference shareholders, how much payment has been received by preference shareholder in this particular case, if we look over here, 40 plus 4 lakh, that is equal to 4 lakh 40,000 worth of payment they have received. However, so far in the preference shareholder account, we have written only 4 lakh, you must have noticed here, correct? So it is important that full amount of preference share which they have received must be given to preference shareholders. Because preference shareholders have received shares, so we have debited the shares to the preference shareholders. But they have received some portion of the payment that is 40,000 in cash. But the problem is that because we are preparing the cash account, entire cash which we have received 40,000 plus 160 has been posted to the, deb to the cash account. So now out of this particular cash, vendor company will give 40,000 to preference shareholder, correct? So towards the credit side, I will write 9%, in fact, I will write preference shares. I will write here preference shareholder. That means out of 2 lakh rupees, 40,000 was meant for preference share and 160 was meant for equity share. So 40,000 rupees now I will take out of 2 lakh and will make the payment to the preference shareholder. Is it clear to you? Now I will write here cash, 40,000. So now you can see actually preference shareholder, whatever their payment amount was, now the entire amount has been posted to the preference shareholder. Once you have posted the entire amount which the preference shareholder have received, now it is your bounded duty to close this account immediately. Correct. So now what I am going to do is that I am going to simply close this particular account. When I will close this particular account, as you can see, I will get balancing figure of 40,000. This 40,000 is considered as a loss from the perspective of the vendor company because vendor company was supposed to uh, supposed to have uh, supposed to have a liability of 4 lakh towards the preference shareholders. But actually the preference shareholder are being paid 40,000. So this loss will be transferred to realization account. Is it clear to you? This loss will be transferred to realization account. So in the, because it is a loss and we have written it towards the credit side. So now towards the debit side of realization account, I will write to preference shareholder account. That is 40,000. Now we shall complete our realization account. However, there is something more to be done as far as this account is concerned. One, we are supposed to pay liability in, of interest that is 12,000 and there were expenses to the extent of 15,000. However, 5,000 worth of expenses are being borne by vendor company. So now vendor company will make the payment for one, interest accrued we will have to pay the liability of interest accrued that is 5000 and we will also pay liquidation expenses sorry interest accrued is 12000 interest accrued is 12000 so i will write here 12000 and liquidation expenses is equal to 5000 so i will write here 5000 is it clear to you or not so after having written all these items, now you will write here 17,000. Is it clear to you? Now, because you have written two cash 17,000, vendor company has to pay interest accrued 12,000, which they have paid now. And similarly, liquidation expenses 5,000, total 17,000. So towards the cash, towards the cash bank account, and especially towards the credit side, I am going to write by realization. That is 17,000. Now we will close our realization account because we have paid off the liability which haven't been taken over and we have paid the expenses. So after that, all we are left of with is to balance this particular account and the balancing figure is profit. So profit will be transferred to equity shareholder. Profit transfer to equity shareholder account. Your profit will be equal to 3,50,000. And this profit will be taken to the credit side of equity share. I will write here by realization profit, 3,50,000. Is it clear to you? And then we have to 
close our cash bank account 2 lakh minus 57 so 143 whatever balance is there this balance will be transferred to equity shareholder 1 lakh 43 now we will close this account cash account will also get closed and i will write here to cash this is the final payment to the equity shareholder 1 lakh 43000 is it clear to you or not after that, now we have to pass the entries in the books of the purchasing company. And entries are usual, I need not require to tell you, but still I will show it to you, just to save a bit of time. Right, so, the, this, these are the entries, entries in the books of purchasing company. First of all, while doing the entries in the books of purchasing company, you need to categorize the case into amalgamation in the nature of purchase or merger. Obviously, this is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase. I have already told you most of the time we will face case of purchase because in this question all the assets have been taken over but not all the liabilities. Is it clear to you? So, our first entry will be business purchase account debit 17,20. This entry is passed with the amount of purchase consideration to liquidator. We have purchased a business for 17,20 and we are supposed to pay to the liquidator 17,20. Now, against this purchase, what items we got? First, you leave this first item. We have received goodwill. We have received land and building, plant and machinery, patents, stock, book debts, and cash at bank also has been taken over. All these assets have been taken over. Then, debentures, workman compensation liability portion. Remember one thing, interest accrued is not taken over. Creditors, and then business purchase then we will compare these figures we will get a balancing figure of 3,95,000 is it clear to you this will be your goodwill then we are supposed to make the payment to the liquidator of vendor company 17,20,000 worth of payment we are supposed to make out of which we have paid rupees 2 lakh by way of cash then as far as equity shareholders are concerned each equity share, there are total 8,000 shares. Each equity shareholder is getting one share. That means total 8,000 shares are being issued. So I have written 8,000 shares. But 8,000 shares of rupees 100 each were issued at the rate of 140. So purchasing company will write in, in, in its books, equity share capital 8,000 into 100, nominal value 8 lakh. And two security premium 8,000 into 40, 3 lakh 20,000. And then 9% preference share capital we have issued. 4,000 shares of ended each, that is equal to 4 lakh. Then, purchasing company has borne the expenses to the extent of 10,000. So, entry will be goodwill account debit 10,000 for bearing the expenses to bank, that is 10,000. We debit the goodwill account instead of what we call uh, passing two entries, we have passed the direct entry. So, expenses, you can write this way also, expense account debit to bank and then goodwill account debit to expense. So your net entry will be goodwill account debit to bank account. As per AS14, whatever losses are incurred by purchasing company in the process of amalgamation shall have to be debited to goodwill account. That is the reason actually why we are debiting goodwill here. Is it clear to you or not? Yes. Sir. Now, the next thing is, next thing is, after having completed this particular question, now we move over to 3.4. In 3.4, this time, and this is the first question, remember one thing, wherein we are having balance sheet of both the companies. In this question, we have balance sheet of P Limited and S Limited as at 31st of March 2023. If you look into the balance sheet, you'll find that equity share capital 5 lakh and 3 lakh. Then 10% preference share capital 220 and 170. Besides that, we have got lots of reserves, general reserve, statutory reserve and then profit and loss account correct and then we as far as liabilities are concerned one is debentures and another one is creditors only two liabilities are there 50,000 and 35,000 after this we have got three assets only that is uh, tang in fact two types of assets are only given that is tangible assets 4 lakh and current asset total 390 and 260. It's a small balance sheet. Just to make you understand some concept here. First of all, the question says that on 1st of April 2023, P Limited takes over S Limited on the following terms. On the following terms we have. What are those terms? P Limited will issue 35,000 equity shares of 10 each 
at par to the equity shareholder of S Limited. Now this time in a straight way manner, it is given to you that purchasing company will make a payment to the equity shareholders and for that it is clearly given that purchasing company will issue 35,000 shares of 10 each at par. So that means purchasing company will pay 350,000 to the equity shareholders and by way of equity shares. Correct, by way of equity shares. Then it is stated that P Limited will issue 15% preference shares of 100 each at par to discharge the preference shareholder of S Limited at a premium of 10%. So in this question, P Limited is the purchasing company and taking over the what we call vendor company. If we will uh, look into the balance sheet, we will find that preference share capital of S Limited is 170000 Preference share capital of S Limited is 170000 And purchasing company will discharge the preference shares at 10% premium. So I will add 10% premium, 17. That means total 187000 So purchasing company will issue 15% preference share. So this payment is being delivered by way of 15% preference share. And purchasing company is issuing the 15% preference shares of 100 each at par. If I will divide 187,000 by 100, it means purchasing company will issue 1870 shares of 100 each so that purchasing company's preference shareholder get 187,000, correct? Further, it is also given in the question, you are informed that statutory reserves of S Limited are to be maintained for two more years, correct? Now, you are required to show the balance sheet of P Limited after the above mentioned scheme of amalgamation has been implemented. For a while, forget about these two points which I have written below, correct? Now, let me ask you, and you have gone through this particular question, whether this question is of amalgamation in the nature of merger or purchase. I have already told you that how you have to decide and figure it out whether it happens to be a case of merger or purchase. For the same, you will have to actually ask three questions. The first question is, are all the assets and liabilities taken over? Yes, because nowhere it is written that which are the assets and which are the liabilities taken over. So always presume that all the assets and liabilities are taken over. Number one, are all the assets and liabilities being taken over at book value? This is the second question which you will have to ask to yourself. Of Now, this time, answer again is affirmative because nowhere the book value is written. And last question, are the equity shareholders of vendor company receiving the payment by way of equity share? Yes, it is. So all these three questions this time are having answers in affirmative. So obviously, this question will fall in the category of amalgamation in the nature of merger. Although in the later on, I'm I have written here that solve this question assuming it is a case of merger and assuming it is a case of purchase. But I will solve this question in uh, in reality because in reality this question is of merger. Although in the solution I have solved it in both the fashion. But we are going to solve here in class to make you understand better considering it as a case of merger because it is a case of merger. <laughs> However, as far as case of merger is concerned, it is not going to have any impact when we do the accounting in the books of vendor companies. First, let me put the question sheet before me so that I need not require to flip through time and again. Correct? Well, so 3.4 is the question. Now, in 3.4 question, question number 3.4. Our first step will be calculation of purchase consideration. So first of all, I am going to compute the purchase consideration. In fact, we have already computed. It is clearly given in the question that equity shareholders of vendor company are being issued, are being issued, how much payment they are receiving, this is clearly given in the question. P Limited will issue 35 point number one. P Limited will issue 35,000 equity shares of 10 each. So I will write here 35,000 shares of rupees 10 each. Correct. This is the payment being given to equity shareholder. Total will be 3,50,000. Of course, this payment is being given by way of equity shares. 
then second payment is being received by the 10% preference shareholders. As far as 10% preference shareholder are concerned, it is given in the question that their amount is actually 170 as per balance sheet, but purchasing company will make payment to them at 10% premium. So I will add 10%. Total payment will become equal to 187. That means purchasing company will pay them 187 by way of what we call issue of their 15% uh, preference share. So if this payment is being received to 15% preference shares. Obviously, purchasing company is issuing their share at par. So that means purchasing company will offer 1870 shares of 100 each. If I will divide 187 by 100, I will get 1870. So that means the total purchase consideration in this particular case is 5,37,000. It is pretty easy. Although books of vendors in this particular question are not quite vital, but still I will prepare the account books of vendors. So books of vendors... Books of S Limited or Vendor Company, whatever you may like to write. Books of Vendor Company. In the Books of Vendor Company, as usual, I am going to first of all open Purchasing Company account. Correct? This is the Purchasing Company account. Very small account. Besides the Purchasing Company account, I will prepare Realization account. realization and then we will also prepare equity shareholders account now you might be wondering why I am not preparing in fact before that I will also have to prepare preference shareholder account because in this question preference shareholders preference share capital of vendor company is also given so preference shareholder account and then we will prepare equity shareholder account. Correct? Equity shareholder account. I am not preparing cash account at this moment. In case if I would require, I will prepare it. Why I am saying so? Because in this case, I have noticed that entire payment is being given by the purchasing company to the vendor company in the form of shares. So I think there will not be need of any cash account. In, in fact, if we would need any cash, then we, we are definitely going to prepare the cash account. As usual, first of all, we will start from the liability side because generally a liability side is given first. Look into the column of S Limited. Your first item is equity shareholder account. So in the equity share capital, equity shareholder account, you write equity share capital. Amount is 3 lakh. And then in the preference shareholder account, you write 10% preference share capital. Amount is 170, so you will write here 170. Then you have general reserve. As far as general reserve are concerned, that is 25,000 will be posted to equity shareholder account. And then we have a statutory reserve and profit and loss account. A statutory reserve is equal to 20,000. And profit and loss account, that is surplus, 60,000. This is the information so far. And then there are two liabilities, 10% <coughs> debentures and creditors. <coughs> so I will write 10% debentures. As far as 10% debentures are concerned, that is equal to 35,000. And then we have creditors. As far as creditors are concerned, creditors is equal to 50,000. Now we move over to the asset side. There are only two items. One is property, plant and equipment, tangible property, plant and equipment. That is 4 lakh of vendor company. And then we have in this case, current asset 2 lakh 60,000. That's all as far as asset side is concerned. So our liability and assets side is closed. Now we will take care of purchase consideration. So we will write towards the credit side of realization account by purchasing company. 
we have received 5,37,000 worth of purchase consideration. I will cross it to debit side of purchasing company. I will write here to realization account 5,37,000. Now, this 5,37,000 we have received this time by way of preference shares and by way of equity shares. So, equity shares in purchasing company, if you want to write, that is equal to 3,50,000 and 15% preference shares in purchasing company, in purchasing company, 1,87,000. So, 5,37,000 worth of payment is received. This account will get closed. Just a moment ago, I told you that whatever portion this time of purchase consideration you are receiving, out of that some portion is being received by preference shares. So, first of all, 3,50,000 you will write in equity shareholder and whatever payment received by preference share will be posted to preference shareholder account. So, I will write towards the debit side of preference shareholders, 15% preference shares in purchasing company that is equal to 1,87,000 correct and then towards the debit side of equity shares I will write equity shares in purchasing company equity shares in purchasing company worth 3,50,000 the moment you will post whatever portion is going towards pre preference shareholder once you have posted, now it is duty that you must actually close it. You must close it. If we will close it, similar to the last question, this time also we are having a loss. So this loss will be posted to the realization account. In the realization account, I will write towards the debit side to preference shareholder account. Loss on payment to preference shareholder, 17,000. Now we are going to going to tally this account. If we will tally this particular account, this time I think there is loss. But how much is the loss that I will have to compute? I am not able to recapitulate because most of the time I remember, but I have forgotten this time. So 677 minus 35 minus 50 minus 537. So, 55,000 worth of loss we are receiving. 55,000. Loss transfer to equity shareholder. Loss transfer to equity shareholders to the extent of 55,000. Correct? Realization account is over. Now, you will write the loss over here to realization loss. 55,000. And now equity shareholder account will get closed. 4,5, 4,5. As you must have noticed, in this question, no transaction was related to cash. So that is the reason there was no need to prepare the cash account. But most importantly, why I am doing this particular question? Now, books of purchasing company. This is the next point. Books of purchasing company. Books of purchasing company. As far as books of purchasing company is concerned, first of all, this time you need to understand that it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger. And why it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger, I gave you the reason a while ago. Amalgamation in the nature of merger. Now, because it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger, we will, we will have to pass the entry accordingly as per the rules or as per the guidance of AS14 related to merger. Our first entry will be business purchase account debit. I will write here business purchase. You can also write business merger. Business purchase account debit to liquidator of vendor company. To liquidator of vendor company. You have purchased the business for 5,37,000 because your purchase consideration is 5,37,000. This is the entry which you are going to write. After that, 
our next entry is all the assets which we have taken over. Now, as far as asset taken over is concerned, one is property, plant and equipment worth 4 lakh. And then there are current asset to the extent of 2 lakh 60 thousand. And besides that, there are two liabilities in this particular question. Two liabilities. One is uh, creditors to the extent of 50,000. And there are debentures, 12% debentures worth rupees 35,000. Now, because it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger, I have told you so many times now, generally purchasing company, whether it is a case of purchase or merger, purchasing company can never ever take the equity share capital and reserves of the vendor company, can never ever take, correct, whether it is a case of purchase or merger. However, in the case of merger, as per AS14, we will have to create the reserves similar to the one which are appearing in the books of the vendor company. Now, if you will look into the books of vendor company, look into the column of S limited. When you will look into the column of S limited, you can find there are three reserves. One is general reserve, then there is statutory reserve, then there are profit and loss account. Remember one thing. Many among us think actually and many among us simply tell to the student that all the under the case of merger all the reserves will be taken over. No, reserves are not being taken over because reserves can never ever be taken over. However, in the case of merger, we will have to create same sort of reserves which are appearing in the books of the vendor company. Because in the books of the vendor company there is general reserve, I will have to create general reserve. Now, because I am creating general reserve, purchasing company will create the general reserve. That means purchasing company is incurring a sort of loss, 25,000. Similarly, we will have to create a statutory reserve to the extent of 20,000. As per AS 14, actually the language of the standard is that in case of merger, Purchasing company must preserve, must preserve, nowhere it is written that purchasing company will take over. It is written that purchasing company will preserve, preserve the entity of all the reserves of the vendor company. Now, if I will break up this particular sentence into simple language, it means the purchasing company will not take over the reserve, but will create similar sort of reserve. I hope you got the point. Then profit or loss account. In the books of the vendor company, next item, that is to the extent of 60,000. This is the only difference between purchase and merger. Correct? So, these three items we have to brought forward. In fact, we are creating that. We are not taking them over. Correct? So, this is the point which you need to understand. Then I will write as usual to business purchase account. To business purchase account. Business purchase was worth 5,37,000. Now, in case of mm, purchase, the difference is debited and credited to goodwill or capital reserve. However, here, yeah, if I am going to tally this, let me tally it out. 537 plus 60 plus 20 plus 25 plus 35 plus 50 minus 660. That comes to 67,000. So, balancing figure is coming over here. In case of purchase, generally when balancing figure falls towards the debit side, we call it goodwill. And when balancing figure falls towards the credit side, we call it capital reserve. But however, in case of merger, AS14 says that whatever losses purchasing company will incur, correct, uh, in the process of amalgamation, those will be debited or credited to reserves account, that is profit or loss account or reserves account. That means this debit, I can write it general reserve also, I can write it profit or loss account also. And if balancing figure would have appeared towards the credit side, then also I, I would have written profit or loss account or general reserve. Correct? It is my choice whether I want to write profit or loss account or general reserve. 
So these are the things which you need to take care of as far as in the case of amalgamation in the nature of merger. Correct. After having done this entry, the next entry is payment to liquidator. So liquidator are supposed liquidator of vendor company. You are supposed to pay to the liquidator of vendor company uh, 5,37,000. And purchasing company paid the consideration through issue of equity share capital. <laughs> equity share capital were issued at par, 35,000 shares of 10 each. And similarly, 15% preference share is also given. 15% preference share capital to the extent of 1,87,000. 1,87,000. Is it clear to you or not? Absolutely. In this case, nowhere it is written that purchasing company is bearing the expenses. If purchasing company would have borne some expenses, the entry would have been profit and loss account debit, right in bracket expenses. In case of merger, we, we, we will debit profit and loss account instead of goodwill account. Is it clear to you or not? In this case, there are no liquidation expenses. So this is all about with respect to margin, correct? And then after having completed 3.4, you can solve this question through purchase also. I have given it in the solution. So with that, we come to the end of this particular section also. So next time then I, when I will meet you, I will have discussion with something new, correct? Hope you are enjoying this session. Let me know of your feedback. We await those with bated breath. So on such note, we take leave of you and shall with the promise to meet you again with something new. Hello and welcome again to this particular session. After wrapping up section 3 and 4, now we are moving into the new territory and new section, that is section 5, wherein you can see it is titled as two companies merging into a one single unit. Now we will see here that in these questions and lots of such questions are being asked of late in the examination. Let me also make it absolutely clear in the beginning itself. So this particular section deals with the accounting treatment when the two companies will merge together and they will form and they will form a new single unit. So how the treatment will be, let's go through this particular question to understand and comprehend the intricacies of accounting with respect to what we call two companies merging into one single unit. Ram Limited and Sham Limited carry on business of similar nature and it is agreed that they should amalgamate and a new company RS Limited is to be formed to which the assets and liabilities of the existing company with certain exceptions are transferred. Now the first line itself is symptomizing the fact that there are two companies, one is Ram Limited and another one is Sham Limited and both these companies now have decided to combine together and form a new company. Although a new company is being formed by the name of RS Limited, no doubt that it is new company. But at the same time, from the accounting perspective, even in the initial session, I talked about this particular fact that the new company, no doubt RS Limited is, but from the accounting perspective, it will be inferred and concluded that RS Limited has taken over the business of R Limited and RS Limited has also taken over the business of S Limited, even though these two companies, by mutual consensus, agree to form a single entity. But from the accounting perspective, we have to analyze the situation and scenario in such a manner. Is it clear to you or not? And second important point is that because R Limited and S Limited now, as I told you, is being actually considered as taken over by RS Limited. So these two companies will be termed as liquidating companies, while RS Limited will be considered as purchasing company. So the purchasing company, it is given RS Limited is to be formed, which will take over all the assets and liabilities of the existing companies with certain exceptions. Now, what are those exceptions? We will go through that and these are the summarized balance sheet of the two companies which are given at your disposal. Correct? One is Ram Limited, another one is Sham Limited and the equity share capital of Ram Limited is equal to 4 lakh while equity share capital of Sham Limited is 3 lakh 40,000 shares and 30,000 shares respectively of 10 each. Then general reserve 
टू लैख फोर्टी नो जनरल रिजर्व ऑफ श्याम लिमिटेड देन प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस अकाउंट ऑफ राम लिमिटेड इज फिफ्टी वाइल प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस अकाउंट ऑफ श्याम लिमिटेड हैपन्स टू बी फिफ्टी थाउजेंड देन एज फार एज लाइबिलिटीज आर कंसर्न इन दिस पर्टिकुलर केस देर आर टू लाइबिलिटीज डिवेंचर ऑल दो राम लिमिटेड इज नॉट हैविंग एनी डिवेंचर एंड ट्रेड पेबल्स correct these are the two liabilities besides what we call capital and reserves then as far as assets are concerned we have freehold property and then we have plant and machinery and then motor vehicles besides that we have inventories cash at inventories trade receivables and then cash at banks so this is the information which is furnished to us with respect to these two companies remember this time both these two companies will be considered as vendor company it is it will be presumed as if both these companies have sold their business to the new company rs limited and rs limited is your purchasing company further it is given in the question that assets and liabilities will be taken over at book value with following exceptions goodwill of ram limited and sham limited is valued at 140000 and 40000 so goodwill of ram and sham limited is valued at 140 and 40 even though goodwill is not given in the balance sheet when in, when a company takes over the business of another company often the goodwill is valued so they have valued the goodwill at 140 and 40 respectively then plant and machinery of ram limited is 1 lakh now the revised value of plant and machinery of ram limited which is 60000 given here actually its value is 1 lakh and then debentures of sham limited are to be discharged at a premium of 5% by issue of 6% debentures of rs limited now the question says that debentures of sham limited now if we will look at the debentures of sham limited that is equal to 1 lakh 20000 One lakh twenty thousand worth of debentures are being discharged at five percent premium, correct? At a premium of five percent. So I'm going to add five percent to it. That means it will be equal to six thousand. So one lakh twenty six thousand. That means the debentures of Sham Limited are being discharged at one lakh twenty twenty six thousand. Indirectly, it means purchasing company is taking over the debenture of Sham Limited at one lakh twenty six. because purchasing company will discharge this debenture by issuing the debenture issuing 6% debentures of their company that in the new company so in order to discharge the debentures of vendor company which are given at 1 lakh 20 but these debentures are going to be discharged at 1 lakh 26000 and for the same the new company will issue its own debenture 6% debenture so indirectly it means the debentures of vendor company sham limited has been taken over at 1 lakh 26000 and purchasing company in its books will record the debenture when it will write the entry as a taken over to liabilities taken over with respect to sham limited the debentures of sham limited will be considered at 1 lakh 26000 further generally when questions of such such nature are asked where in two companies get merged into a one single entity generally under such questions we are asked these two questions generally these two questions are asked and i have in this particular case added a new question the demand of the question one is that compute the basis compute the basis on which the shares of rs limited will be issued to the shareholders of the existing company now question is asking asking that on what basis the purchasing company is going to issue the shares that mean the of course the purchasing company rs limited has taken over the business of r limited and s limited so rs limited is going to discharge the purchase consideration no doubt about that indirectly it means how many shares purchasing company will issue to r limited and s limited and on what basis on what basis further it is given that the nominal value of each share in rs limited is 10 that mean the purchasing company will issue the shares and one share is of rupees 10 each but the point is that how many shares we have to issue to r limited and s limited this is the first question that been in the first question we have to find out two things what is the amount of purchase consideration and how many shares will be issued by because on the basis of purchase consideration and purchase consideration will be found out by computing the net assets is it clear to you or not because that is the only base available then if nothing is mentioned in the question so we will compute all the asset taken over of the respective companies and then we will subtract the liabilities taken over we will arrive at the net assets that will give us the amount of purchase consideration number 1 and then 
after having computed the amount of purchase consideration, then we will decide how many shares we will have to issue. Draw up the balance sheet and we have to draw up the balance sheet of the purchasing company. Generally, under such questions, nothing is asked in the books of the vendor company. Further, write up general entries in the books of RS Limited. It is being also asked in the question. Because this is the first question, so I will solve it. And in order to solve the question, I will require a bit of space. So now we will solve this particular question. This is 5.1, correct? Section 5 and question number 5.1. I will keep the question sheet in front of me so that in case if I need to look at the item of the balance sheet, I need not require to I need not require to flip through what we call various pages. That becomes very cumbersome task otherwise. So under the first step, what we are supposed to do, as I have already told you, the first thing is that in order to know how many shares the purchasing company would issue, quite obviously it becomes imperative for us to know the amount of purchase consideration. So your first step should be calculation of purchase consideration. In order to compute the purchase consideration, you will consider all the asset taken over and liabilities taken over. First in one column you write RAM Limited and in another column you write the name of the other company Sham Limited. Then as far as your assets are concerned, it was written in the question in the very first line. Even though goodwill is not mentioned in the balance sheet, yet it is written in point number one that goodwill of Ram Limited and Sham Limited is valued at 1,40,000. So I am going to write here 1,40,000 and then I am going to write here 40,000. Goodwill of Sham Limited is valued at 40,000. Correct? After that, we have freehold property, but no revised value of freehold property is given. So I will simply take it as it is. That is 3 lakh and 2 lakh 40,000. 3 lakh and 2 lakh 40,000. Then we have in this case plant and machinery. You, must, you have already gone through the question. In point number 2, it is written that plant and machinery of Ram Limited is valued at rupees 1 lakh. So plant and machinery of Ram Limited you will write here 1 lakh, while the plant and machinery of Sham Limited, you will write at its book value 40,000 because nothing is given with respect to its revised value, 40,000. Then next item is motor vehicle. Now motor vehicle cost less depreciation, that should not confuse you unnecessarily. Whatever items we write in the balance sheet, that is after depreciation only. So motor vehicle at cost less depreciation happens to be 30,000 and then 20,000. Then after that, we have inventory. So no revised values are given. So you will consider the inventory at book value itself, 2,30,000 and 1,80,000. Lots of items are given in this particular question. Now, trade receiver. As far as trade receivables are concerned, that is equal to 2 lakh. And then we have 80,000. After trade receivable, we have cash at bank. Cash at bank. Cash at bank is equal to 80,000 and 40,000. Remember one thing, purchasing company has taken over all the assets and liabilities with some exceptions. With some exception in the sense means goodwill which is not given in the balance sheet is valued at 140 and plant and machinery has been taken over at revised value. Now the next thing is that first of all you add them up. It is equal to 10,80,000 while the total of Sham Limited's assets will be equal to 6,40,000. Now we will subtract the liabilities taken over. Less liabilities. When you will write here less liabilities taken over, there are two liabilities in the question. Remember one thing. One is 6% debentures. However, 6% debentures of Ram Limited are not there in the question. While the 6% debenture of Sham Limited is 1,20,000. But I told you, you have to be alert here. Because the debentures, even though given in the balance sheet at 1,20,000, 
but it is also given in the question that purchasing company is discharging these debentures at 5% premium. So indirectly it means purchasing company is taking over these debenture at 1,26,000. So I will subtract 1,26,000 and then trade payables are also given in the question and trade payable is equal to 2,10,000 and besides that 1,30,000. So after subtracting these two liabilities, we will arrive over the net assets taken over, which is nothing but purchase consideration. That is equal to 8,70,000. So 8,70,000 is the purchase consideration or net assets and 3,84,000. 3,84,000. Is it clear to you? 3,84,000. Now, I am taking over your business. Indirectly it means I am taking over, I am means the new company. I am taking over business of Ram Limited at 8,70,000 and business of Sham Limited at 3,84,000. So once the purchase consideration is determined, now you are in a position to also know that what number of share, how many shares actually you are going to issue to the respective companies. Is it clear to you or not? For example, I, I have to pay you 8,70,000. So in order to pay you 8,70,000, purchasing company will divide it by the issue price of their share because it is given in the question that the nominal value of share of purchasing company share is 10 and nothing further is given. So we shall presume that share of 10 is being issued at rupees 10. So I will divide it by the uh, number of shares, nominal value of shares nominal value of share of purchasing company nominal value of share of purchasing company nominal value of share of purchasing company is given in uh, after for information number one two three and then under the requirement point number a it is given that assuming that nominal value of share of rs limited is 10 each so nominal value of share of rs limited that is the new company that is 10 so whenever two companies will merge and form a new company, correct, generally this question is asked that on what basis the number of shares will be issued. So easily you have found out that amount of purchase consideration is this much and you are going to simply divide it by the issue price of the share of the purchasing company. Now if issue price of the share of the purchasing company is not given, it will be presumed that shares are being issued at par. So I may say that 87,000 shares will be issued to discharge the purchase consideration of Ram Limited while 38,400 38, shares will be issued to the uh, uh, other company and other company that is Sham Limited. Is it clear to you or not? Now, after this, we are supposed to prepare the balance sheet. If I am going to prepare the balance sheet, it is not a very tough task. Generally, these two things are asked in the question. Now, post amalgamation balance sheet. So, after the amalgamation, what will be the picture of the balance sheet? Post amalgamation balance sheet. In order to prepare the balance sheet, the first of all, I am going to write one equity and liability. Equity and liability. Under equity and liability, we will write one shareholders fund. Shareholders fund. Under shareholders fund, I will write share capital. Correct. Now the question is that what is the share capital of the purchasing company because the balance sheet of the purchasing company is not given to us. We are being given only the balance sheet of the vendor company. So you must have noticed that purchasing company is issuing 87,000 and 38,400 share. So you simply add 87,000 and 38,400 that will be equal to 1,25,400 shares. 1,25,400 shares. 8 and 7, 5, right. 1,25,400, actually light is flashing down, so it is a bit of problem. So 1,25,400 1, shares of 10 each. 
and then in the outer column you can write the amount and the amount will be equal to 12,54,000. That means this is the issued share capital of the purchasing company. Correct? After this, generally we write reserves and surplus. Reserves and surplus. Reserves and surplus. Now, in this question, there is no reserve in surplus. Why no reserve in surplus? I will let you know in a short while. But just pay attention here. Now point number two, we will write non-current liability. Remember one thing, purchasing company, when you will look over here, in fact in the balance sheet, preparation of asset side is not tough at all. Whatever items you have written over here for computing the purchase consideration, these items reflect that you have taken over assets and liabilities at this value. So all you have to do is just add them, correct and write in the balance sheet. As far as asset size are concerned, not very difficult task. But now come over to the debenture. There were no debentures of vendor company Ram Limited. However, you took over the debentures of Sham Limited at 1,26,000 and you have issued those debentures your company's debenture, 6% debenture, so you will write here 6% debentures, 6% debenture to the extent of 1,26,000, 1,26,000. Then we have trade payable in this particular case as far as current liabilities are concerned. Now trade payables you have taken over, no doubt about that, and trade payable 2,10,000 of this company and 1,30,000 of this company, you simply add them and write in the balance sheet that is equal to 3,40,000. 3,40,000. Ultimately, your total should be equal to 17,20,000. Clear? And then, as far as asset side is concerned, I have already told you, asset side is not going to pose any problem to us. Because we have already computed what items will find place over here. Under the assets, first of all, I am going to write non-current asset. Under the non-current asset, we write A, property, plant and equipment. Under property, plant and equipment also, we write first tangible assets. So tangible assets, in this case, are freehold property. Now, if you will look into Step number one, we have taken over freehold property of what we call Ram Limited at 3 lakh and we have taken over freehold property of Sham Limited at 2 lakh 40,000. So I will simply add these two figures and I am going to write now in the outer column and that will be equal to 5 lakh 40,000. This is how I will have to prepare the balance sheet. Besides freehold property, in this case, there is plant and machinery. Plant and machinery of Ram Limited was taken over at 1 lakh and plant and machinery of Sham Limited was taken over at 40,000. So I will simply add these two amounts and write here 1 lakh 40,000. Clear? There is another item, motor vehicle. Motor vehicle of Ram Limited is 30,000. Sham Limited is 20. And I am simply going to put here 50,000. Very easy to prepare the balance sheet. These are the tangible. Now, as far as intangible property, plant and equipments, intangible. Because it is given in the question that goodwill of these two companies have been valued. So, goodwill of Ram Limited was valued at 1,40,000. I will write 1,40,000. And goodwill of Sham Limited was valued at 40,000. So, I will write 40,000. So, total amount will be equal to 1,80,000. Correct? Then we come over to the current assets, two current assets. There are three current assets in the question. One is inventories. As far as inventories are concerned, inventories. 2,30,000 worth of inventory of Sham Limited, Ram Limited, sorry, and 1,80,000 of Sham Limited. You simply add them right in the outer column, 4,10,000. 
After inventories, there are trade receivable also in the balance sheet. Two lakh are of Ram Limited, and one and eighty thousand of Sham Limited. So you would write here two lakh eighty thousand. Two lakh eighty thousand. Finally, we have cash and cash and bank. That is eighty thousand of Ram Limited. And to forty thousand of Sham Limited, total one lakh twenty thousand, and your total will be equal to seventeen lakh twenty thousand. Now try to understand another important aspect of this particular question. Correct. Although these two are the points which were needed in the examination, but I just want to tell you. See here, when we prepared the balance sheet, we did not write equity share capital of Ram Limited and Sham Limited. I have told you several times that purchasing company cannot take over the share capital and reserves of the vendor company, whether it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger or purchase. In fact, this is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase because revised values are given. Anyway, point is that purchasing company cannot, never, ever. can take the what we call as share capital and reserves of the vendor company so that is why when you will prepare the balance sheet you will simply ignore what we call share capital you will ignore the general reserves correct and you will ignore the profit and loss account and rest of the items we have furnished in the balance sheet but at the same time we have to see to it that what amount of share capital of the purchasing company is issued also this particular question has asked you to pass the entry now as far as entries are concerned that is not a very difficult task i will simply show it to you here journal entries in the books of p limited sorry we have written p limited it should be rs limited that is purchasing company actually i wanted to write but it is rs limited purchasing company in the books of purchasing company what entry we are going to pass purchasing company is taking over the business of Ram Limited for eight lakh seventy, and we are taking over the business of Sham Limited for three lakh eighty four. So that is why our first entry will be business purchase account debit to liquidator of Ram Limited and liquidator of Sham Limited. So total amount which we are supposed to pay to both these companies is equal to twelve lakh fifty four thousand. Now, first we will take into account the assets and liabilities taken over of Ram Limited. In fact. <coughs> This calculation we have already made earlier. I can simply write sundry assets instead of writing all these things. But still, if you want to show separately, goodwill account of Ram Limited, account debit, freehold property, plant and machinery one lakh, motor vehicle thirty, trade receivable this much, inventory this much, cash at bank this much, and then you took over the trade payables because there were no debentures of Ram Limited, and two business purchase account. This will automatically get tallied. Correct? Then. You will write the entry with respect to taking over of assets and liabilities because you are taking two companies, no? So you then you will again write the entry, but with respect to Sham Limited, the goodwill is forty, and then freehold property two forty, plant and machinery forty, motor vehicle twenty, trade receivable eighty, inventory this much, and cash at bank forty. We have taken over trade payables at one lakh thirty, but debentures at one lakh twenty six thousand of Sham Limited, three lakh eighty four thousand. Correct. These are the two entry now six percent debentures of Sham Limited, which have been taken over, actually have been discharged by issue of our debenture. So six percent debentures of Sham Limited to six percent debenture of purchasing company. This is the entry. Now we will discharge the consideration. Now we are supposed to pay to the liquidator of Ram Limited eight lakh seventy thousand. We are supposed to pay to the liquidator of Sham Limited three lakh eighty four thousand, and we paid them. In total, twelve lakh fifty four thousand worth of equity share capital and equity share capital was issued at par. So these are the entries which we are supposed to write under this particular question. Correct. Generally, the first two points are asked, but in case if the entries are asked, as you have already seen, it is not a very tough nut to crack. Now we come over to five point two. P Limited and Q Limited are carrying on the business of manufacturing auto components. And both the companies decided to amalgamate, and a new company, PQ Limited, is formed. 
So this time P and Q Limited are amalgamating into a new company that is PQ Limited. So PQ Limited will be considered as the purchasing company while your P Limited and Q Limited will be considered as vendor company. Further, it is given that the authorized share capital of the new company will be rupees 10 lakh, which will be divided into 1 lakh equity shares of 10 each. Now, the authorized share capital of new company is given to us. Now, balance sheet, if you look into balance sheet, first of all, of P Limited is given to us. And as per the balance sheet, we have share capital of P Limited as 1 lakh 40. Reserves, there are profit and loss account to the extent of 30,000. And Besides that, these are the two liabilities, debentures, 8% secure debenture and trade payables, and they have got non-current asset in, and even under non-current asset, property, plant and equipment buildings at cost less depreciation, 1 lakh, and plant and machinery, 25,000. Current asset, three current asset, inventory, trade receivable, and cash at bank. This is the balance sheet of P Limited. While the balance sheet of Q Limited is as follows, Share capital, as you can see, is equal to 2,50,000. Then we have reserve and surplus profit or loss, that is 35,000. And general reserve is also there. While, the, while there was no general reserve in case, of, in case of P limited. Now, as far as liabilities are concerned, two liability, only one liability. Uh, in this case, that is trade payables. Correct? That is trade payables. No debentures of Q limited. Then current assets, uh, then uh, sorry, non-current asset under that we have property, plant and equipment, building is this much, plant and machinery is this much, furniture is this much and these are the three items of what we call your asset side. Further, it is given that assets and liabilities of the existing company are to be transferred at book value with the exception of some item, with the exception of some item. Similar to the last question, in this case, goodwill of the two companies are valued at 50 and 1 lakh 50,000. Then furniture and fittings of Q Limited are valued at 35,000. This is the balance sheet of Q Limited and furniture and fittings are valued at 35,000. Daters of P Limited, now this is very important line. Daters of P Limited, daters of P Limited. Now, as far as P Limited is concerned, this is the balance sheet of P Limited and their daters means trade receivable. Daters of P Limited question says are realized by the liquidator, are realized fully and bank balance of P Limited are to be retained by the liquidator and sundry creditors are to be paid out of the proceeds thereof. What does it mean actually? It means that this is the balance sheet of P Limited. In the balance sheet of P Limited, question states that debtors and cash and cash balance are retained by the liquidator, liquidator of this company. That being, purchasing company is not taking over trade receivable and cash at bank of P Limited because it is clearly given that these two items have been retained by the liquidator. Number one, and number two. After retaining them, he sold out trade daters as is given later on. We will see that uh, daters of P Limited are fully realized. That means they retained and they realized, realized it. That means some amount will be received from the daters. And similarly, bank balance is also kept by the, kept by the liquidator. Because it is given in the question that trade daters realized for fully, that means 44,000 will be realized from the data and we have kept the best bank balance with us itself. So total available cash is 74 and question further says that we paid off the creditors. That means creditors are also not taken over. Creditors of P Limited are not taken over. It means that means these three items, creditors, daters and cash at bank of P Limited are not taken over by the purchasing company. Correct? Of course, when we will prepare the account in the books of P Limited, correct, that is in the books of vendor company. Over there, over there, we will trans, as you know, how to close the books in the books of the vendor company. We prepare realization account, we prepare shareholders account, we prepare cash account and purchasing company account. And generally, all the assets are transferred to the realization account, whether taken over or not. But cash and bank will not be transferred because it is clearly given cash and bank is not taken over. But besides cash, 
all other assets, whether taken over or not, are transferred to the debit side of realization account. After transfer, and similarly, we will transfer all the liability. There are two liability, even though trade payables are not being taken over, but still we are going to transfer them to the credit side of realization account. I'm talking about in the books of P Limited, correct? And then we will realize the data, so we will pass the entry cash account debit to realization account, whatever cash we will receive, we will put it towards the credit side of realization account. And so then we will pay off the creditors also, because creditors are not taken over, so we will pay off the creditor, we will write to cash. That is the point. That means this part is related to the books of vendor company, correct? The important thing from the perspective of the purchasing company is that, Purchasing company is not taking over the trade payable. It is not taking over trade receivable. Neither it is taking over cash at bank. Now, further it is given in the question, debentures of P limited are to be discharged by issue of 8% debenture of PQ limited at a premium of 10%. This line reflects that 8% debentures of PQ limited. Now, if we will look into the P limited, sorry, there are 8% debentures. 8% debentures are being discharged at a premium of 10%. At a premium of 10%. If I will add 10% of 1 lakh 10,000, that is 11,000. That means, similar to the last question, debentures of P limited are being taken over at actually 1 lakh 21,000. And in order to pay these debentures, purchasing company will issue its own 8% debenture and will pay the debentures of these companies because the debenture of these companies are being taken over at 10% premium. So we shall discharge the debenture at 1,21,000. Same questions are asked even in this particular question. Compute the basis on which shares of PQ Limited will be issued at par to the shareholders of the existing company and draw up the balance sheet and draw up the balance sheet. It is clearly given in the opening line itself, correct, the share capital of purchasing company is having a face value of 10 each. So you should not wonder, sir, where is the amount of face value of share capital in this question that is very well given in the opening lines itself. So you, I will do this particular question to you. Well, in order to understand the question quite well, as usual, first of all, this is 5.2, 5.2. First, let me keep the question sheet in front of me so that time and again, I need not require to look at the question. So 5.2, first of all, as usual, we are going to compute calculation of purchase consideration, calculation of purchase consideration and number of shares to be issued by purchasing company. Number of shares to be issued by purchasing company. Number of shares to be issued by purchasing company. Issued by purchasing company. This is what we are supposed to compute at the initial stage. And for that, what we are supposed to do, I need not require to tell you. There are two companies in this particular case, P Limited and Q Limited. First, I will write P Limited and Q Limited. Correct? And as per the direction of the question, we will go through. In point number one, it is given that goodwill of the company is 50,000 and 150,000. So first thing you need to write here is amount of goodwill. Amount of goodwill of P Limited happens to be 50,000. So you would write here 50. And then 1,50,000. After having written the amount of goodwill and uh, goodwill of the respective company, the next item in the balance sheet is building. We First, we are taking into account the asset side. I have kept this question sheet in front of me. So, the next item is building. So, I will write here buildings. Now, as far as buildings are concerned, <coughs> Of P limited, it is given at 1 lakh. No revised value is given. So, I will simply write the values given in the balance sheet. And buildings of Q limited is 1 lakh 90,000. So, 1 lakh 90,000, I will write over here. Correct? After building, the next item is plant and machinery. We write plant and machinery 25,000. No revised value with respect to plant and machinery is given. So, 25,000 of P limited. And plant and machinery of Q Limited happens to be 80,000. So I will write here 80,000. Correct? 
after plant and machinery uh, there is no furniture and fittings as far as P limited is concerned but furniture and fittings of Q limited are there and in the balance sheet furniture and fitting is 25,000 but some information is given with respect to furniture and fitting if we will go through the information which is written below the balance sheet in point number two furniture of Q limited valued at 35,000 so you will write here 35,000 after furniture and fittings we have current asset inventories 1 lakh 35,000 so I will simply write inventories 1 lakh 35,000 this is of P limited correct inventories 1 lakh 35 and then 50,000 is the value of the inventory of Q limited you will write here 50,000 after inventory we have trade receivable here you have to exercise caution Trade receivable of P limited are not taken over by the purchasing company. So you are not going to write anything here. However, trade receivable of Q limited have been taken over. So you would write here 142,000. Is it clear to you or not? Similarly, cash impact. Now, as far as cash figure is given, third cash figure of P limited is 30,000. So I will. I, again, I am not going to write 30,000 because even cash of P limited is not taken over because that is retained by the liquidator and cash is 58,000 of this particular company. So, this is how you will accumulate the assets taken over. All you have to do is to add them up. If you will add them up, it will be equal to, I am not able to recapitulate. Generally, the figures are memorized to me, but this time I am not able to recap. 150 plus 25 plus 135 the total is equal to 3 lakh 10,000 first you write here 3 lakh 10,000 and then 150 plus 190 plus 80 plus 35 plus 50 plus 142 plus 58 that gives me 7 lakh 5,000 Now in this particular case, in this particular case, I will subtract the amount of first of all, let us say debentures. Debenture, 8% debentures of P limited is equal to 1,10,000. 1,10,000. And these debentures are being discharged at 10% premium. So that means you are taking over these debentures at 1,21,000. And debentures of Q Limited are not there in the question. Remember one thing. And then we have another item, trade payables. Now as far as trade payables are concerned, trade payables of P Limited are not taken over because these trade payables are discharged by the P Limited itself. And trade payables of Q limited, if you will look into the question, is equal to 1 lakh 40,000. 1 lakh 40,000. Is it clear to you? Now we will compute the net assets that will deliver us the amount of purchase consideration. 1 lakh 89,000 is the purchase consideration or net assets of P limited. And 6 lakh 65,000. 6,65,000. So, this is the net assets of purchase consideration. Once you have determined the amount of purchase consideration, you have to divide it by nominal value of share of purchasing company. Nominal value of share of purchasing company. Now, nominal value of share of purchasing company we have already seen is 10. So, I am going to divide it by 10. After dividing it by 10, I will find the number of share, which is the requirement of part A of the question. Number of shares to be issued. So, number of shares which will be issued by purchasing company to discharge the purchase consideration to P Limited will be 18,900 shares of 10 each. Similarly, 66, is it 6,65? If I am going to subtract 140 from 7,5, I think it will be 5,65,000. I, it is not 6,65. It is 5,65. 
anyway so we shall discharge 56500 shares of rupees 10 each to discharge the purchase consideration to q limited correct and i have already told you once you have determined the purchase consideration that been indirectly you have found out that which are the assets and at what value you are taken over you have also you have also uh, computed the in fact you have also found out the liabilities which you have taken over and at what value so all these assets which you have taken over you will simply add them and put them towards the asset side and likewise the liabilities which you have taken over that is debenture 1 lakh 21 plus 0 so 1 lakh 21 will find place in the balance sheet and trade payables at 1 lakh 40 will find place in the balance sheet and besides that we have to write off we have to write only the share capital which have been issued by our company correct so should not be a big issue as far as this particular question is concerned but still i will prepare the balance sheet that is post amalgamation balance sheet this is part b solution to part b of the question post amalgamation balance sheet in order to prepare the post amalgamation balance sheet first of all you will write equity and liability because this balance sheet is being prepared in the light of AS14 and not as per NDAS, correct? That means this company will follow Division 1. And under Division 1, we still write liability side first and asset. While under Division 2, we write first assets and then liabilities, correct? So some of you may have confusion why I am writing liabilities first because we are following Division 1 now. We are not following NDAS at this moment. So equity and liability under equity and liability, I will write first of all one share capital and under share capital, as usual, first of all, we shall write here a share, I have written here share capital, shareholders fund and under shareholders funds, because we are following uh, AS, AS14, that when we are going through accounting standard at this particular moment, so we are following Division 1, and in Division 1, we still use the word shareholders fund, while under NDS, we use the word equity. Correct, shareholders fund. Under shareholders fund, we shall write share capital, and how many share we are issuing. But before you write the share capital, this time you also must mention authorized share capital. Because it is given in the question that authorized share capital of this company is 10 lakh. So authorized share capital is 10 lakh, although it will not be used for computational purpose, but I will have to mention it. Then I will write issued, subscribed and paid up. Issued, subscribed, paid up. Issued, subscribed, paid up. For that, you will have to add the number of share which your company is issuing. If you will add these share, that will be equal to 74,500. So 74,500 share your company is issuing and one share is of rupees 10 each. So in the outer column, I will write 7,54,000. 7,54,000. Is it clear? To you? Then B reserves and surplus because we are not taking over general reserve or profit and loss account of the vendor company. So no question of reserve and surplus. And then we would write here non-current liability. Under the non-current liability, we have taken over only the debentures of the uh, of one company. And that particular debentures were worth rupees 1 lakh 10, but we took them over at 1 lakh 21,000. And we have issued our debentures to discharge those debentures. Even purchasing company has issued 8% debenture to discharge 1,21,000. So I will simply write 1,21,000. After that, we have in this particular case trade payables. Trade payable of Q Limited have been taken over. That is 1,40,000. Correct? Now you will add all these items and it will be equal to 10 lakh 15,000. Now you will go through the grinding of the asset side. 
as far as assets are concerned first non current asset under the non current asset we will write property plant and equipment and it is always better to reflect them as tangible and intangible as far as tangible are concerned correct as far as tangible are concerned one is building and building of the respective companies you have taken over that is 1 lakh worth of building of q limited and 1 lakh 90 thousand worth of building of p limited p limited and q limited sorry p limited 1 lakh q limited 190 so total will be equal to 2 lakh 90 thousand similarly after building we have plant and machinery and plant and machinery were taken over at 25 thousand of P limited 80,000 of Q limited so 1 lakh 5,000 is there any other item right furniture and fittings although furniture and fitting is of only Q limited and we took them over at 35,000 so we shall write here 35,000 then we have in this particular case intangible assets because it is given in the question that goodwill of both the companies are valued at so and so. So 50,000 worth of goodwill is for P limited and 1,50,000 worth of goodwill is for Q limited. So total worth of intangible assets will be equal to 2 lakhs. After that three current assets are given to us in this particular question. Current assets. So you have taken over inventories. You need not require to mention it again time and again. You can simply write the total figure 135,000 inventory of P limited and 50,000 worth of inventory of Q limited. So 185,000. After inventory, we have trade receivable. So trade receivable. As far as trade receivable, are concerned trade receivable uh, of both the companies if we look into trade receivable of P limited we did not take over and trade receivable of Q limited is 50,000 so we, we shall write here 50,000 then we have in this case trade receivable of trade receivable are one lakh forty two thousand sorry trade receivable are one lakh forty two thousand extremely sorry I have written here fifty thousand trade receivable in the question of Q limited is one lakh forty two thousand one lakh forty two thousand After trade receivable, we have in this particular case any other item cash at bank. Now cash at bank of this company, P Limited is not taken over and cash at bank of other company is 58,000. So I will write 58,000. So this is how we shall accumulate the assets in the new company's balance sheet. Now total must match 10,15,000. Correct? Now in this particular question, these are the requirement of the question, no doubt about that. Further, further, one more thing. Actually, it is not asked in the question. I simply want to ask, in fact, in point number three, I think it was asked, write up general entries including bank entries to close the books of Sham Limited, to close the books of Sham Limited. So books of Sham Limited we have to close. Sham Limited is vendor companies. It should be actually P, P Limited, not Sham Limited. It should be P Limited. Sometime misprints take place that creates and hampers the flow of the class. Books of P Limited. Actually, question is interested in knowing the accounting treatment of P Limited. 
even though journal entries are asked no doubt about that which you can pass very easily as you know first of all what i am going to do when we prepare or when we do the accounting in the books of p limited we close the asset side and we take all the assets whether taken over or not to the debit side of realization account so your first entry will be realization account debit realization account debit we will transfer all the assets for example buildings as far as buildings are concerned that is equal to 1 lakh we will look into the balance we will look into the balance sheet only correct in the balance sheet the next item is plant and machinery and we will transfer them at 25000 when we will transfer them to realization because the transfer is done from the balance sheet only balance sheet values will be considered then inventories are there inventories of p limited 135000 and then trade receivable also even though trade receivable are not taken over still i am going to transfer it to the debit side of realization account correct and that is 44000 however we have to exercise caution only with respect to cash account the cash account will be posted to the cash account of course i will write in the cash account balance brought down and no entry for there not no entry is there for writing balance brought down now we will transfer all the liabilities correct in this particular question liability of p limited 8 percent debenture now 8 percent debentures don't write 1 lakh 21 thousand if you will add all these items it will be equal to 3 lakh 4 thousand it will be equal to 3 lakh 4 thousand correct now 8 percent debentures because we have to transfer we have to transfer it from the balance sheet so i will write balance sheet value one lakh ten thousand then trade payables are also there trade payables are not taken over but still we will transfer them to the credit of realization account correct so to realization account transfer of liabilities one lakh sixty four thousand then towards the liability side there is share capital and reserve and surplus share capital equity share capital we know is transferred to the credit side of shareholders account so equity share capital account debit one lakh forty thousand and even reserve and surplus the reserve and surplus in the form of profit or loss account is also transferred to the equity shareholder thirty thousand so equity share capital account debit profit and loss account debit to equity shareholder account to equity shareholder account this is how you are going to write the entry because question has asked entries and not accounts then after closing down asset side and liability side we pass the entry for purchase consideration too and the entry is purchasing company account debit purchasing company account debit now purchasing company account debit if we will look at the amount of purchasing company purchase consideration with respect to p limited was 1 lakh 89000 1 lakh 89000 so i shall write 1 lakh 89000 purchasing company account debit to realization account it means this much amount is due from purchasing company correct then we will receive the payment entire payment is being received by way of shares so we shall write here shares in purchasing company account debit shares in purchasing company account debit now as far as shares in purchasing company account debit are concerned we are receiving 18,900 share of 10 each so 1,89,000 worth of consideration to purchasing company the moment we are going to receive the amount of purchase consideration i need not require to tell you time and again that purchasing company account will now stand closed correct and then in this particular question you have to be little bit 
careful because daters were not taken over and it was given in the question that realized full amount. So you will write the entry cash account debit to daters account. Daters were worth rupees 44,000 and it is given daters or trade receivable realized in full. So you will write here cash account debit to trade receivable account 44,000. And then you paid off your trade payable also. So your next entry will be trade payable. In fact, I have written cash account debit to trade receivable. It should be cash account debit to realization account because we have already transferred trade receivable to realization account. Similarly, we paid off trade payable. So I will write the entry realization account debit. I will write in bracket trade payables to cash account. Now trade payables in the question were to the extent of 54,000. So I will make a payment of 54,000. So this is how the entry will be passed in the books of the vendor company. Then whatever shares which you have received will be transferred to the shareholders account and the entry will be when you will transfer the shares to the equity shareholder account, equity shareholder account debit, equity shareholder account debit, One lakh eighty nine thousand worth of shares you have received, and these shares will be transferred to the equity shareholders account. Shares in purchasing company. You have received the share from purchasing company, but till now you haven't transferred them to the debit of equity shareholders. So now you have done that, correct? And finally. You will compute the what we call realization loss or profit. In this case, there is profit actually. So in order to transfer the profit, you will write the entry realization account debit to equity shareholder account. To equity shareholders account. And your profit as per the net answer which I am having is 39,000. So this is how you are going to Close the books of P Limited in this particular question. Is it clear to you or not? Yes, sir. After having gone through this particular question, now let's see what is in store as far as next question is concerned. In this particular question, 5.3, the financial position of the two company, Messrs. Abhay and Messrs. Asha Limited is as follows. Correct? So, balance sheet of Abhay Limited and Asha Limited is given to you and their share capital once again is uh, one, once again is at your disposal. Then these are the reserves and surplus, general reserve, profit or loss account and security premium. And besides that, there are contingency reserve also. All these are items of reserve and surplus. However, we need to be careful about the liabilities. There are two liabilities. However, Abhay Limited is not having, Abhay Limited is not having any debenture amount. However, the other company that is Asha Limited is having 250 debentures and trade payable to the extent of 35,000. As far as asset size are concerned, tangible asset, land and building and plant and machinery, then we have goodwill also, but goodwill only of this particular company Asha Limited is given. Further, we have three items, inventory, trade receivable and cash and bank. Now in the question, it is given that they decided to form a new company and the name of the new company will be Messrs. Abhilasha Limited. Name of the new company is Messrs. Abhilasha Limited Limited and this company was formed on 1-4-2020. 1-4-2020. It should be three actually. It is written in your notes. It must be 1 4 2023. They decided to form a new company on 1 4 2023 because balance sheet date is 31st 3 2023. So next day they decided to form a new company. In this question, it is written that goodwill is to be valued at two years purchase of super profits. We have to find out the goodwill in this particular case of both the companies. And the goodwill of both the companies is to be found out at two years purchase of the super profits. 
Further, we have been given that normal rate of return is 10% of the combined amount of share capital and general reserve. We did a question like this in earlier sessions also. Generally, normal rate of profit is based upon the capital employed, but here normal rate is based upon the combined amount of share capital and general reserve. All other reserves are to be ignored for the purpose of the goodwill. So for the purpose of the goodwill, you will consider only the amount of share capital and general reserve and nothing else. Then average profits are also given 2,75,000 and 1,75,000. Number one. That means you will have to find out the value of the goodwill of the respective companies. Further, it is also given land and building, plant and machinery and inventory of both the companies to be valued at 10% less than the book value. Actually, it is not 10% less than the book value. I think it is more than when this question originally came in the examination, it was more than. Anyway, so 10% more than the book value. And a provision of 10% is to be provided on Sunday daters. Correct? These three items are valued at 10% more than the book value. And a provision of 10% is to be provided on daters. Further, it is given 12% debenture is to be redeemed by issue of 12% preference shares of Messrs. Abhilasha Limited. And face value is 100. We want to redeem the debentures. Correct? And debentures, you must have noticed actually in this particular case, debentures of this company Asha Limited is given. And we want to redeem these debentures at 10% premium. So that means we will pay them 2,75,000. 2,75,000. And for that we are issuing preference shares and preference shares are being issued at, at a face value of 100. Further, it is given sundry creditor is to be taken over at book value. Another important aspect is that there is unrecorded liability of Rs. 15,500 on 1 4 2023. There is an unrecorded liability of Asha Limited, correct? And bank balance of both the companies are to be taken over by Messrs. Abhil Asha Limited after deducting liquidation expenses of Rs. 60,000 to be borne by Messrs. Abhay Limited and Asha Limited in the ratio of 2 is to 1. We will take over the cash balance of both the companies, but from there on we will subtract the 60,000 in the ratio of 2 is to 1. Correct? That means we will subtract 40,000 to 20,000 and then we will take over the bank balance. You try to do this question of your own. I will give, try to go through this question and after 5 minutes I will recommence the class. Correct? After 5 minutes. So, five minutes break, you can see.
to welcome again to this particular session. Correct, not exactly session. After the break, we are recommencing. So, I will solve this question for you, in fact. Correct. I will solve this question. So, this is 5.3. Question number 5.3. So, first of all, as usual, we will compute the amount of purchase consideration and in order to compute the amount of purchase consideration, what we are supposed to do? Just pay attention. First of all, calculation of purchase consideration. Calculation of purchase consideration and number of shares to be issued. And number of shares to be issued. There are two companies, one is by the name of Abhay Limited and another one is Asha Limited. First of all, in this particular question, I will have to compute the amount of goodwill and I will have to compute the amount of bank balance. So before we start what we call solving the question, somewhere in working notes we separately compute amount of goodwill. So, if I will compute the amount of goodwill, Abhay Limited, Asha Limited, correct? Okay. Average profits are given to us in the question, in the first line, point number A, last line of point number A. Average profits are 2,75,000. Average profits 2,75,000. Actually, I took the break for the tea, but tea is received now. So, average profits are 2,75,000 of Avail Limited. And of Asha Limited, it is given to you as 1,75,000. Correct? Now, I will have to subtract the normal profit to find out super profits. However, Normal profits, as I told you earlier also, and it is written over here, are based upon combined amount of share capital and general reserve. So, if we will take into account the com combined amount of share capital of Avail Limited, share capital of Avail Limited is 15 lakh. And the reserves, general reserve I am talking about is equal to 2 lakh 75,000. Correct? And it is given that 10% is the normal rate of return on combined amount of share capital and general reserve. So, your 10% amount will be equal to 1,77,500 as far as Abhay Limited is concerned. Similarly, you will compute 10% of combined amount of share capital. Share capital of Asha Limited is 10 lakh. And as far as reserves are concerned, the reserves of Asha Limited, if you look into the balance sheet, 1,25,000. So, 11,25,000, 10% will be equal to 1,12,500. So, now we have computed the amount of normal profits, so we can find out super profits. So, our super profits will be equal to 97,500. And in this case, it will be equal to 62,500. And it was given in the question that goodwill is to be valued at two years purchase. Years of purchase is two. So, I will multiply it with two. I will multiply it with two to get the amount of goodwill. Now, as far as goodwill amount is concerned, so, we may say that 1,95,000 is the amount of goodwill as far as this company is concerned. And amount of goodwill of this particular company is 1,25,000. Correct? So, here we write amount of goodwill. 1,95,000. And then we write 1,25,000. Is it clear to you? After the amount of goodwill, I write here land and building. 
as far as land and building is concerned, it was given in the question that land and building, plant and machinery and inventory of both the companies to be taken over at 10% above book value. Now, if we will look into the balance sheet, the land and building of the company Abhay Limited is 8,50,000. And if I am going to add 10% to 8, book value plus 10%. Correct, 8,50,000 plus 85, it will be equal to 9,35,000. And similarly, you will add 10% of 5,75,000 and you will get 6,32,500. After land and building, we have plant and machinery. Even plant and machinery is to be valued at more than 10%, so book value plus 10%. plant and machinery and inventory also, correct? So, if I will add 10% to the book value, I will get 3,45,000. And if I am going to add 10% to the book value of plant and machinery, 2,25, so I will have to add 22,500. So, the revised value will be equal to 2,47,500. If I am not wrong, Plant and machinery 2,47,500, correct? Well, after the plant and machinery, we have got next item as inventories. So, even inventories are taken over at book value plus 10%. So, book value is 4,20,000. I will add 10%. That is equal to 42,000. So, it will be equal to 4,62,000. And similarly, inventory of Asha Limited is 2,40,000. I will add 24,000 to get 2,64,000. However, trade receivable is the next item. And as far as trade receivable are concerned, whatever book value is given, I will subtract actually 10% because it was given in the question that 10% uh, at, at a provision of 10%. So, provision we will have to create against the trade receivable. Now, trade receivable in the balance sheet is 3,5,000. I will subtract 30,500. So, if I am going to subtract 30,500, <clears throat> how much will be the figure? Trade receivable that is equal to 3,5,000 minus 30,500 that is equal to 2,74,500. 2,74,500. And trade receivable of the other companies 2,85,000. So 2,85,000 minus 28,500 that is equal to 2,56,500. Now coming over to cash, that is cash bank balance, whatever it is given in the question, cash and bank balance. Now if you will look into the balance sheet, the cash and bank balance is 1,80,000 and 45,000. 1,80,000 and 45,000. So, workings. Abhay Limited, Asha Limited. Now, cash balance as per the balance sheet of these two companies 1,80,000 1, and 45,000. Question, question has stated that Cash balance has been taken over, but after subtracting liquidation expenses in the ratio of 2 is to 1. Now, liquidation expenses are 60,000. And liquidation expenses indirectly, it means two-third, that is 40,000 are borne by this company. 20,000 borne by this company. So, rest of the amount is taken over by the purchasing company. 
one lakh forty and twenty five thousand. So we may say that cash and bank balance is taken over at one lakh forty thousand and at twenty five thousand. Now we will compute the total of these items. Now, if I will total them up, it will be equal to one lakh ninety five thousand plus nine lakh thirty five thousand plus three lakh forty five thousand plus four lakh sixty two thousand plus two seven four five hundred and plus one lakh forty thousand. That comes to twenty three lakh fifty one thousand five hundred. While the total of Asha Limited's asset are one lakh twenty five thousand plus six lakh thirty two thousand five hundred plus two lakh forty seven thousand five hundred plus two lakh sixty four thousand plus two lakh fifty six thousand five hundred and plus twenty five thousand that comes to fifteen lakh fifty thousand five hundred. Now we will subtract the liabilities taken over. Correct? Less liabilities taken over. Less liabilities. As far as liabilities are concerned, in this particular question there are debentures, and debentures were twelve percent debentures. Twelve percent debentures of Asha Limited are there. Twelve percent debenture of Asha Limited is equal to two lakh fifty thousand, but we are discharging them at a premium of ten percent. So that means we are indirectly taking over the debentures of Asha Limited at two lakh seventy five thousand. Two lakh seventy five thousand. Besides that, in this particular case, there are sundry creditors also, trade payable or sundry creditor, whatever it is, fifty five thousand and thirty five thousand. Fifty-five thousand, thirty-five thousand. Also, one important point in this particular question is: it's a pretty long question. There are unrecorded. There was one unrecorded liability. Unrecorded liability. So one unrecorded liability was also there, and that unrecorded liability is to the extent of. Uh, fifteen thousand five hundred. In point number D, it is written. Unrecorded liability, correct? Sundry creditor is to be taken over at book value. In point number D, it is written, and there is an unrecorded liability of fifteen thousand five hundred of Asha Limited. Now we will subtract these items to get the amount. Sundry creditors are worth fifty-five and thirty-five thousand, and after subtracting the figure, we will get purchase consideration equal to twenty-three lakh thirty-one thousand, and in this case, that is equal to twelve lakh twenty-five thousand. Twelve lakh twenty-five thousand. Let me make a check again. One lakh ninety-five thousand is the amount of goodwill. Land and building is estimated at nine lakh thirty-five thousand, and then three lakh forty-five thousand. We have written plant and machinery. Plant and machinery. Figure is three lakh forty five. This figure, plant and machinery in the balance sheet was three lakh forty five. So it seems I haven't added ten percent to it. First, let me add the ten percent amount. I will add thirty four thousand five hundred. So this figure will become three lakh seventy nine thousand five hundred. Why I was checking it? The reason I will tell you in a short while. So this total will change, and it will change by 
uh, it will change by just give me a minute or so 37,950 plant and machinery book value is what is the book value? 34,500. I will add 34,500, 23,51,000 plus 34,500. So this total will be 23,85,500. So sometime when you take the break, such things happen. Mm -hmm. 23,85,500. Extremely sorry. So, and figures are four lakh sixty two, and uh, we have written bank balance also one lakh forty thousand. Sunday daters we have written two lakh seventy four thousand five hundred. Let me check it up once again the total. 1,95,000 plus 9,35,000 and plus 3,79,500 plus 4,62,000 plus 2,74,500 plus 1,40,000. Actually, total is 23,86,000. 23,86,000. Now it is 23,31,000, that is fine. So, because I had the net answers, but I'm not having this answer, so I recomputed it, 23,86,000. Anyway, this is your purchase consideration. Then you will divide it by the nominal value. So nominal value of share is 100 in this particular case so that will tell you how many number of shares you are going to issue that is equal to 23 lakh 31,000 and 12 lakh 25,000 mm -hmm. Total number of shares will be equal to 23,310 and 12,250. Let me take another sip. Flow, it seems, has a little bit broken down. So, this is how the purchase consideration will be computed. Correct? Now, we will prepare the balance sheet also in this particular question post amalgamation balance sheet post amalgamation balance sheet in order to prepare the post amalgamation balance sheet first of all you will have to write equity and liability equity and liability under the equity and liability as usual first of all we shall write shareholders funds under the shareholders fund, we write share capital. In this particular question, as far as share capital is concerned, if suppose I am going to ask you how many equity shares you will write and besides that, what is the amount of preference share capital? Why you are writing here preference share capital? Reason being is that you have taken over debentures of the purchasing company at 275000 and you discharge them by issuing preference share capital. Because you are issuing preference shares of 100 each, it means you are issuing 2750 preference share of 100 each. Correct. If we will look into point number C, it is given that 12% debentures to be redeemed by issue of 12% preference shares of Messrs. Avilasha Limited. So that is why 2,75,000 worth of preference share capital will also find place in the balance sheet. As far as equity share capital is concerned, so you add the total number of share. Now after adding the total number of share, your total number of share will be equal to 23,310 
plus 12,250, that is equal to 35,560. 35,560. And one share is of 100 each. So this much of capital you are going to write in the outer column. That is 35,56,000. 35,56,000. Correct? So after writing the amount of share capital, just give me a minute or so. After writing the amount of share capital, we generally write reserves and surplus. Now as far as reserve and surplus is concerned in this particular case, right now we are not having any reserves. Right now we are not having any reserves. And then we will write C, non-current liability. Under the non-current liability, nothing will come because debentures of ASHA Limited were there and those debentures have been discharged by issue of preference share. So debenture will not come in the new balance sheet. Correct? And then and then we are going to write current liabilities. As far as current liabilities are concerned, in this particular case, there are sundry creditors and we took over the creditors at 2,40,000 and creditors, just let me check, this is 5.3, no, it seems actually 5.3 sheets are lying here. Now, in this particular question, we have debentures, not, no amount of debenture will come over there. Trade payables are 55,000 and 35,000. So, trade payable, you are going to write in the balance sheet. But what will be the amount of trade payable? Amount of trade payable will be equal to Just wait. Trade payable 55,000 plus 35,000. And remember one thing, in this particular case, there was an unrecorded liability which has been taken over. So you also add that liability over here. So total amount will be equal to 1,5,500. Correct? This is how you are going to actually prepare the liability side and your Total, ultimately, you will have to match it to find out your total. And then, coming over to, coming over to the asset side. As far as asset side is concerned, first, as usual, we are going to write non-current asset. Correct? Under the non-current asset, I will write property, plant and equipment. Then I write tangible. Tangible assets are land and building. Then we have plant and machinery in this particular case. Now, all I have to do is, I will, because I have already noted down here at what value we have taken. So I will simply add these two values and simply put them in the balance sheet. Is it clear to you? So after adding the value of land of the two companies, I will write 15,67,500. Similarly, after adding the values, revised values of both the companies, I will add and then put them in the balance sheet at 6,27,000. In this question, then intangible assets are also there. Intangible. As far as intangible assets are concerned, there is goodwill. And if we are going to add the amount of goodwill, which we computed, that is equal to 195 plus 125, that is equal to 3,20,000. So I'm going to write here 3,20,000 and so on. Preparation of asset side is not a headache. Then current assets. Because we have already noted, that, noted down the values, all we have to do is just add those values and put them here. Correct. So inventory, if we will total them up, it will be equal to 7,26,000. And similarly, the next item is trade receivable. 
you will add the trade receivable and you will write 531000 and then similarly cash and cash equivalent cash and cash equivalent is equal to 165000 so this is how you are going to do this particular question correct so till up to 5.3 we have done in this particular session honestly speaking the next question again is on similar lines and you can easily attempt 5.4 correct and this is absolutely on same lines and you can easily manage this question honestly speaking there is nothing for me to actually do in this particular question question has been given in a solved manner and then coming over to the next one 5.6 actually 5.6 you will do it but you will do it by yourself only when I will have done question number 5.7 so let me finish off 5.7 then only this particular section will get over correct so in the next session we will finish off 5.7 and 5. Point, in fact I will do 5.8 and then you will finish off 5.7 and 5.6 once I will have finished 5.8, then this particular section will get over and in the next session then I will meet you. Correct? Hello and welcome again to this particular session. So in the last one we finished still up to 5.3 and now we are picking up of course 5.4 to begin this particular session and this particular question is a little bit little bit different than the one actually which we have done so far now p limited and q limited agree to amalgamate their business of course even in this particular case two companies are amalgamating and forming a new company the scheme of the scheme envisages the share capital equal to the combined capital of p limited and q limited for the purpose of acquiring the assets and liabilities and undertaking of the two companies in exchange for shares in pq limited so a new company pq limited has been formed number one number two this time it is given that the share capital of pq limited will be the combined capital of p and q so by combining the capital of p and q we will have the ca capital of pq limited further the balance sheet of these two companies are given to you or balance sheet as a 31st of three or p limited and q limited correct in case if there is something else is written in your notes kindly rectify the same and just see here the share capital is actually six lakh if it is written eight lakh in your notes kindly rectify the same and share capital of q limited is eight lakh forty thousand and further we are given that reserves and surplus of the two companies are this much besides that we have sundry creditors to the extent of 240 and 540 respectively no bank overdraft for pkp limited whereas 5 lakh 40 thousand is the bank overdraft of this particular company q limited and total is 18 lakh 60 thousand and 25 lakh 20 thousand this is the total of your liability site Coming over to the asset side, under property, plant and equipment, we have 720 and 10,80,000. Then as far as current assets are concerned, three current assets, inventories, trade receivables <coughs> and uh, what we call cash and cash equivalent. However, no cash and cash equivalent of Q Limited is given to you. Further, it is given that consideration, the consideration was to be based on the net assets of the companies as shown in the balance sheet but subject to an additional payment to p limited for its goodwill to be calculated as its weighted average of net profits for the three years ending 31st of march 2023 so this time the goodwill of the two entities is to be computed uh, in this manner sorry in this case it is written but the subject to an additional payment to p limited for its goodwill so the goodwill in the contest of p limited will be computed and it will be computed by taking the three years of profit and uh, and then we will multiply them with the weights which are given to us as one two three and then we will compute the weighted average profits correct and then the profits had been 3 lakh 525 6 lakh 30 is also given to you now shares of pq limited were to be issued to p limited and q limited at a premium now here the question differs this time it is given that pq limited is going to issue the shares at premium but at what premium it is not given to us 
at a premium and in proportion to the agreed net assets value of these companies. So far, what we were doing, we were simply computing the net assets and we were, we were dividing it by the what we call face value of the shares to know how many shares the purchasing company would deliver to the uh, what we call vendor companies. You may say so, correct? However, here it is given that purchasing company first of all will issue the shares at premium. Further, the premium is not given to us. This is one area of concern. And the second one is that this time it is given that shares will be delivered to us on the basis of ratio of net assets of these two companies. In order to raise the working capital by 18 lakh, pros 18 lakh company proceeded to issue 72,000 shares of 10 each at the same rate of premium as issued for discharging the purchase consideration to P and Q Limited. After having discharged the purchase consideration to P and Q Limited, now this company, PQ Limited, the new company, the purchasing company is interested in raising 18 lakh worth of share capital. And for the same, it is going to issue 72,000 shares. It is given in the question. But it will issue the share at the same rate of premium. Now share is of 10 each. At least we have come to know about this. But what will be the premium? Now that again becomes what we call something which we need to find out. Then you are required to calculate the number of share to be issued by P and Q Limited as usual and draw up the balance sheet of P Q Limited after the amalgamation and pass entries of P Q Limited. So this is the situation which is given to us in this particular case. Correct. Now, in order to understand this particular question, let me solve it completely and comprehensively because it is something of it is something of different nature than the one which we have been doing so far. Correct. We come straight to the point and we start the solution of this question. Because here it is written, first of all, in this question, it is clearly mentioned that we have to compute the goodwill. So first thing which I do is that under step number A, that is calculation of goodwill. First of all, I start doing the solution of this particular question by calculating the amount of goodwill. Calculation of goodwill. So first of all, I will compute the amount of goodwill. In order to compute the amount of goodwill, what I do? Now profits of last three years are given to us in this particular case. So first of all, I will write the years. Profits of 2021 given to us in the question. Then profits of 21-22 is also given to us in the question in 22-23. Now net profits which are given to us is equal to 3 lakh as far as 2021 is concerned. Then 5 lakh 25,000 worth of profit is also given to us. Then question uh, below states that 6 lakh 30,000 is the profit for the current year 22-23. 6 lakh 30,000. Further, we are given in this question that we need to compute the amount of goodwill with the weights and the respective weights which are given to us is equal to 1, 2, 3. So first of all, I am going to total up the weights. The total of weights is equal to 6. Now I am going to compute the weighted profits. In order to compute the weighted profits, what we have to do, we have to simply multiply the weights with the net profit. Now I will multiply 3 lakh with 1 that is equal to 3 lakh then similarly 5 lakh 25,000 I am going to multiply it with 2 to get 10 lakh 50,000 and similarly 10, 6 lakh 30,000 will be multiplied with 3 to get 18 lakh 90,000. So after having done the multiplication now I am going to add all these amount of profits that will give me a figure of 32 lakh 40,000. Question simply states that we have to compute the goodwill on the basis of the weights. Now, on the basis of which the amount of goodwill will be equal to this much, that it's weighted profits, which is equal to 32,40,000, and I will simply multiply it with weights. Now, weight is equal to 6. So, by dividing it by 6, we get 5,40,000. Remember one thing, this is goodwill only related to P. Correct? It was agreed in the question that additional payment to P will be given for goodwill. Now, the second step as usual is calculation of net assets. Calculation of net assets and also purchase consideration.
First, let me write the calculation of net assets. In order to compute the net asset, what I am going to do as usual, first of all, I am going to, in this case, <coughs> write the names of these two units, that is peak limited and Q limited. We start with what we call property, plant and equipment and property, plant and equipment. No revised values are given, so we will pick up the values given to us in the balance sheet, 7,20,000 I am going to write. After that, we are given 10,80,000. After that, we are given 10,80,000 of Q limited, so I am going to write here 10,80,000. Then in the balance sheet, before I write any other item, I write the amount of goodwill which we just computed. 5,40,000 .40, worth of goodwill or P limited was estimated. Then we have some current asset in this particular question, inventories. No revised values are given, so we can simply pick up the values which are given in the balance sheet, 3,60,000. And then we have been given 7,80,000. 780000 After that, we are given in the question trade receivable. Trade receivable. As far as trade receivables are concerned, you must have noticed in the balance sheet, it is 4,80,000 for your P limited. And as far as Q limited, it is concerned, it is given to you as 7,80,000. I think I have written the figure of inventories wrongly. So I will rectify it. It is actually 6,60,000. 6,60,000, correct? 6,60,000 is the figure. Now, after trade receivable, we have been given in the question cash equivalent. That is, I simply write here cash. And it is given 3 lakh and nothing for Q limited. Correct. Now, we will add all the assets. If I am going to add all the assets, the total will be equal to 24 lakh. If I am going to add the assets of this particular company, that will be equal to 25,20,000. Then I will write right here less liabilities. As far as liabilities are concerned, one is sundry creditors, 2,40,000. We will subtract it. Then I will subtract 5,40,000 from Q Limited. And then we have been given bank overdraft. Now, as far as bank overdraft is concerned in this question, bank overdraft for P limited is zero. And again, 5,40,000 for this particular company. So after subtracting the items of liability, we come to the main point that is net assets. So net assets we have now computed. Correct. We have computed net assets. Now the main point here is that I cannot simply divide it by what we call respective face value of the share to find out how many shares the purchasing company will issue to us. Why? Because in this question, something else is given to us. I will write here purchase consideration. Purchase consideration. I will compute the purchase consideration. In order to compute the purchase consideration, first of all, let me write the net assets which I just computed. Correct? Net assets. So now we have written the amount of net assets that is 21,60,000, 21,60,000 and of course 14,40,000. These are the net assets which we have computed. After having computed the amount of net assets in this question, you must not forget that it was given to you if you will look into the point number four that shares of PQ Limited in paragraph four, you can say the shares 
of PPO Limited were to be issued to P Limited and Q Limited at a premium and in proportion to the agreed net assets value of these two companies. This is very important to understand. First of all, could you tell me in this question, what will be the total number of shares available right now with the PQ Limited? Because it was given in the opening line itself that the share capital of PQ Limited will be the combined capital of what we call these two entities. Now, if we look into the capital of these two companies is 6 lakh plus 8 lakh, that is 60,000 shares and 80,000 shares. So we may say that PQ Limited, which is a newly formed company and which is nothing but which is the combination of P and Q Limited. So P and Q Limited, as you must have noticed, is having a share capital of 60,000 plus 80,000 because it is given in the question, <laughs> correct? So that means I should first of all write number of shares to be issued by PQ Limited number of shares number of shares to be issued number of shares to be issued by pq limited how many shares pq limited can issue that is 60000 plus 80000 because 60000 is the share number of share of p limited 80,000 is the number of shares of Q Limited and combined number of share of PQ Limited could be only 1,40,000. Sorry, that share no, share capital of, what is the share capital? It's 8,40,000, sorry. 8,40,000 is the sh share capital of Q Limited. So number of share will be equal to 84,000. Correct, so 60 plus 84, that will give me a figure of 1,44,000. So that means this company can issue 1,44,000 shares. Now it is further given in the question that the PQ Limited will issue the shares, whatever shares are available with it, to the respective companies, but in the ratio of what we call net assets. So the second point now is that shares... shall be issued or shall be distributed shall be distributed in the ratio of net assets so in the ratio of net assets these shares will be distributed in the ratio of net assets so what will be the ratio of net asset? That is 216 is to 144. 216 is to 144. Correct? So if I will add 216 and 144, that will be equal to 360. That means in this ratio, I am going to issue the shares. So, if we will compute 1,44,000 into 206 and multiply it with 216 and divide it by 360, so I will write here and show you in this manner, total share to be issued 1,44,000. So, company P will receive 216 divided by 360. These many shares, the purchase uh, P Limited will actually receive that comes to 86,400. So 86,400 shares will be received by P Limited and similarly 1,44,000 into that is equal to 144 and divided by 360. So these many shares will be received by this particular company that comes to 57,600. Now, by dividing the net assets with the number of shares, so this is the number of share, number of shares issued, number of shares issued. So that means purchasing company has issued these many shares. Is it clear to you? Now we can find out the issue price of the share. And that will deliver us the premium amount. So issue price, how to find the issue price? You can simply divide the net assets by the number of shares issued. Number of shares issued. Now, if you are going to divide 
24 lakh by 86,400, you will get exact amount of 225. Exact amount of 25. And even in this case, the amount is coming to 25. So you must have noticed one share is of 10. So we have now got the amount of premium. So that means in this case, purchasing company is issuing share of rupees 10 each at the rate of uh, at a premium of 15 per share. Is it clear to you? Now, we can pass the general entries also in respect of this particular question. As far as general entries are concerned, that is not a big issue. Your first entry will be what? Business purchase account debit. You have purchased a business. Business purchase account debit. In fact, you have purchased business. You are the purchasing company. You have purchased business from liquidators of P Limited and to whom actually you are supposed to make a payment of 21,60,000. 21,60,000 because this is the amount of purchase consideration or net assets, you may say so. And similarly, you have purchased business from Q Limited. So liquidator of Q Limited and two liquidators of Q Limited, you are supposed to pay 14,40,000. All in all, total payment by combining these two, you will get 36 lakhs. So this is your first entry with respect to purchase of business. Is it clear to you? Once you have purchased the business, now the next entry is with respect to taking over of assets and liabilities. Under point number B, first I write assets and liabilities which we have taken, taken over or P limited. As far as P limited is concerned, property, plant and equipment we took over and we took over at 7,20,000. So I'm going to write here 7,20,000. Besides that, we have paid them for goodwill also. That means we are taking over their goodwill 5,40,000 worth. 5,40,000 worth. Besides that, three current assets which we are taking over, one is inventories. Inventories are worth rupees 3,60,000. Inventories worth 3,60,000. Trade receivables. As far as trade receivables are concerned, that is 4,80,000. Besides that, cash. Cash worth rupees 3 lakh. You have taken over. Then you have taken over what we call sundry creditors or trade payables, whatever it is, 2 lakh 40,000. With respect to P Limited, there is no bank overdraft. Then you will write here to business purchase. Business purchase is equal to 21 lakh 60,000. No difference is there in the entry. So this is basically assets and liabilities of P limited. Similarly, you will write another entry with respect to taking over of assets and liabilities of Q limited. As far as Q Limited is concerned, you are taking over their property, plant and equipment at a valuation of 10,80,000. No revised values are there. 10,80,000. No goodwill in this case. So now you write the current asset inventories. Inventories of Q Limited is equal to 6,60,000. Inventories of Q Limited is 6,60,000. Then you write here trade receivable TR that is 7,80,000. 7,80,000. Besides that, you have taken over two liabilities. One is creditors. Creditors worth 5,40,000. And even bank overdraft is of the same amount. Two bank overdraft. Bank overdraft is equal to 5,40,000. Correct. Then we will write here two business purchase. 
बिजनेस परचेज इज फोर्टीन लैख फोर्टी थाउजेंड फोर्टीन लैख फोर्टी थाउजेंड then after writing these two entries of course next one is first of all let me write these are assets and liabilities of q limited assets liabilities of q limited then after that we are make we will make the payment correct again i will show the payment separately liquidator of q limited we are supposed to pay to the liquidator of q limited 21 lakh 60000 and in order to pay 21 lakh 60000 we are issuing how many shares which we just computed earlier i will write here share capital how many shares actually we are issuing we computed 86400 shares however when we will write here we will show the face value so that mean 8 lakh 64000 is your face value of share capital and rest will be security premium so security premium will be how much security premium will be 86400 into 15 into 15 security premium will be 86400 into 15 that comes to 12 lakh 96000 Twelve lakh ninety six thousand. Light is flashing down, so that is the why I have upped my glasses. Sometimes it becomes difficult to see otherwise. Uh, pen today is creating a bit of problem. Let me adjust it. Okay. Now the next entry is with respect to liquidator. Now we are supposed to pay to the liquidator of P Limited. sorry first one was p limited this is i think q limited p and q limited of course this is p limited the names are confusing now liquidator of q limited we are supposed to pay them 14 lakh 40000 then i am going to write here to share capital so if i am going to write the amount of share capital i will have to put off here number of shares that is 57600 into 10 that comes to 576000 and then i will have to write two security premium then i will write here two security premium 57600 into 15 into 15 the figure will be equal to 57600 into 15 how much it will be 8 lakh 64000 so 8 lakh 64000 and then finally it was given in the question that this company has issued to raise some amount that is 18 lakh 72000 share this company has issued so your entry will be bank account debit correct so 18 in order to raise 18 lakh it was given in the question that this company has issued 72000 shares so two share capital i will write here two share capital i will write here 72000 shares into 10 that is equal to 7 lakh 20000 so 7 lakh 20000 is the amount of share capital besides that here i am going to write two security premium so two security premium will be equal to how much 72000 into 72000 into 15 and that comes to 10 lakh 80000 that comes to 10 lakh 80000 is it clear besides that in this particular question we are supposed to prepare the balance sheet also now i will be preparing the balance sheet although preparation of balance sheet by now you must have realized that is not a very tough task in fact everything is given we know that in fact under step number second we have already taken into account their respective values of assets and liabilities we will have to simply combine them and put up in the balance sheet only item of concern is share capital correct that's all so we shall now prepare balance sheet of this particular entity in order to prepare the balance sheet 
equity and liability first of all we need to write equity and liability after having written equity and liability now i will be writing here first as equity under equity what we are supposed to write i need not require to tell you under equity first of all we begin with equity share capital in fact share capital now in this question in this question what is my issued and paid up share capital you can find out very easily issued and paid up share capital how can you find out correct actually one way of finding out is that in the entries wherever you have written share capital you simply add it for example in entry number in entry number 1 you have written 864 then you add 576000 and then you add simply 720000 by adding all these items you will come to know what is the face value of the shares which you have issued if you will add up you will find that actually it is coming to 2160000 it is coming to 2160000 correct it is coming to 2160000 now if you divide 2160000 by 10 you can also show it in this manner 216000 shares of rupees 10 each this is one way of computing another way of computing is that you have already computed the number of shares which this particular company would be issuing now 144 if you remember total 144000 shares we have issued to both these two companies p and q and besides that we have issued 72000 shares to the public so 144000 share plus 72000 is equal to 216000 this is also and this is easier correct so whatever suits you you can go by that and then we will write here reserves and surplus in this question unfortunately as far as reserves and surplus are concerned reserves and surplus are concerned nothing is there sorry under reserve and surplus there is no pnl there is no general reserve but we must not forget to write security premium in this question we have issued shares at security premium so there will be some balance in the premium what will be the balance in the premium here we can find out by adding security premium here here and also here by adding all these items 12 lakh 96 Eight lakh sixty four and ten lakh eighty thousand. We will get thirty two lakh something. Thirty two lakh forty thousand. Only thing is that the first item could pose little bit of problem. Rest there is no problem. For example, in this particular question, no non current liability is there. Non current liability is not there. However, current liabilities are there. Now, as far as current liabilities are there, one is trade payables. And in the form of trade payables, we have creditors. I will simply add the amount of trade creditor of both the companies. Honestly speaking, in this case, trade creditors of only one company are there. So, I will simply write 7,80,000. You must have noticed here, I haven't written bank overdraft, although I can write bank overdraft here. But why I haven't written bank overdraft, I will let you know in a short while. We move over to the asset side now. When I will move over to the asset side, under the asset side, first of all, as usual, I am going to write non-current assets. As far as non-current assets are concerned, in this particular case, we are given property plant and equipment and by simply adding the property plant and equipment of both these entities for example in point number one we have already taken 720 plus 10 lakh 80 that will give us what we call 18 lakh so we can straight away put up here 18 lakhs by combining these two items 720 plus 10 lakh 80 thousand if you want to show you can write here 720 plus 10 80 but there is no point in unnecessarily wasting the time. 
Besides that, we have in this case goodwill also, correct? Tangible asset, then intangible asset goodwill. 5,40,000, we should not forget to write it over here. Now coming over to the second point, that is what we call current asset. As far as current assets are concerned, in this case there are inventories. Again, what you need to do is simply add the inventories of these two entities and simply you put it up over here. Inventory is equal to 10,20,000. 10,20,000. Besides that, in this case, we have trade receivable. We will add the amount of trade receivable, 480, 780 plus that will, be give, that will give us 12,60,000. Then here you have to exercise caution, cash at bank. Now, in this case, cash at bank of P limited is already there, 3 lakh. So I will write 3 lakh. Now, cash balance of PQ limited, this is P limited, bal cash balance of PQ limited is nothing. It is not given in the question. So, total is 3 lakhs. However, we must not forget that we have issued some shares to the public. 72,000 shares were issued to the public. And from there on, we received 18 lakh. Isn't it or not? We received 18 lakh. So, total cash available with us is equal to 21 lakh. What my point is that if you have enough cash, in that case, it is better to not to reflect the bank overdraft. That is why here I did not reflect bank overdraft. Is it clear to you? So, instead of writing the bank overdraft over there, I will simply subtract it from here. So, bank overdraft, which is 5,40,000, it is better to adjust it against the available cash if you have the sufficient cash. So now in the auto column you simply write 15,60,000 and that is the way you should do this particular question. It was a pretty long question but interesting one at the same time, isn't it or not? After having done this particular question, after having done this particular question, let's come back to the material now, after this, this was 5.4 and although it is given in a solid manner, then there is no 5.5 it seems. After 5.4, we are given simply 5.6 questions. Sometimes numbering actually creates problems, so no problem. So this question, you can manage it by yourself very easily. It should not pose you any problem, correct? Unless and until I feel that a student can do the question, I never ask the student to do it by themselves. You will be able to do 5.7 by yourself when I will do for you 5.8. So now I will be doing 5.8 to finish up this particular section. And after that, we shall have only one more session and then we will finish up the entire this particular chapter. Now, in this particular question, there is P limited and Q limited and they are carrying on same business independently. Due to competition in the market, they decided to amalgamate and form a new company called PQ limited. Now, following is the balance sheet of P and Q limited, which is given to us in this particular question, although it's a very small balance sheet. You can see only plant and machinery is given of these two companies, then buildings, and then we have been given current assets, correct? Then capital of the two companies are given to us besides only one item of liability that is current liability. Now some additional information is given to you in this particular question. The authorized share capital of the new company will be rupees 25 lakh which will be divided into 1 lakh equity shares of rupees 25. So later on when you are going to prepare the balance sheet you will simply write over there under share capital authorized share capital 25 lakh that is 1 lakh equity share of 25. As you know better than I actually that equity share capital is hardly ever used for the totally. You will simply write the authorized share capital and put up an underline over there. Further, it is given liabilities of P Limited include 50,000 due to Q Limited for the purchases made. When we will prepare the books of PQ Limited and over there, if I am supposed to ask to write the entries, what will be my entry? One entry among them is to 
erase out intercompany liability. It is a case of intercompany liability. We have to reduce the debtors and creditors, correct, because it is written that P limited liabilities of P limited. So P limited must have purchased some goods from what we call Q limited. And in their liability, 50,000 is such amount which is due to the Q limited. So it is a case of intercompany transaction. And my entry with respect to point number two will be, first of all, I will write here, uh, logically, I should write sundry creditors account debit to debtors account because we have to reduce the creditors and debtors because it is a case of intercompany liability. As you know that intercompany transactions are erased out in this manner. But in this question, no sundry creditor and, and neither sundry creditor and neither what we call debtors are given. So neither sundry creditor nor debtors are given. So it is better instead of writing sundry creditor, you write current liability and put the sundry creditor in bracket to current asset account and better to put debtors in the bracket. This will be your entry. Further, it is also written that Q Limited made a profit of 20% on sale. Obviously, in this question, <coughs> clearly given in this question it is clearly given that p limited has purchased some goods so p limited has purchased some goods to the extent of 50000 because it is given that p limited is supposed to pay 50000 to q limited it is given in the question now it is further given that when q limited sold the goods to p limited it made a profit of 20% on sale this time profit 20% on sale is already given to you correct now below in point number 3 it is mentioned that p limited has goods purchased from q limited costing to it 10000 it means at the time of amalgamation in the balance sheet of p limited there are goods out of 50,000 worth of goods which they might have purchased, out of those goods, 10,000 worth of goods are still with P Limited. They have, P Limited has purchased 50,000 worth of goods, no doubt about that. But out of that remaining goods is, remaining goods are 10,000. So obviously in the remaining goods, whatever unrealized profit is there, we shall have to actually pull it out. So 10,000 is the remaining goods and your unrealized profit will be equal to 10,000 into 10,000 into 20 by 100 because rate of profit on sales is already given. So unrealized profit is equal to 2,000. Now the point is that if it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase, if it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase, I have already told you whatever losses are there, those are debited to goodwill account. So logically, my entry for unrealized profit should be goodwill account debit to stock account or inventory account. Actually, in this question, stock is not given. So I will write current asset in, in bracket. I will write stock. Correct. I have to bring down the stock by rupees 2000, but it is a loss to us now. So we shall debit the amount of goodwill. We will see that it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase. Why revised values are given to us. We will see later on. So these two entries in the books of purchasing company, one with respect to intercompany transaction and second one with respect to unrealized profit, you will have to pass in case if the entries are asked. Correct. Although in this, in this question, you are simply supposed to prepare the balance sheet. But still it is feasible to have an idea regarding the balance, regarding the what we call entries. In point number four, now you are given one more information that assets of P limited and Q limited are to be revalued in this manner. Now plant and machinery of P limited, which, which is uh, having a book, a book value of 485 is being revalued at 525. And likewise, plant and machinery of Q Limited, which is having a value of 614, is being revalued at this figure. Besides that, building is also revalued. However, no, no values of what we call current asset or current liabilities, no revised values of current asset and current liabilities are given in the question. Now, in this question, why this? Why I am doing this question? The reason being is this one. In this particular question, it is given to you that purchase consideration, purchase consideration is to be discharged as under. 
how the purchasing company is going to discharge the purchase consideration. <laughs> Issue of 24,000 equity shares of 25 each fully paid up in the proportion of profitability in the preceding two years. Purchasing company will issue 24,000 equity share. Purchasing company will issue 24,000 shares of 25 each and it will pay these shares in the proportion of the profitability in the preceding two years. That means, first of all, I will have to find out the profits of the previous two years which are given to you very clearly here. Profits of previous two years are available with you. First year, second year. Previous two years profits are given and their total is also given. I will take the average of these profits. Correct? And on the basis of ratio of the average profits, I will issue 24,000 shares of rupees 25 each to respective companies. So how the equity shares will be issued? This is in this manner you are going to issue. You will compute 24,000 into 25 total value. Then you will allocate this value to these two companies in the ratio in the ratio of average profits and which are available with you. Now the second point is with respect to issue of 12% preference shares of 10 each fully paid at par. First of all, it is given that purchasing company will issue 12% preference share also besides the equity share as it, as part of payment of purchase consideration. Correct. Now, further it is given that purchasing company will issue the purchase cons uh, preference shares of rupees 10 each at par in such a manner so as to provide income equal to 8% return on capital employed in the business as on 31st 3.23 after the revaluation of assets of P and Q Limited. So, how many preference shares we will be issuing to these two companies First of all, I will have to compute the capital employed that is assets minus liability. Then I will compute 8% return of that. That means P limited and Q limited are earning 8% return on their capital employed. Now we want to issue the preference share in such a manner that P and Q limited get the same amount of return. So this is the point which you need to understand. Is it clear to you or not? So that is how we are going to do this particular question. So first of all, in this particular question, we have to find out the amount of purchase consider consideration. That is the only area and how we are going to find out the purchase consideration. It is clearly given compute the amount of equity and preference shares issued to P and Q limited number one and prepare the balance sheet of P and Q limited after the amalgamation. So you must have noticed question is not as tough as it was appearing to us in the initial stages isn't it or not so we can do this question we will do this question obviously we will take five minutes for break and then i will do this question for you allow me to have a cup of uh, tea coffee i never drink so i will take a cup of tea now and after five minutes of break so you pause five minutes you uh, sorry you can simply move further five minutes correct by sliding through and start what we call your studies
people welcome after the break correct uh, just give me a minute so as i told you before leaving for break that i will be solving this question comprehensively for you okay keep i have kept the question sheets in front of me also and i would like you to also keep the question sheets in front of you so that every now often than not you need to require to flip through here and there first of all in this question what we are supposed to do of course we need to compute the amount of purchase consideration correct and in order to com compute the amount of purchase consideration what i do this is 5.8 correct this is your 5.8 Today, this pen is creating some sort of problem. Okay, 5.8. We start with this particular question. And point number one says that compute the amount of equity and preference shares to be issued. That means purchase consideration. That is computation of purchase consideration. And over there, we will have to show actually what number of and what amount of equity and preference shares we are issuing computation of purchase consideration for that first of all i write here as usual in this case one is a star limited and another one is star limited it is actually p limited and q limited five in 5.7 it is star and moon limited here it is p and q limited in 5.8 and we are doing this question first of all we will have to compute the amount of average profit as i told you why we have to compute the amount of average profit because then only we will be able to find out what amount of equity share capital we are going to issue so average profits which is given to you in this particular question you will compute it by dividing the total profits by two by dividing the total profits by 2. So your average profits will be equal to 2,37,500 and 2,62,500. This is how actually you are going to find out the amount of profits. Now, <clears throat> now we are in a position to find out actually uh, at what value or what value what value, what equity share we are going to issue to these two companies. For that, we need to find out what we call the ratio of these two entities, isn't it or not? So, if I will take the ratio of profitability, this is ratio of profitability. Your ratio of profitability will be 2375 is to 2625 and if I add both these two items it will be equal to 3000 so ratio will be 2375 divided by 3000 and 265 divided by 3000 now it is given in the question that we are issuing this particular entity is issuing 24,000 equity share. So the number of shares now we can find out first of all how many number of shares we shall issue. Number of shares. To be issued. Twenty four thousand into two three seven five, and you divide it by three thousand. So that means we are going to issue them eleven thousand four hundred shares. Similarly, twenty four thousand into two six two five. 
divided by 3000. So that will tell me that I'm going to issue 12,600 shares to Q Limited. Correct? And if I want to know the value of the shares, value of equity shares, value of equity shares will be 11,400 into 25. Because we are issuing 11,400 share at the rate of 25, so that will give me 2,85,000. Similarly, in this case, we are offering 12,600 shares and we are issuing them at the rate of 25. It means 3,15,000 worth of equity shares we shall have to issue. So we have been able to find out at least the value of equity share. Now we have to find out how many number of how sorry at what value of preference share we should issue them in order to know that it becomes imperative for us to compute the capital employed first of all so what will be the amount of capital employed for that you must not forget to take the revised value of plant and machinery of the respective companies Revised value given to you is 5,25,000 and 6,75,000. 6,75. Then even building revised value is given in the question. 7,25,000 and 6,48,000. 6,48,000. However, as far as current assets are concerned, no revised values are given. 1,63,500, you will take the book values only and 1,58,600 is the value written in the balance sheet. Now I will subtract the current liabilities because there is only one liability. That is equal to 6,23,500. And five lakh fifty seven thousand six hundred. So by subtracting current liability from the current asset from the assets, we will get what we call capital employed. So capital employed will be equal to in this particular case that will be equal to eight lakh forty thousand and 9,24,000. So once we have the capital employed, now the next thing is that we have to find out the 8% return on capital employed. Correct? So now I will be computing 8% return on capital employed. 8% return on capital employed. Now, in order to compute the 8% return on capital employed, I will multiply 8% with 8,40,000 to get 67,200. And likewise, 9,24,000 into 8% will give me a figure of 73,920. And we will have to issue the preference share now in such a manner so that they get the same return. So, the next question is, and it is given in the question uh, that company will issue 12% preference share. Correct? So, value of 12% preference share. Value of 12% preference share, which you will issue. Value of 12% preference shares to be issued. So, as to provide so as to provide 8% return so as to provide return 8% return so as to provide in fact I should write it in this manner so as to provide return equal to 8% return on capital employed 
equal to 8% return on capital employed. And we have done such things so many times. Correct? So, it is very easy to find out because all I have to do is we know that we are issuing 12% preference share capital. So, 12% of preference share capital. Consider your preference share capital as X and it should be equal to 67,200. So, you can easily find out what will be the amount. The amount will be equal to 67,200 into 100 divided by 12. So, that will tell you the value of the preference shares which you would be issuing and in this case it will be equal to 560000 so if you will compute 12% of 560000 it will be equal to 67200 and similarly here 12% preference share capital you are issuing so 12% of what value of preference share capital is equal to 73920 so similarly here you can find it out by multiplying 73920 with 100 and dividing it by 12. So this will provide you 616000. So now you have been able to find out the value of the preference share capital and value of the equity share capital. You have been able to find out value of equity share capital and value of your sorry preference share capital step in point number d and point number nine that will give you total purchase consideration so your purchase consideration will be equal to your purchase consideration will be equal to how much that is d value of equity share plus item number G. Correct? So, you will add these two value of equity share capital and value of preference share capital to get your purchase consideration of 8,45,000 and 9,31,000. So, this is how you are going to compute the amount of what we call purchase consideration. Is it clear to you or not? Fine. Right, sir. So, you have been able to compute the purchase consideration. Now, you are supposed to compute the amount of goodwill. Honestly speaking, amount of goodwill, you cannot compute without passing the entries. Logically, logically. But you can compute it also in this manner. For example, we have the amount of purchase consideration. If I will subtract from here the amount of net asset, let us say if I subtract the amount of net assets, what is the amount of net assets we just computed earlier? You can see here the net assets by subtracting liability from the asset we got 8,40,000 and 9,24,000. That means I am purchasing your business for 8,40,000 but I am paying you 8,45,000. Because the amount of purchase consideration is higher, in this case 5,000 is goodwill. In this case, 5,000 is good, no doubt about that. Similarly, in case of other company, I am purchasing assets worth rupees 9,24,000 and I am paying you a purchase consideration of 9,31,000. So, that means in this case, the amount of goodwill is 7,000. So, even without passing the entries, you can find out the amount of goodwill. Now you have to prepare the balance sheet in this particular question. Balance sheet. In order to prepare the balance sheet, I write equity and liability. Under the equity and liability, I write first of all equity. And under equity, I write a share capital in this question we are offering preference share capital 12 percent preference share capital also you must have noticed that we have offered 5 lakh 60 thousand worth of preference share capital to p limited 
and we have offered 6 lakh 16 thousand worth of share capital to the other company correct 6 lakh 16 thousand so that comes to 560 plus 6 lakh 16 thousand so that comes to 11 lakh 76 thousand now equity share capital similarly you can find out the amount of equity share capital 2 lakh 85 thousand worth of equity share capital you have issued to p limited and similarly 3 lakh 15 thousand worth of equity share capital you have given to the other company you multiply and write in the total that is that will be equal to 6 lakhs then we write over here reserves and surplus so far we are not having any reserves and surplus then i write what we call point number two non-current liability in this question even non-current liabilities are not given so we will simply write the current liability now current liability of this particular company is 6,23,500 of P limited I am talking about and of Q limited it is 5,57,600 straight away you can take it from what we call balance sheet however you must not forget when I was discussing the question there is a case of intercompany contingent liability due to which contingent liability sorry Inter, there was there is a case of intercompany liabilities on account of that we passed an entry that is because we have to visualize the entries now we, we are not writing the entries but just to make the point clear earlier i wrote the entry current liability account debit to current asset because there was a case of intercompany uh, transaction so on account of that current liability will further fall down by fifty thousand so in the outer column you will write 11,31,100 is it clear to you this is how your balance sheet ultimately will or should appear now we come over to the asset side as far as asset side is concerned asset side one non-current asset in this question as far as non-current assets are considered are concerned tangible and under the tangible first of all let me write here there are two items one is plant and machinery and plant and machinery revised values are given to you 5,25,000 because at this value you will take them over and 6,75,000 so that comes to 12 lakh similarly we have buildings in this particular question now as far as buildings are concerned the revised value is equal to 7,25,000 which is given to us and 6,48,000 so in the outer column I will write 14,23,000 then we have in this case intangible asset because we computed the goodwill if you remember the amount of goodwill which we computed 5000 for p limited and 7000 for q limited total amount of goodwill will be equal to or should be actually 12000 but again you will have to exercise caution in this particular case because there there is a case of what we call unrealized profit and to remove the unrealized profit we pass the entry a goodwill account debit to unrealized profit to stock account or to current asset account so because of that our goodwill will further increase by 2000 goodwill is a sort of loss to us 14000 now we come over to the current asset in this question only current assets are given correct no segregated form is given as far as current assets are concerned no revised values are there 1,63,500 and plus 1,58,600 first of all you are going to write 
and again first you must not forget to subtract 50,000 because earlier you passed an entry current liability account debit current asset to erase out to wipe out your intercompany transaction and again you passed an entry as I just told a moment ago to you goodwill account debit to current asset account because there is a case of unrealized profit so 2000 further you will have to reduce from the current asset so finally the current asset would appear at 270100 so this is how you are going to do this particular question correct so after having done this now we will take one more session to finish up this particular chapter and in the upcoming session i will discuss two points one with respect to external reconstruction you can leave this miscellaneous question section to be very honest with you or you simply go through cursory studies it is not needed to be very honest however now the last section will be your recent examination questions so that question that should be important for you is it clear to you recent examination question and with that we finish up this particular session uh, recent examination questions from your recent examination whatever we will pick those up and we will discuss that in the next session i think that is more than sufficient now for this day and shall meet you in the next one with something new correct Hello and welcome again to this particular session. So we shall begin with external reconstruction. I told you in the initial stages itself that this particular chapter amalgamation actually revolves around three terminologies. One is amalgamation of course and another one is absorption and now we come to external reconstruction. And I told you in the beginning itself what is the meaning of external reconstruction. So often entity which, which are undergoing under some sort of losses and, we, and when they exhaust all the other means to overcome their what we call financial crisis or what we call their filthy position, then they, and then as a last resort, they go for external reconstruction. And if you remember, I gave you the example of Binaka Sibaka at that time. External reconstruction means the company itself is liquidating, the company itself liquidating and then emerging as a new company, correct, and in a new format. So that way round company tries to actually somehow give itself a very nice picture. So let's have a look over external reconstruction of this particular question, although accounting treatment more or less will remain same. Correct? So accounting treatment will remain same. We go for this particular question now. 6.1. The following is the balance sheet of Bricks Limited. It is given to you as a 31st of March of current year further you have been given in this particular case as you must have noticed that in the balance sheet share capital 2 lakh equity shares of 10 each 20 lakh besides that we have 1 lakh 20 thousand 10 percent preference shares of 10 each that is equal to 12 lakh and then profit and loss account is being reflected as a negative item correct so profit and loss account it is accumulated loss you can see you can uh, say and then 12% debentures is our liability. Accrued interest on debenture also happens to be the liability. Unsecured loans and then creditors. Correct. So these are four liability in this particular question. And then besides that, as far as asset side is concerned, we have in this case freehold premises, then furniture and then patents. Besides that, we have got intangible, besides that, we have got non-current investment to the extent of 3 lakh and then 3 current asset, stock in trade, daters and bank. This is the situation in this particular question. Now, it is reflected later on that following scheme of reconstruction was adopted whereby a new company by the names of Bricks Limited to be formed to take over the business of Bricks Limited. So Bricks Limited went for the self-liquidation and it emerged as a new company in the form of Tricks Limited. However, from the accounting perspective, as I told you, Tricks Limited, the new company will be considered as the purchasing company, while Bricks Limited will be considered as the vendor company. As per the, the situation, one equity share of 10, rupees 6 paid up, is to be given in exchange 
of every two equity shares of break limited one equity shares question states that one equity shares of 10 rupees 6 paid up is to be given in exchange of every two equity shares of break limited quite obviously it means this particular payment is being received by the equity shareholders an equity shareholder as it is written in the question they will be given what we call one equity share of rupees 10 each but six paid up in exchange of every two share that means for every two share one share will be given of rupees 10 each at the rate of six paid up further it is given one 11 percent preference shares of 100 each is to be given in exchange for 15 percent preference shares of bricks limited so one 11 percent preference shares <coughs> we are going to issue of rupees 100 each and in exchange for 15 preference shares of BRICS Limited. So, one 11 percent preference share we will issue of 100 each for every 15 shares of BRICS Limited. Correct? For every 15 shares of BRICS Limited, we are going to issue <coughs> only <coughs> one preference share of 100 each. Then it is given to you that claims of 12% debentures of BRICS Limited will be discharged by issue of equity shares of 10 each. Since this particular payment is being given to the debenture holder, it will not be considered as a part of purchase consideration. However, now we will have to presume that debentures are being taken over. Correct? Similarly, question says that creditors will receive 60% of their dues in cash and 25% in equity shares of rupees 10 each and balance will be foregone. So, as far as creditors are concerned, even in this case, creditors, creditors are being made some payment. 60% of the dues of the creditors will be settled in cash <coughs> and 25% of equity shares uh, of rupees 10 each and 25% will be given by way of issue of equity shares and the balance of the balance of the creditor is a sort of gain to us because they have foregone that particular amount. Further it is given that partly paid up equity share are to be made fully paid by receiving cash from the holders. So if we have issued partly paid up share those shares will be made fully paid indirectly it means we will call the uncalled amount for example in case a <coughs> for example in case a you must have noticed that tricks limited sorry a one equity in point number b sorry one equity shares of 10 is six paid up were issued so whatever number of equity share which we have issued in point b we will make them call we will make them fully paid by calling the balance amount of rupees 4 this is the point of this this is the meaning of this particular point f furniture is subject to depreciation by 25 percent correct and then that when furniture is being taken over at 25 percent less freehold premises were revalued at 20 percent more while the stock was revalued at 640000 the investments are brought up to the market value of 360 and debtors are coming down by 10% now here it is also written that preliminary expenses amounted to rupees 20000 now preliminary expenses amounted to rupees 20000 preliminary expenses the Preliminary expenses means expenses in the formation of a company as you know when a company is formed some preliminary expenses must be incurred. So these expenses will be borne by purchasing company that is tricks limited in this particular case. Because, because in this particular question, just wait for a while. Because in this particular question it is written that it is a case of in fact external reconstruction because it is written very clearly in this particular question that a new company is formed to take over the business and BRICS Limited itself is actually liquidating and transforming itself into a new company by the name of Trix Limited. So in this case we have seen that it is a case of external reconstruction. 
Now, whenever the case will be of external reconstruction, in that particular case, you need not require to stretch your mind unnecessarily because in that particular case, we shall always presume that all the assets and liabilities are being taken over. Correct? So, this is the scenario with respect to external reconstruction. In case of external reconstruction, we always presume that all the assets and liabilities have been taken over. That is very important to understand. Although the question is not very tough and neither it is very difficult, but still we will do it for you. Correct? So, since last three, four days, you must have noticed intensity is not very high. Actually, I'm not well, but still I'm taking the classes. Uh, that's the reason. Okay, let's see whether we are able to do and solve this question in this particular space. <clears throat> Correct? So, first of all, as usual, I will be calculating the purchase consideration. And in order to compute the purchase consideration, first of all, I will write here point number one, calculation of purchase consideration. calculation of purchase consideration so i will be computing the amount of purchase consideration and in order to compute the amount of purchase consideration what i will be doing as you know in order to compute the purchase consideration first of all i will look over the fact that which party is receiving the payment equity shareholders as per point number b it is given that one equity share of rupees 10 each six paid up so equity shareholders are receiving this payment first of all let us also have a look <coughs> what is the amount of equity shareholder as per the balance sheet let me also create a bit of more space <coughs> Now, if we look into the balance sheet, we are having 2 lakh equity shares. So, I am going to write here, first of all, 2 lakh. Then I will go over to the information. In the information, it is given 1 equity share of 10 each, 6 paid up, is to be given in exchange of every 2 share. That means, for every 2 share, for every 2 shares of vendor company, purchasing companies offering only one share that means this will reflect the number of share which is being issued by the <coughs> purchasing company of course it is one lakh and we are issuing the share of rupees 10 each at the rate of six paid up is it clear to you or not so one lakh into six so our amount in this particular case will be equal to six lakh so six lakh worth of equity shares we will be showing so this payment as you can see is in equity shares is it clear to you now in point number two of course we can easily infer that payment is being received by the preference shareholder so 10 percent preference shares 10 percent preference shareholders in the balance sheet, 10% preference shareholder amount given is 12 lakh and one share is of 10 each. So, 12 lakh divided by 10 will give me 1 lakh 20,000. So, 1 lakh 20,000 as far as preference shareholders are concerned are of vendor company. And in point number B C, it is given that one 11% preference share of 100 each. One 11% preference share is being given in exchange for 15 preference share that means there are total number of 120000 shares in the vendor company and for every 15 share for every 15 share we are offering only one share so if i will divide 120 by 15 it will tell me the number of shares which i will be issuing correct which i will be issuing now in this particular case uh, I will have to 
compute it because uh, unfortunately the calculator is also not with me. I will have to take the help of now this mobile. And where is the calculator in the mobile? So that is 1,20,000 divided by 15. That gives me 8,000. That means 8,000 shares we are offering. And we are giving one share of rupees 100 each. So, hundred. So, 8,000 into 100 will be equal to 8 lakh. And this payment is being made, as you can see, to fifty through what we call preference shares and 11% preference shares are being issued. 11% preference shares are being issued. I have already told you 2 lakh divided by 2 into 1 actually is equal to 1 lakh. That means we are issuing 1 lakh shares of 6 each and here I told you we are issuing 8,000 shares at the rate of 100, total 8 lakh. So this will be our purchase consideration because other payments which are being made by the company are to parties other than the shareholders. So in this case, 14 lakh happens to be the amount of purchase consideration. This is the amount of purchase consideration. However, in this question, as you can see below, it is written further, claims of 12% debenture holders of BRICS Limited would be discharged by issue of equity shares of 10 each. Claims of debenture holder. Now this payment of course is being received by the debenture holders without an iota of doubt and we will look into the balance sheet to find out the amount of what we call debentures. The amount of 12% debentures is equal to 8 lakh. So, there are 12% debentures and their amount as per the balance sheet is equal to 8 lakh. And it is clearly given in the question that claims of 12% debenture holders of BRICS Limited will be discharged by issue of equity shares of 10 each. That means we are providing them equity shares how many equity share I will be providing to discharge 8 lakh debenture? Obviously, I will be providing 80,000 equity shares of 10 each. So, this payment is being made to the, to the debenture holders by way of equity shares. But point which you need, need to note is that this payment is meant for debenture holder, which is a party other than the shareholders. Obviously, I am not going to consider it as a part of purchase consideration. However, it means that when I am going to pass the entry in the books of the purchasing company, I will take over the debenture at 8 lakh in the second entry when we write asset taken over to liability is taken over. And besides that, actually, I will also pass an entry to for what we call their payment and the entry will be debenture account debit to equity shareholder account. Further in this question, you are given creditors. Creditors. As far as creditors are concerned, in the balance sheet it is given to us as 5,60,000. Total creditors are worth rupees 5,60,000. Correct? Total amount of creditors is equal to 5,60,000. Now question says that 60% of the creditors, so let me compute 60% of 5,60,000. 5,60 into 60%. That comes to 3,36,000. That means, as far as creditors are concerned, 25% that comes to, sorry, 60%, 60%, percent comes to 3,36,000. And this amount, question says, the creditor will receive 60% of their dues in cash. So I will be giving them cash, 3,36,000. Then question says that 25% will be paid by way of equity share. So 5,60,000 into 25%, first let me compute, that comes to 1,40,000. 
So 1,40,000 I will be discharging through issue of equity shares. Correct? And then finally, question says that balance. Now what will be the balance? 85% is already gone by. So balance will be 15%. Just for the sake of computation, I will compute 5,60 into 15%. That comes to 84,000. This amount we are not paying to the creditors. Correct? That means out of 560, we are paying only this much. If I will total them up, it comes to 476,000. 476,000. That means out of 560, only 476,000 worth of payment is being made to the creditors. Now question further says that partly paid up equity shares are to be made are to be made fully paid up by receiving cash from the holder. What does it mean? You must have noticed that to the equity shareholder we have issued 1 lakh shares of rupees 6 each. So uncalled amount we will call up but that entries will be passed in the books of the purchasing company. Then furniture is subject to depreciation of 25%. Now, amount of furniture is 9,60,000. It is given to you. Debt, we will pass the entry later on in the books of purchasing company. Is it clear to you or not? First, I will now close the books of the vendor company. So, this will be my second step. Accounting in the books of Bricks Limited, which is the vendor company. In the books of Bricks Limited, we will prepare the general usual accounts, correct? So, as you know, realization account we prepare, we prepare purchasing company account. Just to understand the question in a better manner, first I am preparing what we call purchasing company account. That is Trix Limited. After the purchasing company account, I will be preparing this is my purchasing company account. After the purchasing company account, I prepare, let us say, preference shareholder account. Because in this question, vendor company is having the preference shares. So it is better to prepare the preference shareholders account prior to the realization account. Although it is not a necessity, so many times I have already told you. It is not a necessity. Uh, just to make you understand i stretch it further then besides that i will be preparing the realization account as usual this is my realization account pretty longer than the usual ones so this is our not only realization account but it is realization Come reconstruction account. Under, inter, under external reconstruction, instead of preparing purely realization account, you better prepare a realization come reconstruction account. Why? I will let you know in a short while. Realization come reconstruction account. Correct? So, and uh, Realization come reconstruction. Now we will prepare the shareholders account also. So this is our shareholders account. Equity shareholders account. And we will also prepare the cash bank account. Correct. Now, as usual, in order to close the what we call accounts, first of all, we pick up, let us say, liability side. In the liability side, you can see the first item is equity shares. So, I will write here equity share capital and amount is 20 lakh. Then we have in this case preference share capital. So, in the preference shareholder account, I write 10% preference share capital. 10% preference share capital is 12 lakh. 
then we have profit and loss account. Now, what is the normal general treatment which we used to do? Correct. What is the normal general treatment which we used to do? Or which we were doing so far or till up to this particular point of time. We used to transfer all the profit and loss account, general reserve, reserve fund to the shareholder account. If credit balance towards the credit side, the profit and loss account is having debit balance. Generally, it should be transferred to the debit side of equity shareholder account. Correct. However, you have to exercise care in this particular case that and if there will be any valueless items like underwriting commission, like preliminary expenses, like discount on issue of shares or any accumulated loss like profit or loss account debit balance. In case of in external reconstruction, accumulated losses and valueless item must be posted to the debit side of the realization account. Correct. That is why it is known as realization come reconstruction account. So the profit or loss account balance instead of posting to the debit side of what we call equity shareholder, I have decided to post it to the debit side. I will post it in a short while. Correct. And then we have in this case non-current liability in the form of debenture. So I will write here 12% debentures. Amount of 12% debenture is 8 lakhs. And accrued interest, accrued interest on debentures. Accrued interest on debentures is actually 96,000. So total claims of the debenture holder is 8,96,000. So here you have to exercise a bit of caution when we were computing the payment to the debenture holders because question had stated below if we will look into point number E, sorry point number D, the claims of debenture holder, it is written claims of debenture holder. That means the claims of the debenture holders are 8 lakh plus 96,000. 8 lakh plus 96,000. That means 8 lakh 96,000 worth of equity share I will be issuing to the what we call uh, debenture holder to settle their claim. So 8 lakh 96,000 divided by 10, it will be equal to 89,600 shares. Correct? Something like this. So you have to take care of this particular fact also that debenture holders claims are being satisfied through equity share that mean entire amount of 8 lakh 96,000 will be settled by way of equity shares. Now in the balance sheet after this item we have been given unsecured loan. So unsecured loan we will also transfer to the credit side of the realization account that is 1 lakh 44,000. I have to speak slowly because two days back only I had my tooth extraction. So that's the reason you must have noticed that a little bit of slowness and intensity is also a little bit low. Creditors 5,60,000. Creditors is 5,60,000. Correct? Now, after this, what we are supposed to do, we are coming over to the asset side. In the asset side, we come across freehold premises. So, freehold premises, we will close it by transferring to the debit side of this account, 960. Then we have been given furniture in short form. I write F oblique F, 1,20,000. Then we are given patents. Amount of patents is equal to 2 lakh. I will be writing it over here. Then besides that, there are investments, non-current investments. That means long-term investments. Investment amount which is given to us is 3 lakh. And then in the next sheet, it is given that there are current assets also, three current assets, stock in trade. So I will be writing a stock in trade that is equal to 10 lakh. Then we are give, being given debtors. 
I will write here daters. Amount is 7,60,000. And then bank balance. As far as bank balance is concerned, 40,000. We will be transferring bank balance to the a realization account reason being is that actually in this question of it will automatically be considered that all the assets and liabilities are being taken over so now after that you will be writing here by tricks limited or by purchasing company you have already computed purchase consideration so purchase consideration is equal to 14 lakhs which we computed earlier and this will be transported to the debit side or purchasing company account. We will be writing here realization account, realization come reconstruction account. That is equal to 14 lakh. We have received 14 lakhs in the form of equity shares. Equity shares in purchasing company we received 6 lakh. And besides that, we have received preference share also. Preference share, 11% preference shares. 11% preference shares. Sorry, equity share is equal to 6 lakh. And preference share is equal to 8 lakh. The moment you are going to receive the amount of purchase consideration, obviously this account will stand closed. And now, you will close this account, correct? After closing this account, transfer equity share because equity shares have been received by the equity shareholders. So you will transfer them to the debit side of equity shareholders. Equity shares in purchasing company. Equity shares in purchasing company that is equal to 6 lakh. Likewise, preference shareholders have received 11% preference shares. 11% preference shares in purchasing company. That is equal to 8 lakh. However, you have to be here again, access again, be very attentive in the sense that I have told you so many times, if you are preparing preference shareholders account and if you have posted their share of what we call consideration to their account, then you must not forget to close it, correct? So we should imme immediately close this particular account. Now, whatever balance will be there, that balance will be posted to the realization come reconstruction account. So this time the balancing figure is appearing towards this side. And logically, when I will be writing this side, it means it is a sort of gain to the vendor company. Because vendor company was supposed to make a payment of rupees 12 lakh to the preference shareholder. However, preference shareholders are given 8 lakh. That means their account is settled by payment of 8 lakh. So it is a sort of gain to the vendor company. And that is the reason it will appear towards the credit side of realization come reconstruction account. And I will be writing over there by preference shareholders account. That is equal to 4 lakh. Generally, after this point, we pay off such liabilities which are not taken over. However, in this particular question, I have already told you, it relates to external reconstruction and it is always presumed that all the liabilities are taken over. So, no question of payment of any liability. So, similarly, we are not required to what we could pay off any, uh, realize any assets. Likewise, in this particular question, I don't think there were any expenses in the additional information. No uh, expenses, liquidation expenses. However, preliminary expenses are given, but that will be post that will be recorded in the books of purchasing company. So now, what we are supposed to do, we will simply tally out this particular account. I'm not telling it one because of the fact that I'm not having the calculator, and second is that I know the net answer already. So in this case, you will have a loss, even though in your net answers it might be written profit of 20,000 but actually it is a case of loss so I will write here uh, equity shareholders account because ultimately the loss will be posted to the equity shareholder account correct 
balancing figure. Debt is equal to 14 lakhs. Your loss amount will be equal to 14 lakh. You can compute it and check it by yourself also. Don't worry. So whatever loss has taken place, now I will post it to the debit side of equity shareholder account. And I will write here realization come reconstruction account and loss amount loss that is 14 lakh. In this question, there is no entry in the books of cash account. Correct? So we will now simply tally out this and it is getting tallied. Is it clear to you or not? Now in the books of purchasing company, we shall consider the things books of purchasing company. Here, one thing I, I would like to tell you, AS14 does not deal with external reconstruction. It deals only with amalgamation and absorptions. It does not deal with external reconstruction. However, we will use the same rule as we normally use in case of purchase. Correct? Books of purchasing company. As far as purchasing company is concerned, my first entry as usual will be business purchase account debit to liquidator account. Business purchase account. Business purchase account debit to liquidator account. To liquidator of vendor company if you want to write it. Liquidator of vendor company. Correct. And we have purchased the business for a purchase consideration of 14 lakhs. So I will be writing here 14 lakhs. Of course, after this entry, I will have to now note down all the assets which I have taken over. Now, in this question, it was written that freehold property something was written with respect to freehold premises i think yes so my second entry will be freehold premises account debit freehold premises now it is given that freehold premises which is 960000 worth has been taken over at 20% above this value so 9 lakh 60 plus 20 again I will have to take the help of this so 9 lakh 60 thousand and into 20 percent the 20 percent is 1 lakh 92 so 1 lakh 92 plus 9 lakh 60 thousand is equal to il 11,52,000. So you will be writing here 11,52,000. Then in this case, it is written that furniture is subject to a depreciation of 25%. Furniture is your 1,20,000. And it is subject to depreciation of 25%. So 30,000 will be depreciation you will consider it at 90,000, correct? Then in this question, it is given that uh, stock was revalued at 640. However, after that, there are patents. So nothing has been written with respect to patents. So I will be writing the amount of patents to lakh. No revised value in connection with patents, correct? After patents, we are given investment and regarding investment, it is given that investment to be brought up to market value of 3,60,000. So, I will write here investment. The book value of the investment given to us is 3 lakh. So, I will increase it by 60,000. And I will write here 3,60,000. After the investment, we are given in this question stock, stock in trade. And it is given that stock has been revalued at 6,40,000. So I will simply write 6,40,000. 
then we are given uh, then we have the next item as daters and daters to be reduced by 10% it is given daters 760,000 minus 76,000 I think 684 but let me check it up S 7 lakh 60 minus 76 Yes, it is six lakh eighty four thousand. Six lakh eighty four. And then we have fortunately the last item bank, and we will write here forty thousand. So these are the assets which you have taken over. Correct? Asset taken over to liabilities taken over. Now we will be writing here liabilities. First of all, I will write here 12% debentures and I am writing 12% debentures and accrued interest. Correct? I am writing them in a combined manner. Reason being is that we have done the calculation in a combined manner. It was given in the question that debenture claims were settled by way of equity share. So their total claims are 896. So I will be writing here 896,000. Correct? 896,000. Then we have in this case unsecured loan. Regarding unsecured loan, no information was there. And neither we made them any payment. So 144, I will simply write here. However, as far as creditors are concerned, you must have noticed that we are paying them 60% in cash and we are paying them what we call 25% of the portion by way of equity share and we are not paying them 25% and I told you earlier that instead of 540 we made a payment of 476 so indirectly it means we are taking over the creditors at 476,000 then you are going to write here to business purchase. So you will compare your net assets which you have acquired with the amount which you have spent. So, so far we have the net assets. We are comparing it with 14 lakh. And after comparing, we will find that in this particular question, we are having a sort of gain. So two capital reserve, it will be and your capital reserve would be 2,50,000. Correct? After that, we are going to make the payment to the equity shareholders. Sorry, to, uh, we'll make the payment to the liquidators. So liquidators of vendor company, you are supposed to pay them rupees 14 lakh and you will be writing here 14 lakhs. Correct? And how you have made the payment, you are making the payment by way of equity shares. As I told you earlier, you are issuing 1 lakh equity shares at the rate of 6. So 6 lakh worth of payment is by way of equity shares. Then 11% preference shares were delivered by you. 11% preference share capital. We computed that we are issuing 8000 shares at the rate of 100, 8 lakh worth of preference share. However, in this case, something else need to be done. For instance, I will be writing here, debenture and accrued interest. We have taken over debentures and accrued interest of course at 8,96,000 because their claim is equal to 8,96,000. And we discharge this claim to issue of equity shares. So I will be simply writing to equity share capital account. Equity share capital account 8,96,000. This is the amount of payment which we made. Besides that, we will have to show the payment which we are making to the creditors. So after taking over the creditors, we will pay them off. We took the creditors 
at rupees 4,76,000. You will write here same amount which you have written in your entry number 2. In entry number 2, you have shown the, that your company is taking over the creditors at 4,76,000. And in order to discharge 4,76,000, 60% portion you paid by way of cash, that is 3,36,000 as we computed earlier. And similarly, we issued equity shares worth 1,40,000. Further, it was given in the question that such shares which your company issued and which were not fully paid were made fully paid. And as I just told you that we have issued 1 lakh shares of 6 each, although these shares are of 10 each, but we have issued them at 6 paid up, so we have made them fully paid, so our entry will be bank account debit to equity share capital account, uncalled amount called up. And so <clears throat> on 1 lakh shares, remaining amount is 4, correct? So 4 lakh. I will be receiving. So that way round, these shares now are fully paid. Besides that, in this question, there is yet another entry with respect to preliminary expenses. Where is it? I think it was in last point. It was written that preliminary expenses amounted to 20,000. You will write a simple entry. Preliminary expenses account debit to bank account or cash account, whatever you may like to write. 20,000, 20,000. Preliminary expense, incorporation expenses shall always be borne by the purchasing company. And if you wish, you can debit these expenses to profit and loss account. Profit and loss account debit to preliminary expenses account. Because ultimately these expenses will be debited to profit and loss account. So this is how. So you must have noticed that there is hardly any difference between internal reconstruction, absorption and reconstruction. Only thing is that in case of internal reconstruction, we have to exercise caution with respect to valueless asset valueless assets and accumulated losses. These items will be posted to the debit side of these items will be posted to the debit side of as I told you realization come reconstruction account realization come reconstruction account is it clear to you or not? If it is clear to you, let's come to the next point. But before we come over to the next point, we'll take a five minutes of break. As I told you, since last three, four days, I'm continuously having some appointment with the doctors. Correct? Regarding my toothache. And already it has been extracted. So it was giving me a bit of problem. So I'm not in a position to take the class in a full intensity as I'm accustomed to and you too. So we take a break and then I will come back and proceed with something else in this particular session.
So welcome again. So after finishing internal, uh, sorry, external reconstruction, now let's see what is there in store for us. So here are some miscellaneous questions and these are simple questions just with respect to calculation of what we call purchase consideration. Let's have a look over these questions also. And in this question, it is given to us 7.1 that there are 75,000 equity shares of X limited, correct? And one share is of 10 each, 75 lakh is the value, 25,000 share, 14% preference shares of 100 each, 25 lakh. And then we have been given general reserve to the extent of 12 lakh 50, then debentures, and then as far as current liabilities are concerned, trade payables. And these are our tangible assets, tangible property, plant and equipment, investments and then current assets, correct? In the form of inventory, trade receivable and cash. Below it is given that Y takes over X limited on 10th of April 2022. Deventure holders of X limited are discharged by Y limited at a premium of 10% by issuing 15% own debentures of Y limited. Now, in this question, of course, this payment is being received by debenture holder. This payment is being received by debenture holder. First of all, let us have a look actually what is the amount of debenture holders. In this case, debenture holders are worth rupees 14 lakh. 14% 14 debentures are worth rupees 14 lakh. And below it is mentioned. Mm -hmm. Below it is mentioned that debenture holders of X Limited are to be discharged by Y Limited at 10% premium. So 1,40,000. So total will be equal to 15,40,000. So this 15,40,000 payment will be made to the debenture holders. And for that, X Limited will issue its own 15% debentures. But we know that because this particular payment is being received by the vendor company from the purchasing company and it is a party which is not a part of shareholders. So it will not be considered for the uh, what we call computation of purchase consideration. However, it means that purchasing company when whenever it would write the entry in its books, it will reflect the debenture at 15,40,000 and later on it will also pay the debenture. Correct? In the second entry, it will write asset taken over to liability taken over. Under the liability taken over, debenture will be considered as taken over at 15,40 and then purchasing company will pass the entry debenture holder account debit 15,40 to 15% owned debenture account. Then, next payment is. Next information is with respect to 14% preference shareholder. Question states that 14% preference shareholders of X Limited are discharged at a premium of 20% by issuing necessary number of 15% preference shares of Y Limited and purchasing company will issue its 15% preference share at a face value of 100 each only. So it is not a very tough one. So as far as your purchase consideration is concerned, preference shareholders of vendor company, 14% preference shareholders are 25 lakh, 25,000 shares. So 14% preference shareholders will be receiving the payment. And we have already seen that 25,000 preference shares are there of rupees 100 each. 25 lakh worth of preference share capital of vendor company is and this preference share capital is being discharged at a premium of 20%. So we will add 20% premium to it and it will be equal to 5 lakh. So that means 14% preference shareholders will be given 30 lakh worth of payment and this payment will be given by 15 by issuing 15% preference shares of purchasing company and purchasing company will issue its share of 100 each 
So indirectly it means because 30 lakh worth of payment we are supposed to make, so 30,000 shares of 100 each will be issued by purchasing company. Then question says below, intrinsic value, intrinsic value per share of X limited is 20 and Y limited's intrinsic value is 30, correct? And Y limited will issue equity share to satisfy the equity shareholders of X limited on the basis of intrinsic value, on the basis of intrinsic value, correct? Question further says that, however, the entry should be made at par value only. The nominal value of each equity shares of Y limited is actually 10. First of all, we need to take into account here total number of shares, 75,000 equity shares of 10 each, 75 lakh. Here you need to understand that we are given intrinsic value of share of X limited and Y limited. Intrinsic value of share of X limited is 20 and of purchasing company is 30. Given below here. And purchasing company, because intrinsic value of purchasing company's share is high, intrinsic value of purchasing company's share is high, so how many share purchasing company will issue for what we call shareholders of X limited? Because Technically speaking, if you want to know, you simply crisscross it. It will easily give you the analytical point. For example, it means Y Limited will issue, Y Limited will issue only two shares for every three shares of X Limited. Y Limited will issue only three shares because intrinsic value of Y Limited is higher. So Y Limited will issue only two shares for every three shares of X limited. You can also find it in this manner. I have just told you that Y limited will issue only two shares. Y limited will issue only two shares for every three shares because intrinsic value of Y limited is 30. If we are issuing two shares, that means our worth is 60. And worth of X limited's three share because intrinsic value is 20, it is also 60. So that means for every two shares and for every three shares of X limited, Y limited need to issue only what we call three shares. Now here, this payment of course is being received by the equity shares. Total number of equity shares we have already seen is 75,000. We have already seen also, in fact, 75,000 shares are there. Let me check. Right. 75,000 shares. Correct. And for every three shares, we are issuing only two shares. For every three shares of X limited, Y limited will issue two shares. So that comes to, if I will find out the number of share, it will be equal to 50,000 shares. Logically, 50,000 share must be multiplied with the intrinsic value of Y limited, logically. However, in this question, it is given that, however, the entry should be made at par value only. That means use of intrinsic value is just to determine that how many number of share purchasing company will issue, correct? If this line would not have been given over here, in that particular case, I would have issued 50,000 shares at the rate of 30. Then I would have multiplied it with 30. But because this line is given, this time we will issue 50,000 shares of rupees 10 each because it is clearly stated in the question that entry need to be done at par value. So that is the reason now actually 50,000 into 30 will give us what? 50,000 into 30 will give us 50 lakh. So your total purchase consideration will be equal to 80 lakh. So you are supposed to compute only the purchase consideration in these questions. Similarly, there is another question. Here it is stated that S limited is absorbed by P limited and S limited gives the following information on the date of the absorption. We find that share capital of S Limited is 2,000 shares, 2,000 preference shares, 
fully paid of course 2 lakh of 100 each and then we have 5000 equity shares of 100 each that is also equal to 5 lakh then there are reserves debentures and trade payable some liabilities question tells that p limited has agreed to issue 9% preference shares of 100 each in the ratio of 3 shares of p limited for 4 preference shares in s limited what does this particular line mean of course, when we will compute the amount of purchase consideration, as we know this payment is being received by the preference shareholders of vendor company which is P limited and we have just seen that total number of preference shares of P limited happens to be 2000. So total number of share is 2000. I write here 2000. Then below it is given that to that P limited has agreed to issue in fact which company S limited is absorbed by P limited I'm sorry actually S limited is absorbed by P limited so P limited is the purchasing company so P limited will issue 9% preference shares of 100 each no doubt in the ratio of three shares of P limited for four for four shares of S limited now S limited is the vendor company they have 2000 share for four share for every four share purchasing company is issuing only three shares so this will tell you how many shares the purchasing company will issue 2000 divided by 4 500 500 into 3 is equal to 1500 and it is clearly given that purchasing company will issue the share at the rate of 100 each so 1500 into 100 So that means 150,000 worth of payment will be issued and this payment is being made by way of 9% preference shares. By way of 9% preference shares. Further it is given to issue debenture holders in S limited 8% mortgage debenture at 96 in lieu of 6% debenture in S limited which are to be redeemed at 20% premium. Of course, this payment is being received by the debenture holder. We are not concerned with that. But just to make the point a little bit more clear. Now, if we will look into the balance sheet of S Limited, we find that there are 6% debentures. There are 6% debenture and 2 lakh is the amount which is given to us. So, first of all, I write here 2 lakh. And it is given that 6% debenture in S limited are redeemable at a premium of 20%. That means these debenture must be redeemed at 20% premium. So I will add 20%, it will give me 40,000. Indirectly, it means now the purchasing company must issue debenture equal to, must make a payment of 2,40,000 to the debenture holders of vendor company. It is given that S limited in order to discharge the debenture holders of vendor company, of course at 20% premium, shall issue 8% debenture at 96. That means this payment is being made by issue of 8% mortgage debentures. 8% mortgage debentures. If you want to know how many debenture purchasing company will issue, you, you can find it out. Because it is given that purchasing company will issue its debenture at the rate of 96. I will have to divide it by 96 to know the number of debenture. So 2,40,000 now I have the cal calculator divided by 96. So that mean 2,500 debenture S limited must issue of rupees 100 each at the rate of 96. It means actually although it is not needed because Payment to debenture holder is not considered as a part of purchase consideration. But just to elaborate the point, in the books of purchasing company, when we will write the second entry, we will write over there debenture taken over at 240. Then we will show the payment also because we are paying them off. So next entry for payment entry, you will write debenture holders of vendor company 240,000. Then you will write two debentures two 8% mortgage debentures or purchasing company in bracket you will write 2500 into 100 and then you will debit also 
discount on issue of debentures of purchasing company 2500 into 4 because we are issuing debentures of 2500 of rupees 100 each at the rate of 96 is it clear to you or not so anyway this cannot be considered as part of purchase consideration then the next line is that to pay rupees 20 per share in cash to cash and to issue six equity shares of 100 each uh, issued at the market rate of 125 what does it mean of course this payment is being received by the equity shareholders now as far as equity shareholders are concerned in the balance sheet we are given there are 5000 equity shares of 100 each that is equal to 5 lakh first question states that to pay 20 per share in cash so there are 5000 shares per share divided by 1 and each share is receiving a payment of rupees 20 in cash so that means 1 lakh worth of payment will be given to the equity shareholder in cash number 1 number 2 further it is given to issue 6 equity shares of 100 each and having a market value of 125 in lieu of every 5 shares in lieu of every 5 shares there are 5000 shares of vendor company in lieu of 5 share means for every 5 share purchasing company will issue 6 equity shares and purchasing company will issue 6 equity share at the rate of 125 at the rate of 125 so this will tell me 5000 divided by 5 1000 into 6 6000 6000 share we will be issuing at the rate of 125 that makes it 7 lakh 50000 7 lakh 50000 so all in all equity shareholders are receiving 1 lakh plus 750 8 lakh 50000 you can see here So equity shareholder on all, all will receive 1 lakh plus 750, 8 lakh 50,000. However, out of 8 lakh 50, 1 lakh will be by way of cash. 1 lakh will be given to them by way of cash and 7 lakh 50,000 by way of equity shares. But your total purchase consideration, because we are supposed to compute only the amount of purchase consideration and amount of purchase consideration will be equal to 10 lakh is it clear to you debenture will not be considered as part of purchase consideration similarly another question is there 7.3 and it states that the financial position of a limited on 31st of 3 2023 is given to you and this time there are 14,000 equity share then reserve and surplus in the form of profit or loss account but negative balance and then we have 10 percent debentures to the extent of 2 lakh now below it is given that r limited agreed to take over the business of a limited so r limited is the purchasing company market value of 75 percent of sundry asset is estimated to be 12 percent more than the book value and that of remaining 25% at 8% less than the book value. First of all, what I need to do in this particular question, sundry assets are given to us at 18 lakh, correct? Sundry assets are given to us at rupees 18 lakh. Sundry asset. 18 lakh is the amount which is given to us. First, I will break it into two parts, 75% portion and 25% portion. 75% portion and 25% portion. What will be 25% portion? 18 lakh divided by 4. So, 4 lakh 50,000 is the book value of 25% portion, I may say. Correct? And 13,50,000 is the book value of remaining 75%. Now question says that market value of 75% share is 12% more. 
So this is the book value of 75% and I will add 12% to it. So 12% of 13,50,000 into 12%, that is equal to 1,62,000. So that means 75% portion of sundry assets are having a book value of 13,50,000, but their market value is more than two more by 12%. So I will add this figure to 13,50,000. So that means total value of 75% portion is equal to 15,12,000. While question says that as far as 25% portion is concerned, its value is 8% less than the book value. I will compute 8% of 4,50,000. That comes to 36,000. That comes to 36,000. So I will subtract 36,000 from 4,50,000. So I get 4,14,000. So that means total value of sundry assets, which is given in the balance sheet at 18 lakh, their market value will be equal to 15,12 lakh plus 4,14,000. Lakh Correct? That is equal to 19 lakh. 26,000, 19,26,000, if my calculations are correct. Then question says that liabilities are taken over at book value. And in this case, liabilities are in the form of debentures and trade payables. So 4,90,000 is the value of the liability. If I subtract the liability from the sundry assets, so liability is 4,90,000. Now I get 14,36,000 by subtracting this figure. So our net asset right now is equal to 14,36,000. However, in this particular question, another information is given. There is an unrecorded liability. So I will subtract the unrecorded liability also. So unrecorded liability is equal to 25,000. So by subtracting various liability from the assets, in this question we can find out purchase consideration and which is equal to this much. This will be your purchase consideration. Is it clear to you or not? Then we have in this particular question 7.4. In 7.4 it is given that now if we come over to 7.4 question, it is given that Y Limited decides to absorb X Limited. The draft balance sheet of X Limited is as follows. The draft balance sheet is also given to you in this particular question. And the draft balance sheet is like this. Net asset is equal to 2,90,000. And profit and loss account is equal to 70,000. 3,000 equity shares of 100 each is equal to 3 lakh. And then preference shares is given as 60,000. Further, it is given to us in the question. Besides that, we are having here profit and loss account towards the asset side. It means it's a loss. Y Limited agrees to take over the net assets of X Limited. And equity share in X Limited, that means one equity share in X Limited, for the purpose of absorption, is valued at the rate of rupees 70. Now, this is the balance sheet of X Limited. Although one share is of 100 each, 3000 into 100, 3 lakh, but question says that one share of X Limited is valued at rupees 70 each. Now, if you will look over here, Value of 3,000 shares of X Limited at the rate of 70 will be equal to 2,10,000. Now question says that Y Limited agrees to pay 60,000 in cash to the preference shareholders. An equity shareholder will be issued, issued at a value, will be issued one share at the rate of rupees 120 each. Question says that Y Limited agrees to pay. First of all, you need to understand that Y Limited agrees to pay 60,000 in cash to the preference shareholders. 
Now, the purchase consideration will be, see here, rupees 2,10,000 for the equity shares. Because one equity share is valued at rupees 70. And then question says that, 60,000 for liability towards preference shareholders. Y Limited agrees to pay 60,000 in cash for payment to preference shareholders. Actually, after there is a full stop. There is some misprint, so after that you put up a full stop, correct? And then the next sentence begin. So preference shareholders are being paid sixty thousand in cash. So total amount is equal to two lakh seventy without any doubt. Is it clear to you or not? Total purchase consideration is two lakh seventy thousand, correct? And out of two lakh seventy thousand, sixty thousand will be in cash. Of course, this payment is being given to preference shareholders and uh, 2,10,000 worth of payment is meant for equity shareholders. This payment is meant for preference shareholders. However, question further says that although solution is already over because ultimately we have to compute the purchase consideration. But question further says that equity share will be issued at a value of 120. What does it mean? See, actually, purchasing company is supposed to pay, purchasing company is supposed to pay 2,10,000 to the equity shareholders of X Limited. X Limited is your vendor company. Correct? Because one share of X Limited was considered at rupees 70 for the what we call purchase consideration purpose. So, 2,10,000 payment we are supposed to make. But how many shares we are going to issue in order to know that you will have to divide 2,10,000 by 120 because it is given that equity share will be issued at a value of 120. That means purchasing company will issue its own equity share to pay 2,10,000. It's It will issue its own equity share at the rate of 120. So if I will divide 2,10,000 by 120, it means 1,750 equity shares of 100 each of 100 each will be issued at the rate of 120. That means at 20% premium we are issuing the shares to the what we call this particular company. Is it clear to you or not? Actually, I was under the impression that I would be doing this is going to be the last session but unfortunately it seems one more session will be required correct so one more session i will take to finish up this particular uh, chapter and in the last session we will be talking about the recent examination question last three attempt question the summer 21 22 and 23 question we will be picking up correct and some of you are really keen to know because institute hasn't actually issued any solution for the same but we are going to give you complete comprehensive solution you need not require to worry on that particular account so i take leave of you now and shall meet you in the next session hello and welcome again to this particular session so while leaving the last session i did talk about this particular fact that in the upcoming one we would be taking up uh, questions from the recent examinations uh, of course and we are going to do exactly that so December 21 22 and your 23 attempt papers uh, questions related to amalgamations we are going to pick up in this particular session correct so we begin with first of all let us say December 21 and many are uh, student actually were demanding this particular question although I have already uploaded a video on the YouTube by the name of past paper analysis series wherein also I have already given solution to this particular question but anyway now we come straight to the point and business end given below are the extracts from the balance sheet of A and B limited as a 31st of 3 2021 this is the question which we have picked up straight out of what we call question paper uploaded on the site and you can see in the opening line itself there are misprints. Pelothara of what we call misprints are there even in the question paper. The institute definitely need to give a bit of what we call thinking towards this particular aspect. Correct? <clears throat> because it is very dangerous otherwise for the student. But anyway, 
Given below are the extracts of the balance sheet of A and B Limited, although it is written that very clearly that balance sheets of A and B Limited, actually this is only B Limited's balance sheet which is given to you. Correct? Although it is very difficult for the student to infer to uh, whether this particular balance sheet belong to A Limited or B Limited. Correct? Balance sheet of A Limited is not given. Balance sheet extracts of A Limited is not given. Also very clearly not given in this question which company is taking over the other company. Anyway, I will be making it clear that in this case A Limited is taking over the B Limited but Institute as I told you need to exercise a bit of caution when <clears throat> they give the question the thing should be given in a crystal clear manner and without any printing errors. Anyway, we move forward. So this is the balance sheet of B Limited and here particulars are given with respect to 80,000 equity shares of 10 each and amount given to you is 8 lakh. <laughs> then we have been given reserves and surplus to the <clears throat> extent of 1 lakh and then non-current liability that is equal to 1 lakh then non-current assets 7 lakh and then current assets we are given to the extent of 3 lakh. This is the information which is given in the question so far. Correct? Now, Below it is given that consideration was agreed. Consideration was agreed to be paid as follows. First of all, question states that a payment in cash of rupees 5 per share in B Limited. Of course, B Limited is the company which is the vendor company or which is being taken over by the A Limited. A Limited is the purchasing unit. So purchase, it is decided that purchasing company A Limited will make a payment of rupees 5 per share in B Limited. Now in this question, on relevant party is only equity shareholders. So when you will compute the purchase consideration, obviously after going through this particular line, you would first of all write that this particular payment is being received by equity shares, equity shareholders, no doubt about that. So you will be writing over here equity shareholders, isn't it or not? How much payment equity shareholder would be receiving in this particular case? The next question is this. A payment in cash of rupees 5 per share in B Limited. So it is easy to compute, not very difficult. As we can see, there are 80,000 equity shares of B Limited. And very clearly given that each share divided by 1, each share will be given rupees 5 per share in cash. So that means in this particular case, we may say that equity shareholder will receive a payment of a payment of rupees equal to 4 lakh. Isn't it or not? So equity shareholder will receive payment of 4 lakh. Of course, this payment will be received by them in cash. No doubt about that. Further, the question states that the issue of shares of rupees 10 each in A Limited. A Limited will be issuing shares of rupees 10 each on the basis of two equity shares, on the basis of two equity share valued at rupees 15. That means each share will be valued at rupees 15. And one Cumulative preference shares valued at rupees 10 for every 5 shares in B Limited. What does it mean? It means purchasing company A Limited will issue 1. The issue of shares of rupees 10 each in A Limited on the basis of 2 equity shares valued at rupees 15. Purchasing company will issue two shares and these shares are being valued at the rate of 15. So we will multiply it by 15 for every five share. That means purchasing company will issue this much of equity shares to the equity shareholders. For every five share, two shares are being given valued at rupees 15. Not only this, equity shareholder besides receiving the equity share will also receive 80,000 equity shares divided by 5. This 5 stands for shareholders for every 5 shares in B Limited. 
सो फॉर एवरी फाइव शेयर इन बी लिमिटेड टोटल शेयर आर एटी था फॉर एवरी फाइव शेयर इट इज गिवन वन क्यूमुलेटिव प्रेफरेंस शेयर इज ऑल्सो बींग इश्यूड एंड वन क्यूमुलेटिव प्रेफरेंस शेयर इज बींग वैल्यूड एट रुपीज टेन so that is how you are going to actually infer out or conclude the uh, this part meaning of this particular line so that mean if we will go through this particular line equity shareholder will be receiving some more payments as i told you 80000 shares for every 5 share divided by 5 for every 5 share they are receiving two shares and these shares are being valued at 15 is it clear to you so if i am going to multiply 80000 divided first of all by 5 multiply it with 2 into 15 so 4 lakh 80000 4 lakh 80000 4 lakh 80000 worth of equity share also will be given to the equity shareholder not only this equity shareholders are also being given some preference share 80000 share for every 5 shares one preference share is being issued and preference share is being valued at 10 so it will be equal to 80000 divided by 5 into 10 that is equal to 160 so all in all equity shareholders in this case are receiving payments to the extent of 4 lakh 480 and 1 lakh 60 1 lakh 60 will be given by way of cumulative preference share cumulative preference shares now if i will add up all these payments that is 4 lakh plus 4 lakh 80 and plus 160 that will be equal to how much 10 lakh 40000 so logically your purchase consideration is 10 lakh 40000 no doubt about that but problem is that if this question would have been given only up to this particular line then my solution would have been perfect but problem is that question has stated somewhat we call more facts the whole of the share capital now the question states that the whole of the share capital consists of share holding in exact multiples of 5 whatever number of shares which we have issued they are exactly in multiples of 5 the question states however question further states that except the following except the following see all in all this company has issued 80000 share if i will divide 80000 by 5 it will get exactly divided by 5 but that is the problem is that entire 80000 lot of share we haven't issued to a single party it must have been issued to different shareholder different persons so question says that more or less whatever shares which we have issued are in multiples of 5 but except to these shareholder for example out of 80000 shares see here let me clarify to you in this manner total number of shares are 80000 out of 80000 question states that some of the shares have been issued to mr a out of these 80000 share let us say mr a is a shareholder of the company to whom this company must have issued 116 shares similarly there is mr b to whom this company must have issued 76 shares and likewise there is mr c to whom 72 shares have been issued and besides that there is mr d to whom 28 shares have been issued and now question says that besides these four fellows Eight shares have been issued to eight different person. Besides A, B, C, and D, we have issued eight share to eight individual. Here it is written other individuals, and here, given that we have issued, we have actually issued them eight share, and each member is holding one share. So quite obviously, these eight shares have been issued to eight individuals. Correct. that been besides there are eight in I, sh i should write here individuals other individuals first let me write it and to the other individuals we have issued eight shares so problem is that out of 80000 shares if we will total up all these thing it comes to 300 share now question is telling that these 300 shares are not in exactly multiples of 5 
So what I will have to do now in order to compute, see my purchase consideration will be 10,40,000 without any doubt, but I will have to show uh, it in the manner as it is required as per the information which is given in the question. So point here is that, first of all, what you will do, you will try to check out out of 116 share which you have issued to Mr. A, how many shares are not perfectly divisible by 5. So how can you do that? In order to understand that, first of all, you divide 116 by 5. If I will divide 116 by 5, what figure I am going to get? 116 divided by 5, it comes to 23.2. So, because it is 23.2, that means out of 116 shares, out of 116 shares, I may say, that 23 is in lot of 5. What I mean to say is that, just pay attention here, we have divided 116 by 5, we are getting a figure of 23.2. Now what you do, you set aside 0.2, correct? That means you are left off with 23 shares. Now multiply 23 by 5, that means out of 116, if I am going to multiply 23 with 5, I will get 115. That means out of 116, 115 shares are perfectly divisible by 5. So I will have to find out out of these shares, how many shares are perfectly divisible by 5. For that, what I need to do, first of all, I will divide the number of share by 5. I will get some figure. Now throw out the point figure. That means out of 23.2, now I have, as you must have noticed, did not take into account 0.2. I simply took 23, multiplied it by 5, I found out that out of 116, 115 shares are perfectly divisible by 5, so I reached the conclusion that out of 116, there is one share, only one share, which is not perfectly divisible by 5. In accounting language, we call it fractional share, because if I will divide 1 by 5, it will be equal to 0.2. Is it or not? That means it is not perfectly divisible by 5. So these shares will be known as fractional shares. So logically, first of all, what you will have to do, you will have to find out the number of fractional share. Number of fractional shares means which are not perfectly divisible by 5. Likewise, let us say out of 76, I want to know how many shares are perfectly divisible by 5. So first of all, what I am going to do? First of all, I am going to divide 76 by 5. If I will divide 76 by 5, let us say what figure we get. We are getting 15.2. So we are least bothered with 0.2. We will keep the 15 figure. So 15 into 2, 15 into 5, sorry. That means out of 76, 15 into 5, 75 shares are perfectly divisible by 5. So only one share is there again, which is not divisible by 5. So fractional share is 1. Similarly, out of 72, first of all, I will divide 72 by 5. Let's see what we know. We get 72 divided by 5. We are getting 14.4. 14.4. So I am not bothered about 0.4. I am bothered about 14. I will multiply 14 with 5. It will give me 70. That means out of 72, 70 shares are perfectly divisible by what we call a 5. So 72 minus 70, that means this time there are two shares out of 72. Two shares are there which are in fractions. Similarly, I will divide 28 by 5. Now, if I divide 28 by 5, what figure I am going to get? I will get 5.6. I am not bothered about 0.6. I am bothered about 5. 5 shares, I will multiply it with 5, I will get 25. So I will come to know that out of 28, 25 shares are such which are perfectly divisible by 5. So I will be writing over here 3 shares. So this time 3 shares are not imperfect, <laughs> are fractional share or not perfectly divisible by 5. Is it clear to you? Now, because these shares are, these 8 shares are held by eight individual. Every individual is having only one share and if I am going to divide one by five, it will be in fraction. That means all these shares are fractional shares. 
Is it clear to you? Now I will total them up. I will get 50. So now I will reach the conclusion that out of 80,000 shares, actually there are 15 shares which are in fractions, which are in fractions. And remember, fractional shares can never ever be paid by way of shares. They cannot be issued uh, shares. So they must be given cash. And now rest of the, if I, I will subtract 15 from this, I will get 79,985. That means these shares are perfectly divisible by 5. These shares are perfectly divisible by 5. So I will have to recalculate my purchase consideration. Actually, in this question, you are supposed to compute only the purchase consideration. But the main point is that how to determine the number of fractional share. Now, once you have determined the number of fractional shares, what you have to do, the calculation which I have made here, instead of 80,000, 80,000, 80,000, 80, you substitute this figure by 79,985, which are perfectly divisible by what we call 5 because only perfectly divisible shares can be given shares. Point is this. Correct? So that is the reason in this particular question, what I will do, that is how I am going to. In fact, whatever working I have done, I have already done here also for you. You must have noticed. So I will come straight to the solution. So this will be your solution a statement showing the purchase consideration. Now equity shareholder, Instead of picking 80,000, now you consider 79,985, the number of shares which are perfectly divisible by 5. Now, you will do the calculation in the same manner as I did earlier. Now, 79,985 shares are there. For every 5 shares, you are giving 2 equity share valued at 15. So, this figure will be equal to 4,79,910. This payment will be given by way of equity share. Besides that, the equity shares are also being given one preference share. For every five, we are giving one cumulative preference share of rupees 10 each. So this will be the amount, 10% cumulative preference share. Besides that, every preference shareholder, sorry, every equity share is getting rupees 5 in cash, 3,99,925. This is the payment. Now we have to pay to the fractional shares. Now the question is how much I will be paying them? How will you find out what amount you are supposed to find? So what you will you do? First, you write this figure, then write this figure, and then write this figure. Remember one thing. I have already told you, you will have to do this calculation in your rough also because without doing this calculation, you cannot find out your total purchase consideration. Your total purchase consideration will be 10,40,000, which I told you earlier. Correct? So... Now, once you have written all these figures, now you will write 10,40,000 because you know the amount of purchase consideration and now you will take it as the balancing figure. That means these 15 shares, fractional share, correct, will be given 195. I have already told you fractional shares are always given in cash payment. And if you want to know at what rate they are being given cash, so you can divide 195 by 15. You can divide 195 by 15 to know how much each fractional share would get cash. So each fractional share will get a cash of rupees 30. Is it clear to you or not? So in this question, we were supposed to actually compute the amount of purchase consideration, which we have already computed, but we have to show it in this manner because of the presence of fractional shares. Now we come to this particular question, December 2022. It's a pretty long question. Again, such sort of long question institute should avoid actually giving in the examination. And instead, it is better to ask questions from India's or rather than sticking to AS14. But anyway, given below are the extracts of the balance sheet of X Limited and Y Limited as at 31st of March 2022. Equity share capital, remember one thing, X limited. This time the balance sheet of X and Y limited is given to you and we will see later on that both these companies are amalgamating to form a new company. Share capital amount is given in lakhs, so 5 lakhs and each share is of 10 each which you need to keep in your mind and 8% preference share capital 1 lakh and 2 lakh and 10 lakh. Equity share capital 10, preference share capital 2. Then we have general reserves. Then we have statutory reserves, besides that profit and loss account also. 
And then we have got in this particular question liabilities in the form of debentures. And then we have some current liability that is 1 lakh and 2 lakh 20. Besides that, we have we have been given assets in the form of property, plant and equipment, non-current asset and current asset. Now we move, now we move through the information. The two companies agree to amalgamate on 1-4-2022. It is given to you and they form a new company XY Limited. Fine, no problem till up to this particular point at least. It is given that goodwill of X and Y Limited on the date of takeover was valued at 48 and 38,000. Quite obviously, later on, we would be computing what we call asset taken over and liability taken over. So over there, we will write the amount of goodwill as 48 and 38, even though goodwill is not given in the balance sheet, but purchasing company is taking over the goodwill of these two companies. So goodwill of X limited is 48, of Y limited is 38,000. Further, it is given property, plant and equipment of X and Y limited are valued at 10% above their book value. So whatever property, plant and equipment is given, we will add 10% to it, compute the revised values and add these values, they will be considered as taken over. Further, we are given non-current investment of X and Y limited are considered worth rupees 4,16 and 6,26,000. So the good thing is that in this particular case, the non-current investment of X and Y limited are considered See, non-current investment must be under, actually it should be non-current asset, it should be non-current investment, non-current investments. So whatever non-current investment is given to us, their revised values are given, again no problem. When, we, as I said earlier, when later on we would be computing the amount of asset taken over and liability taken over, so I will be writing goodwill 4838. Property and plant and equipment 19 lakh plus 10 percent, 7.60 plus 10 percent. Similarly, non current investment revised values 416 and 6 lakh 26. So far, regarding current asset, no information is given. Now it is given that 12 percent debentures of X and Y Limited are discharged by XY Limited by issuing such number of 15 percent debentures of 100 each so as to maintain the same amount of interest. Now, so many times we have done this sort of what we call adjustment. Just to make the point clear again, just to make the point clear again, we can see here as far as there is one is X limited, another one is Y limited. It is given in the question that 12% debentures of X limited and Y limited is equal to 2 lakh and 1 lakh. Amount of debenture given to you is 2 lakh and 1 lakh, correct? Because these are 12% debenture, if I am going to compute the amount of interest at the rate of 12%, what will be the amount? 12% of 2 lakh will be equal to 24,000. And of 1 lakh, it will be equal to 12,000. That means on your present holding, you are getting an income of 24 if you are debenture holder of X limited. While on the other hand, if you happen to be what we call debenture holder of Y limited, you are getting an income of 12,000 presently. Now, question below states that 12% debentures of X and Y limited are to be discharged by X and Y limited by issuing such number of 15% debentures of 100 each so as to maintain the same amount of interest. That we now purchasing company, obviously taking over X limited and Y limited and purchasing company is going to uh, provide you 15% debenture instead of 12% debenture. But they, but how many debenture purchasing company should give to you or at, or what worth of debenture purchasing company should issue to the debenture holders of X and Y limited so that you still get what we call 24,000 and 12,000 respectively as your interest income. And I have told this so many times. So point here is that, point here is we will give you 15% debentures. But question is that of what value? And it is not very difficult to determine. Correct? It is not very difficult to determine in the sense that you can easily find out for example, we are giving 15% debenture to X Limited, say. Correct? 
of x. x means the 15% debenture. This is the value of the debenture. So 15% of debenture value must be equal to 24,000 because I want you to get interest of 24. So by solving it down, now we can solve it easily, 24,000 into 100 divided by 50. So we can now easily find out what will be the value of the debenture which our company would be issuing to your company, X Limited. We are purchasing company, you are vendor company. 24,000 into 200 divided by 15, you get 1,60,000. That means purchasing company will issue 15% debenture to the tune of 1,60,000. Now, if I am going to compute 15% of 1,60,000, it will be equal to 24. That means you will still get the same amount of interest. Two replication will what we call follow here. One, it means now purchasing companies taking over the debentures of X Limited at 1,60,000. This is the point which you need to understand. Later on, when we we will be writing all the asset taken over and liability taken over. So under the liability in front of debentures, we will write not 2 lakh, rather 1,60,000 because we are taking over the debenture at 160. Is it clear to you or not? Similarly, you can do the calculation with respect to Y Limited. You want to issue them 15% debentures. So 15% debentures. So what will be the value of X? That is the debenture value. So that you get the interest of 12,000. So similarly, you can solve it down. 12,000 into 200 divided by 15. So 80,000, this will be equal to. That means... Purchasing company is taking over the debentures of Y Limited worth 1 lakh at 80,000. Is it clear to you? Now, if you are going to compute 15% of 80,000, it will be equal to, it will be equal to 12,000. So, we are maintaining the same amount of interest. So, I hope you have got this point. Although we have done such sort of information now so many times, it should not be a big issue for you. Now, we come over to the next point. Here it is given. The issue of such an amount of fully paid 10% preference share in XY Limited at 125%. Issue of such an amount of fully paid 10% preference shares in XY Limited at 125% as is sufficient to discharge 8% preference share capital in X and Y Limited at a premium of 20%. What does the what will be the replication of this particular line? Let's come straight to the point. Again, here I write X and Y limited. This is your point number three. You may say X limited and Y limited. As usual, because we are talking about the preference share, first let me write the amount of the preference share. Correct? So, I look into the balance sheet to find out 8% preference shares are there. First, let me write here 8% preference share capital. And 8% preference share capital, as you can see, 1 lakh and 2 lakh is given to us of respective companies. So 1 lakh, here I write, and obviously I will be writing here, and I have forgotten the figure, 2 lakh. So 1 lakh and 2 lakh. Now we again go through this particular line. Line states that issue of such an amount of fully paid 10% preference share in XY Limited at 125%. Remember one thing, it is being written that X and Y Limited will issue, no doubt about that, preference shares to the preference shareholder of respective company X and Y Limited. But the purchasing company will issue its preference share at 125%. It is clearly mentioned that issue of such an amount of fully paid 10% preference shares in XY Limited at 125% as is sufficient to discharge 8% preference share in X and Y Limited at a premium of 20%. So now we come to know that if you are the preference shareholder of X Limited, then purchasing companies discharging your claim at 20% premium. Correct? So I will add first of all 20%. So it is decided that purchasing company will discharge the claims of the respective company at 20% premium. So 20% of 2 lakh will be equal to 40,000. So at least now we come to know what will be the value which will be given to preference shareholder 1,20,000 worth of 
preference share purchasing company will issue and similarly 2x limited and similarly purchasing company will issue 2 lakh 40 thousand worth of preference share to y limited it's correct second important point of course it is being given by way of 10 percent preference shares purchasing company will issue 10 percent preference share but important point here again is that it is given that purchasing company will issue its preference share at 125 so what will be the number of share which will be issued by purchasing company number of preference share number of 10 percent preference share you can find it out by dividing 1 lakh 20 by 125 correct you divide the amount by 125 so 120 1 lakh 20 thousand divided by 125 i get 960 so i come to know that purchasing company will issue 960 preference shares that means 960 preference share and one preference share is it is given at the rate of 125 so that means one preference share will be of 100 each and 960 into 960 into 25 will be your premium is it clear to you similarly to this company 2 lakh 40 i will divide 2 lakh 40 by 125 it gives me 1920 that means 1920 preference shares we will be issuing of rupees 100 each it is the face value of the preference share and these preference share will be issued at a premium of 1920 into 25. Is it clear to you or not? Clear? So this is how you will be doing uh, the calculation with respect to preference share. Important point is that preference shareholder of the respective companies are being given 120 and 240 as payment. However, the mode of payment will be like this. This is the point which you need to note down. Next point in this particular question is related to equity shares of xy limited are to be of nominal value of 10 each now question says that the new company xy limited will have equity share and it will have a face value of 10 each but credited as 8 paid up and issued at rupees 50 that means whenever this purchasing company xy limited will issue the equity share correct in that particular case it will issue the share as 8 paid up but at a premium of 7 you can say because issue price is 15. I have already told you face value of the share is 10 but purchasing company is going to issue the share as 8 credited or 8 paid up and shall be issued at 15 shall be issued at 15 means at a premium of 7 8 plus 7 is equal to 15 and what we mean by 8 paid up if my company will issue share to anybody at this particular nomination it means i have a right that in future i may be able to call two rupees per share because these shares are only 8 paid up now next question next part but the here very important aspect is that so far in this particular question so far in this particular question again i think the I think there are some misprints in the what we call original question itself and we have kept the original question here itself. We haven't modified it. But they should have had given that how the purchasing company is issuing the equity share. So it is not given anywhere. But still we will compute the number of equity share which the purchasing company will issue to the respective companies. Correct? Because they are having equity shareholders because preference shareholders are already being given some payment. So what will be the payment for the equity shareholder? So for that, what I will be doing now, see here, and before I move further, let me tell you whatever working I have done, I have already done it for you. Correct regarding debenture, I have already told you 160 and 80,000. <coughs> we are taking over the debentures of X Limited at 160 and this. And just a moment ago, I also told you that preference shares. 1 lakh share, 20,000 premium, 1 lakh 20,000 at this value, we are discharging the preference share of X limited. Similarly, at 2 lakh 40,000, we are discharging the what we call preference shares of Y limited. I also told you uh, that it should be 1 lakh 20. So 1 lakh 20 divided by 120, 960 shares of 100 each, we have already computed. 
and similarly 2,40 divided by 125,1920 shares or at the rate of uh, 125 we are issuing. Now the next question is that it is important that we have to compute now the amount of purchase consideration. Now how we are going to compute the amount of purchase consideration as usual. First of all I will be writing all the assets which we are taking over and of course at uh, the value which is given in the question it is given that property plant and equipment is being taken over at 10 percent above book value so whatever their book value is there you add 10 percent to it you will get this figure these figures in fact and non-current investments revised value is already given in the question and there is no revised value for current assets in the question we have already gone through the question current assets 8 lakh 26 and 5 lakh 40 correct now coming over to less liability taken over just a moment ago i told you you have to exercise a bit of caution here because the debentures of x limited may be of 2 lakh but you are taking over them at 160 because you are making a payment of 1 lakh 60 to them indirectly it means you are taking over debenture liability of x limited at 160 and similarly, debenture liability of Y Limited will be considered to be taken at 80,000. Is it clear to you? Besides, there is current liability. So, now you come to know about the net assets, that is the amount of purchase consideration. Now you have computed the amount of purchase consideration. This is the amount of purchase consideration which you have computed. Further, purchase consideration that means XY Limited is supposed to pay in total 31,20,000 to the shareholders. But because purchase consideration is given to the owners. And who are the owners? Owners are the shareholders. Out of 31,20,000, we have already computed that 1,20,000 worth of payment we are making to preference shareholders. Because we have already computed. That means this 31,20,000 which we will discharge we are paying what we call 1,20,000 to the what we call preference shareholders and similarly out the total amount 17,40,000 this is the amount of purchase consideration with respect to what we call Y limited correct with respect to Y limited out of 17,40,000 which will be given to the shareholder there are two types of shareholder equity and preference we have already computed that we are paying to the what we call preference shareholder 2,40,000 so that means if we will deduct the amount or amount which we are paying to the preference shareholder, whatever is left, that amount must be given to the equity shareholders. So you will pay to the equity shareholder. Now you have found out 30 lakh and 15 lakh. Is it clear to you or not? Once you have found it out, now the next point is that you must know actually what number of shares you are going to issue to the risk what number of equity shares you are going to issue to the respective companies equity shareholders now below it is given that this xy limited is having equity share which is having a nominal value of 10 but problem is that it is being issued at a nominal value of 8 paid up but at a premium of 7 that means at the rate of 15 so if i want to know how many shares xy limited will give to x limited I will have to divide 30 lakh by the issue rate. The issue rate is 15. Now I reach the conclusion that I will be, I will be means XY limited, shall be issuing 2 lakh shares of 10 each, 8 paid up at the rate of 15. And just for your more facilitation, it means we are issuing 2 lakh shares and the nominal value is 8, 16 lakh. And the premium on it will be at the rate of 7, 14 lakh. Total is equal to 30 lakh. Is it clear to you or not? Similarly, similarly, after subtracting 240, the payment portion of uh, preference shareholder from 17 lakh 40, is it clear to you? We come to the conclusion that equity shareholder must be given 15 lakh. Now I want to know the number of share. For that, I will have to divide it by 15. I come to the conclusion that 1 lakh shares must be issued. 1 lakh shares of 10 having a nominal value of 8 paid up but will be issued at rupees 50. So that means 1 lakh share into 8. This is the no nominal value of the share which we are issuing to the Y limited and similarly this is the amount of premium. Is it clear to you or not? So this are, these are the points in this particular question. 
नेक्स्ट पॉइंट इज दैट स्टेचुचरी रिजर्व आर टू बी मेंटेन फॉर थ्री फोर फॉर थ्री मोर इयर्स बिकॉज इट इज अ केस ऑफ अमाल गमेशन इन द नेचर ऑफ अमाल गमेशन इन द नेचर ऑफ परचेज इट इज अ केस ऑफ अमाल गमेशन इन द नेचर ऑफ परचेज सो आई हैव ऑल यू टू डू इन द केस ऑफ अमाल गमेशन इन द नेचर ऑफ परचेज वी टेक ओवर ओनली एसिड्स इन लाइबिलिटी एंड वी नेवर रिक्रिएट दी वट वी कॉल रिजर्व विच आर अपियरिंग इन द बैलेंस शीट ऑफ द यू कैन से वेंडर कंपनीज इट इज डन इन केस ऑफ अमाल गमेशन इन द नेचर ऑफ मर्जर so logically we should not carry over a statutory reserve but if it is given we can't help it even though it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase now we have to carry forward the statutory reserves of these two companies for the same the entry will be i have already told you xy limited in its books will write an entry amalgamation adjustment account debit amalgamation adjustment account debit to statutory reserve Two statutory reserve. Now we will see the figures of statutory reserves. This is equal to two lakh and one lakh. So that means three lakh, three lakh. Although this entry is not going to have any effect in the balance sheet. Why? Because when I will be preparing the balance sheet later on, I will have to reflect now the statutory reserve at three lakh <coughs> because it is a credit figure. It will be written as a positive item. And rupees three lakh amalgamation adjustment account, you will have to write it as an as a negative item. When both these items will appear under reserve and surplus, so one item is appearing as a positive one, another item is appearing as a negative item. It will have no Im impact in overall as far as balance sheet is concerned. Further, it is given that liquidation expenses of X Limited is two thousand. And Y limited is equal to one thousand. So liquidation expenses are given. It is also given that these expenses will be borne by X Y limited. When purchasing company will bear these expenses, so X Y limited will pass another entry, goodwill account debit to bank account. I have already told you in case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase, whatever expenses purchasing company or whatever losses purchasing company will incur, it will be debited to goodwill account. So this entry will be passed with the amount three thousand, two thousand plus one thousand. On account of this entry, amount of goodwill will increase, and at the same time, amount of current asset will fall down by three thousand because in the balance sheet word bank is not written; only current assets are given. So we will reduce the current asset by three thousand while preparing the balance sheet. Further, here it is mentioned that expenses on incorporation of X Y Limited were rupees one thousand. These are incorporation expenses. Remember one thing. Again, X Y Limited will pass an entry to this particular effect. If you want to write one entry, fine. If you want to write two entries, first entry will be incorporation expenses account debit to bank account. Correct. Amount is one thousand. On account of this, your bank will reduce by one thousand, and then you will debit the incorporation expense ultimately to your profit and loss account. Profit and loss account debit two. Incorporation expenses, or you could have written a straight entry: profit and loss account debit to bank account. Anyway, on account of this entry, two effects will take place. One, P and L will get reduced by one thousand, and at the same time, bank balance or current asset balance will also fall by one thousand. Now we come over to the last point of this particular question. Authorized equity share capital of X Y Limited is rupees fifty lakh. Why? It is given that authorized share capital of X Y Limited will be equal to fifty lakh, and it will be divided into equity shares of rupees ten each. That means, as far as number of shares are concerned, fifty lakh divided by ten, total number of shares will be five lakh. So, as far as authorized share capital of X Y Limited is concerned, we may say that there are five lakh shares of rupees ten each. So that comes to fifty lakh, isn't it? After issuing required number of shares to the liquidators of X Limited and Y Limited, X Y Limited issued balance share to the public. This is the question. So, if I want to know how many shares this company will issue to the public, how will you compute? What what you will have to do? First of all, you have to think on such lines. At least you know that there are total five lakh shares. Out of five lakh shares, you have already issued some shares to X Limited and X Limited and Y Limited. 
See, we are talking about equity shares only. Total number of equity share is 5 lakh. Authorized share capital. How many shares you have issued to the respective company? Remember, you have already computed. 2 lakh shares, 2 lakh equity shares to X limited and 1 lakh shares to Y limited. That means total 3 lakh shares we have already given to the liquidators of X limited and Y limited. So that means we are left off with only 2 lakh and this is exactly what the question is telling. Question is telling that whatever remaining shares you are having, these shares have been issued to public and these shares have been fully subscribed. Although it is not given very clearly, as I told you, it should have been given in a clearer manner at what rate these, at what rate or these shares have been issued to public. Although it is not given, we may presume that it is these shares are also being issued as per the same rate that is nominal value of 10 each, 8 paid up at the rate of 7. So we will have to pass an entry on account of this, our entry will be bank account debit that is equal to 2 lakh share at the rate of 15, we will receive 30 lakh rupees, correct? And then I will write here 2 share capital, 2 lakh shares we are issuing and because nominal value is 8, so 16 lakh will be the nominal value and then 2 security premium that is on 2 lakh share at the rate of 7, 14 lakh. This will be the entry for this particular point. Is it clear to you or not? Now, obviously, the last thing is that now we are supposed to prepare the balance sheet. So many times I've already told you, as far as preparation of balance sheet is concerned, that is not a tough task, at least with at least with respect to asset. For example, in the balance sheet, in point number four, we have already done the what we call calculation with respect to asset taken over and liabilities taken over, correct? So in the balance sheet, I will simply add 48,000 and 38,000 and I will do some adjustment with respect to uh, what we call entry, liquidation entry because over there goodwill also coming so I will have to add that also. Correct. Similarly, I will simply add these two figure property, plant and equipment and put them in the balance sheet. Non-current investment, I will simply add these two figures and put them in the balance sheet. Regarding current asset, I have to be a little bit more careful because First, I will add 826 plus 540 and then I am going to add because I have received some amount also, correct, on account of issuance of share to the public. For example, 30 lakh we received. We have done the payment also for liquidation expenses. We will subtract that. Similarly, we, we, we have done the payment for incorporation expenses. We will also subtract that. Then we will write the current asset. I have prepared the balance sheet. Don't worry about that. I will show it to you. Similarly, I am trying to actually make you understand that how you should prepare it. Similarly, Deventure 160 plus 82 lakh 40 will come in the balance sheet. And 1 lakh and 120, it will come in the balance sheet. No reserve and surplus can find place in the balance sheet as you know better than I because purchasing company can never ever take over the reserve and surplus of the liquidating companies or the vendor companies. Only these items will come. But but you will have to be careful with respect to security premium because you have issued some shares in this time on premium. So in the reserve and surplus, that premium can find place, isn't it or not? So you will have to be a little bit cautious with respect to share capital and reserve and surplus which may arise on account of your payments. So now we come over to the balance sheet and even that working which I was doing over there, I have done it for you here also. Everything I have done, total... Total share capital is 5 lakh into 10, that is 50 lakh. And then less issued 2 lakh plus 1 lakh, 3 lakh, correct? And then remaining will be 2 lakh. So our entry will be bank account debit share capital to security premium. Everything has been done. First, let me prepare the asset side. I have prepared the now balance sheet. See here, I told you as far as property, plant and equipment is concerned, all you have to do is simply add them, put over here. When you will write the intangible asset, the amount of goodwill of the two companies you will write, but you must not forget to add 3000 because you have written an entry goodwill account debit to bank with respect to liquidation expense. So on account of that, you will have to add the goodwill. So your goodwill amount will be this much. Non-current investment revised amounts are given. We will simply add it. Coming over to current asset. I told you first you add 826. The given amount, 826 and 540, you will get 13 lakh 66. Now, because you have issued the share to the public 30 lakh, you will add. And you have made some payment. Liquidation expenses and incorporation expenses, total 4,000. So, this will be your balance sheet as far as asset side is concerned. 
current liability is simply add the figures. I have already told you as far as debentures are concerned, simply add the figures. Now, as far as I told you, regarding statutory reserve, we have to pass an entry amalgamation adjustment account debit to statutory reserves. So because of that, what will happen? I will have to write a statutory reserves 3 lakh in a positive manner and amalgamation adjustment account in a negative manner under reserves and surplus. So that is why ultimately it will become zero. Then profit and loss account negative balance because we have made payment for incorporation expenses on account of which negative balance in profit and loss account will appear. Now coming over to security premium. Here you have to exercise caution. How we are getting 35 lakh 72,000. Pay attention. On equity share, see premium on equity. I'm talking about premium and equity share. Correct? If you remember, we issued 2 lakh share to X Limited. And these shares were issued at a premium of 7, so 14 lakh. Similarly, we issued 1 lakh shares to Y Limited at a premium of 7. Everything is done in over there. So 14 plus 21 lakh. Then 14 lakh worth of premium we just received when we made what we call issue, public issue. So total premium now is 35 lakh. This is premium on equity shares. Similarly on preference share, because purchasing company is issuing its share at the rate of 125. So we computed earlier, 960 share into 25, 24,000 will be premium on preference share issued to X Limited. And 1920 shares were issued to Y Limited at a premium of 25, 48,000. So total premium 35 lakh on equity share and 72,000 on it. So total premium amount will be 35 lakh 72,000. Correct. Now we come over to the share capital. How many shares we are offering? It is given that we issued 2 lakh worth of share at the rate of 8. So 16 lakh. 1 lakh share we issued to Y Limited earlier we computed at the rate of 8. And then we reset. Just a moment ago, I told you we issued actually remaining share, remaining 2 lakh share to the public and share capital amount is 16 lakh. So this will be the amount of equity share capital. Is it clear to you? And 10% preference share capital, 960 into 10, 960 share we issued at the rate of piece 100, sorry. And similarly, 1920 share at the rate of 100. So total 2 lakh 88. This is how you are going to do this particular question. Is it clear to you or not? There is yet another question which struck in the examination June 2023. I will discuss that also. Give me actually 10 minutes of time. Correct? Then I will continue after 10 minutes.
So welcome after the break and uh, now we pick up this question to finish up what we call this particular chapter. Correct? So you must have noticed we are covering and giving solutions even to the questions solutions of which are not even given by the institute in a full-fledged manner. Correct? Let's come to this particular, this particular question. The correct paper was held in the month of July and the balance sheet extracts of P limited and V limited is given to you. P limited and V limited. This is the balance sheet. This is the amount of general reserve profit and loss account. And then we have the statutory reserves of only V limited. Then we have liabilities in the form of debenture. However, no debenture here trade payables and then as far as your <coughs> assets are concerned in the form of goodwill property plant and equipment and now here given non-current investment non-current investment amount given is one lakh nine thousand that means you have paid rupees one lakh nine thousand to purchase uh, so you have made some investment and this investment includes investment in 100 debentures of V Limited purchased at the rate of 90. You have spent 1,9000,000 in total investment. Investment always means you might have invested in shares or debentures or some other, some other entity. But question says that out of this amount which you have paid, 9000 you paid to acquire debentures, to acquire 100 debentures of 100 each, of 100 each, of V limited, of V limited. Correct? That means 100 into 100, 10,000 worth of debentures of V limited. It means V limited must have issued some debentures. It is given in the question that V limited has issued 50,000 worth of debentures. Correct? And out of these 50,000 worth of debenture, you have purchased, you means in this particular case, P Limited has purchased 10,000 debenture, but they have made a payment of 9,000. Correct? And then we have been given some other information with respect to inventory, trade receivable, and cash at bank. Now, in this particular question, first of all, it is stated that business of V Limited is taken over by P Limited. So this time P Limited, both these companies are not amalgamating. This time purchasing company is P Limited and V Limited is liquidating company, vendor company and P Limited is taking over the business. Question says that prior to absorption, V Limited and P Limited decide to declare and pay equity dividend of 5%. So both these companies have decided V Limited and P Limited <laughs> Both these companies have decided to pay equity dividend of 5%. What does it would mean? See here, this is P limited and V limited. And this share capital is given to us as 6 lakh and 2 lakh. Below it is given that both these entities have decided to pay a dividend at the rate of 5%. So if I am going to compute 5% dividend, I will compute dividend on equity share capital. That means 30,000 worth of dividend must have been paid by P Limited and 30,000 dividend will be paid by V Limited. Is it clear to you or not? Prior to absorption, V Limited and P Limited decided to de de declare and pay dividend of 5%, number one. Number two, when dividend will be paid, your entry will be profit and loss account debit, profit and loss account debit to bank account or cash account, whatever you may like to write. On account of this, because it is given in the adjustment, first of all, you need to understand that in this moment, it is given in the adjustment. If it is given in the adjustment means its effect is not yet done or incorporated in the items which are available with us. So now both these companies, because now uh, P Limited has taken over V Limited. So it means 
when we are going to because p limited is purchasing company when it will take over what we call v limited in its books it will pass the entry for all the assets and liabilities taken over correct at the same time v limited will close its books so you must understand that due to this particular entry especially in the books of v limited two three things will happen one profit and loss account will get reduced and amount is because amount of dividend sorry is 10000 here 5% of 2 lakh actually 5% is the dividend so 10000 worth of dividend we are paying because of that pnl will get reduced correct and also our cash balance will get reduced by 10000 is it clear to you similarly the cash balance of this particular company will reduce by 30000 number 1 and its own pnl will also get reduced by 30000 because of this particular entry so now you presume as if in the balance sheet profit and loss account of v limited is zero and at the same time cash is just about 25500 further now in point number 2 it is given to us that 50% of PPE are taken over at 100% more than the book value. 50% of PPE, first of all, we will take into account the property, plant and equipment of V Limited, which is given to us at 1,50,000. Property, plant and equipment is given as 1,50,000. I break this into two parts. 50% 50% that is equal to 75,000 and 75,000 correct question states below that 50% of PPE is taken over at 10% more than the book value 50% of PPE is being taken over at 100% more now 50% is this much and if I will add 100%, that means 75,000. That means this part is taken over at 1,50,000. While the other part and the remaining PPE taken over at 20% less than the book value. So I will reduce now 20% less 20%. 20% will be equal to 15,000. Correct? So 60,000 now we will get. So indirectly, it means property, plant and equipment has been taken over at 2,10,000. Property, plant and equipment has been taken over at 2,10,000. Is it clear to you? Further, it is given that goodwill of V Limited is to be valued at 52,500. Remember one thing in this particular question. Goodwill of V Limited is given to us at rupees. 1,19,500. Now question below states that goodwill is valued at 52,500. No problem. Inventories are taken over at book value less 10%. And trade receivables are taken over at book value subject to an allowance of 10% to cover the doubtful debts. Again, no problem. That means inventories are taken over as at book value less 10%. Trade receivables are taken over at book value subject to an allowance of 10%. So again, I will have to subtract 10% from trade receivables. Now it is given that trade payables are to be taken over subject to a discount of 10%. Trade payables. So we are given trade payables as 1,40,000 and from 1,40 we will subtract 10%. Correct? 10% or 5% whatever it is. So, we are taking over trade payable at 10% discount. It is also given. And then, uh, it is given that there is an unrecorded liability of Rs. 38,500 to be discharged by P Limited at book value. So, there might be some contingent liability or unrecorded, not contingent liability, rather unrecorded liability of what we call V Limited, which is taken over by P Limited. So, when we will later on record all the asset taken over, less liability taken over, we should not forget to write this item, unrecorded liability 38,500. Now, this point is similar to the one which we did earlier, that purchase consideration is to be discharged to the extent of 20% in cash. So after subtracting various asset taken, after subtracting liabilities taken over, 
from the asset taken over we will get the amount of purchase consideration 20 percent of that will be in cash and balance in the form of equity shares of 10 each eight paid up at a premium of seven per share now this line which is given to you in the question this line the market value the market value of equity shares of p limited at present is 100 is of not of not any use and i think again there is a misprint to be very honest with you because it is clearly given in the question that purchase consideration will be discharged by way of 20 percent in cash and balance in the form of equity shares of 10 each eight paid up at a premium of seven the issue price of equity share is 15 similar to the one which we did in the last question now this line, the issue of such an amount of 14% debenture in P limited at 96% as is sufficient to discharge the 10% of V limited at a premium of 20%. Now, if we will take into account the debentures of V limited, that is 50,000. These debentures are being paid at 20% premium. That means we are taking over the debentures at 60,000. And after taking over these debentures at 60,000, then we will make them payment and for that we will issue our company's debenture at 96 percent how that i will reflect you later on expenses of liquidation of v limited are to be reimbursed by p limited to the extent of 10000 actual expenses amounted to 12000 it means out of 12000 10000 borne by v limited sorry are borne by p limited purchasing company and 2000 are borne by v limited because purchasing company reimbursing 10000 worth of expenses so quite obviously it means actually that 10000 worth of expenses are borne by purchasing company Is, statutory reserves are to be maintained for two more years as you know the entry will be amalgamation adjustment account debit to statutory reserve because this question is of amalgamation in the nature of purchase now in these two in this paragraph unnecessarily these things are given but anyway it is given that prior to 31st 3 2023 v limited sold goods costing 30000 to p limited for 40000 correct it is given to you that prior to 31st 3 2023 that is prior to the date of absorption v limited has v limited sold goods so v limited has sold goods costing 30000 to p limited at 40000 so at a selling price of 40000 goods were sold all although the cost was 30000 no problem obviously it means v limited has earned a profit of 10000 and rate on selling price will be 10,000 divided by 40,000 rate of profit will be equal to 1 by 4, isn't it or not? Now question says that out of these 40,000 worth of goods which were purchased by P limited, now question states that 25,000 worth of goods were still in stock of P limited. So out of 40,000 remaining goods, remaining goods, Remaining goods are rupees 25,000. So what will be the amount of unrealized profit on it? Unrealized profit will be equal to 1 by 4. So 1 by 4 of 25,000. That is equal to 6250. I think 25,000 divided by 4, 6250. So that is equal to 6250. This is unrealized profit. And you know the entry of unrealized profit. What will be the entry of unrealized profit? We will have to reduce the stock or inventory. No doubt about that. So I will write to inventory. This entry is done in the books of purchasing company. Logically profit and loss account should be debited. But since it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase. And I have already told you, whatever losses are there, those will be debited to goodwill account. So, entry will be with this particular amount. Further question states that, trade receivables include 20,000 is still due from P Limited. Because P Limited has sold goods to P Limited, 
obviously these goods must have been sold on credit and now question says that in the trade receivables of v limited there is an amount of 20000 which it's which v limited still has to collect from p limited so that means this particular line is nothing but your intercompany transaction so you will have to write an entry for intercompany transaction also an intercompany transaction that is debtor's account debit or trade receivable account debit sorry not debit trade payables account debit to trade receivable account this entry will be with the amount of 20000 as you know intercompany transactions will have to be cancelled out and for that we will have to debit the trade payable and credit the trade payables again now question says that on the date of absorption we limited owed p limited 60000 for the purchase of stock from p limited first of all it is given that on the date of absorption now it is given v limited owes p limited that means v limited is supposed to pay p limited 60000 again it is an intercompany transaction again you will write the same entry so you increase the amount by 60000 so there are two intercompany transaction one 20000 and another 60000 effect of intercompany transaction on realized profit is done only in the books of purchasing company now further the question says that now what is happening now v limited has purchased the goods v limited is supposed to pay v limited is supposed to pay 60000 to p limited why because v limited has purchased the goods from p limited that means p limited has sold the goods to v limited for rupees 60000 and these goods were sold at a profit of 20% on cost so 60000 worth of goods have been sold by p limited and these goods have been sold at 20% profit on cost. 20% on cost basically means 20 by 120 on selling price. On selling price, the rate will be 20 by 120 because on cost it is 20 by 100. Now, out of these 60,000 worth of goods, question says that four fifth of the stock were sold. That means four fifth of the stock is used or utilized, but we are concerned with the remaining stock. So, remaining stock with P Limited is one fifth. Remaining stock will be 60,000 into 1 by 5. 60,000 into 1 by 5, which is equal to 12,000. And what will be unrealized profit on that? unrealized profit on the same will be equal to 20%, 20 by 120 or 1 by 6. That is equal to 2000. That means again, there is a case of unrealized profit. Again, you will pass the same entry. So, there are two unrealized profit. One is 6250, which we wrote earlier. And now, again, unrealized profit of 2000. Is it clear to you? And further, it is given investment of P Limited include 9000 representing the cost of 10% debenture of P Limited, which I have already explained to you. That whatever investment which we have made to the extent of 1,9000, in that investment, I told you 9000 we spent to purchase 100 debentures of 100 each of V Limited. That means 10,000 worth of debenture have been purchased at this value. This is the question. So we have gone through the entire question. Now, what is the demand of the question? We have to prepare realization account, bank account, equity shareholder account, and shares in P limited account in the books of V limited. Generally, in the books of vendor company is not asked, but in this question it is asked. And we are supposed to pass entries in the books of P limited. So not very tough one. Now, first of all, we come straight to the major point of this particular question. I will compute the amount of purchase consideration. It is given in the question because now we will have to compute. This time P limited is taken over V limited. So we will have to focus on V limited's assets and liabilities. So goodwill was valued at 52,500. It was given in the question. Property plant and equipment is taken over at 2,10,000, which I explained and I have explained here also. Besides that, inventories were taken over at 10% less, 49,500. Trade receivable 
65,000 minus 10 percent because of what we call allowance for bad debts and then cash at bank here i have written 35500 minus 10000 why you need to understand that because on the date of absorption balance in what we call cash at bank is 25500 so total worth of asset you took over 396000 then trade payables <clears throat> actually in the question it consider it as 5% i have written over 10% so that is why i was little bit susceptible uh, here in the question i think in your notes it will be five percent only somewhere it was written right trade payables were taken over subject to a discount of five percent i have considered five percent you take five percent only correct and if you want to take ten percent you can take ten percent no problem in it we have to find out we have to ultimately learn the conceptuality so 140 if i take five percent discount then it will be equal to how much so five percent discount will be seven thousand so one lakh thirty three and i told you debentures of v limited as per the agreement will be paid at twenty percent premium so sixty thousand an unrecorded liability of thirty eight thousand five hundred your total purchase consideration will be one lakh sixty four thousand five hundred now it is given in the question that 20% of this will be paid in cash, 20% in cash and balance will be given by way of equity shares and for that we will issue 131,600 worth of equity share we will issue, uh, we will issue equity share worth 131,600 and these shares will be issued having a face value of 10 each but we will consider them as 8 paid up and issued at a premium of 7 per share that mean at the rate of 15 but total amount will be 131600 correct so purchase consideration we have found out so now we can prepare the ledger accounts in the books of vendor company and you can prepare it very easily but just remember one thing that when you are going to write here all the assets you must take the book figures only so goodwill property plant and equipment inventories cash at bank but you must not forget to take cash at bank at 25,500 because now on the date of absorption balance in cash at bank is 25,500 now if we move over to the liability side in the liability side we have equity share capital we will write here equity share capital we will write general reserve also now see profit and loss account balance I have written here zero and you must know why because in the balance sheet PL 10,000 of V limited is given but that balance on the date of absorption is zero because we have paid the dividend is it clear to you and even statutory reserve will be transferred to the equity shareholders then we have in this case two liabilities 10 percent debenture 50,000 trade payable 150 then we will pass the entry for purchase consideration due and in the purchasing company we will cross it we will receive the amount of purchase consideration in cash 32600 in equity share 131600 cash account will be posted to the cash account correct and the shares which we have received 131601 worth generally we write the amount of share directly to the debit side of equity shares but here what i am doing 1,31,600 worth of share I'm putting up towards the debit side of shares in purchasing company account. I'm preparing this account because question is asking us. Question has asked to prepare shares in purchasing company account. Correct. Now you will close this account. Whatever balance is there, you will transfer to equity shareholder. Ultimately, this figure will appear in the debit side of equity shares. Shares in purchasing company account, 1,31,600. Correct. <clears throat> Now in this question, 12,000 worth of actual expenses were there, 10,000 were borne by the purchasing company, so 2,000 worth of expenses you will bear and entry will be realization to cash and in the cash account, in the cash account you will write by realization expenses 2,000. After that you will close the what we call realization account in usual manner, this time there will be 62,500 worth of loss, this loss will be posted to the equity shareholder account and then you will close your cash account and the final balance in the cash account will be equal to 30,900 correct and it will be posted to the debit of equity share as far as vendor companies books are concerned it is not a big issue 
But now we come to the general entries in the books of P Limited. 99.99% I have already explained. You can write the entries of your own also. Business purchase account debit to liquidator. The business purchase amount was 164500 Then all the assets and liabilities which we have taken over at their revised value will put up over here. Trade payable 133 Deventure, we must not forget to write 68 unrecorded liability it will get tallied. Now we will pay to the liquidator. We are supposed to pay 164500 But if I will divide 164500 by 15, I will get the number of share which I will be paying. Now 8773 share into 8 because nominal value will be this much and this much will be our premium. 8773 shares of 7 each. Then very important point. It is given in the question that you have taken over the debenture of debenture at 60,000, no doubt about that. And you have written it in on the debit side, sorry, you have written it in your second entry debenture amount as 60,000. But I told you earlier that our investment includes 100 debentures of V Limited. That means out of these 60,000 worth of debenture, 100 debentures into 100. 10,000 worth of debentures are already with us. So we will have to cancel these debentures. Because out of 60,000 worth of debenture which we are taking over from the V Limited, we are already holding out of these 60,000 debentures, 10,000 debentures. So that means the debentures which we need to pay out is should be considered at 50,000. Because out of 60,000 debenture, we are holding the 10,000 debenture. We cannot pay to us. So first of all, what I am going to write here, pay attention. 100 debenture I am already holding of 100 each. But because we have taken over the debentures of vendor company at 20% premium, so the value of debenture held by us is equal to 12,000. So I will write here 12,000. So out of 60,000, I will cancel 12,000. Is it clear to you? And when I will cancel, I will cancel my investment also because this amount is included in my investment. Actually, out of 12,000, only 9,000 is included. So, 3,000 will be my profit, which I will credit to profit and loss account. So, when I will cancel out the intercompany transaction with respect to debenture, I will cancel it out in this manner, number one, and 3,000 worth of profit will be transferred to profit and loss account. Now, the remaining debenture, actually, this debenture value is now 12,000. So we may say out of 60,000, 12,000 debentures are cancelled. Now we are left up with 48,000 worth of debenture. And we are supposed to pay to these debenture holders. And we paid them by issuing our debenture at the rate of 96. And this is the entry. So remaining debenture, as I told you, 40,000. Remaining debenture is 40,000 plus 8,000, that is 48,000. Correct? And I will divide 48,000 by 96, I will get 500. That means I will have to issue, I means the purchasing company will have to issue 500 debentures. So 500 debentures of 100 each, I will write to 14% debenture because we are discharging the debentures of vendor company by issuing our 14% debenture, 500 into 100, but we are issuing our debenture of 100 at a discount of 4. At, at the rate of 96 means we are issuing our debenture at a discount of 4. So that is why I will debit discount on debenture 500 into 4, 2000 rupees. You can write off this, this discount also, correct, later on for, against the profit and loss account. And then purchasing company has borne 10,000 worth of expense. So entry will be goodwill account debit to bank account. Regarding unrealized profit, I have already explained your entry will be goodwill account debit to inventories account. And there were two unrealized profits, 6250 and 2000. Similarly, trade payables account debit to trade receivable. There are two intercompany transactions, 20,000 and 60,000, which I have already explained. And your last entry with respect to statutory reserve, Amal Commission Adjustment Account debit to statutory reserve. So we, and in the last section, I have given some MCQs. You can do it also. All the answers are given. So on that count, we finish up this strong chapter because of late, it has become examiner's favorite, but I do not know why. But anyway, whatever may be the reason, you must equip yourself and we have done everything and we have put up lots of effort to see to it that you feel supreme amount of confidence in facing what we call any sort of question which may be asked of from this particular chapter.
So on such count, we take leave of you and with that, we finish this particular chapter. Obviously, when we will be meeting with you, next time we will be coming out with something new. So till then, it's time to say goodbye.